Session is resumed. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, move to suspend session for a couple of minutes. Session suspended.
Talaga mo pa nga ako. Ayun na. Ano nga ba? Kaya hindi na. Ipadala mo na ngayon dahil ako number one sa pinay dito eh. Ayun na. Ayun na.
Session is resumed. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we now proceed with the reference of business and request that the Secretary General be directed to read the titles of the bills and resolutions as well as community. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The Secretary General is directed to read the titles of bills and resolutions for first reading as well as communications and committee reports for referral to the appropriate committees. Additional reference of business, bills on first reading, House Bill number 4918, providing for the safe reopening of schools by Representatives Manuel castro France and Brosas. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture and the House Committee on Higher and Technical Education. House Bill 4920, establishing a South School Division Office in the province of Bukidnon, by Representative Subiri. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4924, expanding the grounds for removal and or cancellation of party list registration by Representatives Ordanes and Marcaleta. To the Committee on Suffrage and Electoral Reforms. House Bill 4925, adjusting the monthly pension and disability benefits of retirees of the DFA by, Rep by Representative Romero. To the Committee on Foreign Affairs. House Bill 4926, constituting a constitutional convention to amend the 1987 Philippine Constitution, defining qualifications for its delegates who shall be elected simultaneously with the barangay or national elections by to Representative Villafuerte Ruiz Raymond. To the Committee on Constitutional Amendments. House Bill 4927, providing for free professional examinations to qualified indigents by Representatives Duterte and Yap Eric. To the Committee on Civil Service and Professional Regulation. House Bill 4928, creating civil aviation authority in the Philippines, flight standards inspectorate centers in Visayas and in Mindanao. By Representatives Duterte and Yap Eric. To the Committee on Transportation. House Bill 4929, increasing the validity of authorization to solemnize marriage of priests, ministers, or rabbis from three to five years by Representative Yap Eric. To the Committee on Revision of Laws. House Bill 4930, converting San Sebastian Fisheries High School in San Sebastian, Lagone, Camarines Sur by Representative Fuentebella. To, to the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4931, establishing Bogokan National High School in Bogokan, Lagone, Camarines Sur by Representative Fuentebella. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4932, provision of medical assistance to indigent patients under medical assistance to indigent patients program and mandating the acceptance of letters of guarantee from the, from the government as payment for medical or hospital bills by Representative Herrera. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 4933, enhancing the competitiveness of, mar of Philippine maritime trade by Representative Herrera. To the Committee on Transportation. House Bill 4934, abolishing the Presidential Commission on Good Government, transferring its powers and functions to the Office of the Solicitor General and Privatization Management Office by Representative Flores. To the Committee on Government Reorganization. House Bill 4935, creating a, a district engineering office in the third legislative district in the province of Bulacan by Representative Silverio. To the Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 4936, 
to institute PWD-friendly transportation program in cities and urban centers of the country by Representative Tambunting. To the Special Committee on Persons with Disabilities. House Bill 4937, providing for women empowerment by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Women and Gender Equality. House Bill 4938, mandating the establishment of public math and science high schools in previously underserved areas by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4939, establishing quality standards for the production of mineral, carbonated, and other bottled water by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Trade and Industry. House Bill 4940, redefining the crime of illegal recruitment committed by a syndicate by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs. House Bill 4941, defining and penalizing the crime of red tagging by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Justice. House Bill 4942, amending the Public Telecommunications Policy Act of the Philippines by requiring public telecommunications entities and internet service providers to institute a refund mechanism for service outages and disruptions by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Information and Communications Technology. House Bill 4943, establishing reforms in the regulation of collective bargaining agreement of management and employees bargaining unit in, in an establishment by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Labor and Employment. House Bill 4944, establishing the rental housing subsidy program by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Housing and Urban Development. House Bill 4945, repeating the solicitation permit law by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Social Services. House Bill 4946, repeating Article 247 of the Revised Penal Code by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Revision of Laws. House Bill 4947, repeating the General Bonded Warehouse Act by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Trade and Industry. House Bill 4948, repeating the Continuing Professional Development Act of 2016 by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Higher and Technical Education and the Committee on Civil Service and Professional Regulation. House Bill 4949, repealing the cancellation of registration of voters who did not vote in the immediately preceding two successive regular elections by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Suffrage and Electoral Reforms. House Bill 4950, repealing the bulk sales law by Representative Tambunting. To the Committee on Trade and Industry. House Bill 4951, imposing a nationwide, nationwide curfew for minor persons under 18 years of age by Representative Plato. To the Committee on Welfare of Children. House Bill 4952, declaring every 29th day of January as Francisco Santiago Day, a special non-working holiday in Santa Maria, Bulacan, in honor of the life and music of Francisco Santiago by Representative Plato. To the Committee on Local Government. House Bill 4953, renaming the Pani Kihan National High School as the Pablo L. Mercado National High School in Gumaca, Quezon, by Representative Tan Keith Maika. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4954, converting the Ginayangan Sumulong Provincial Road in the province of Quezon into a national road, by Representative Tan Keith Maika. To the Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 4955, establishing ICT hubs nationwide, by Representative Tan Keith Maika. To the Committee on Information and Communications Technology. House Bill 4956, amending Section 2 of the Paternity Leave Act of 1996, by Representative Manikis. To the Committee on Labor and Employment, and the Committee on Civil Service and Professional Regulation. House Bill 4957, reintroducing divorce in the Philippines, by Representative Manikis. To the Committee on Population and Family Relations. House Bill 4958, creating one additional division in the National Labor Relations Commission, increasing the number of commissioners from 23 to 26, by Representatives Duterte and Yap Eric. To the Committee on Labor and Employment. House Bill 4959, creating additional divisions in the Court of Appeals, increasing the number of Court of Appeals justices from 69 to 78, by Representatives Duterte and Yap Ed. To the Committee on Justice. House Bill 4960, adjusting the monthly pension of disability benefits of retirees of the DFA, by Representative Romulo. To the Committee on Foreign Affairs. House Bill numbers 4961 and 4963, establishing fire stations in Anawahan, Anahawan and Pintuyan, Southern Leyte, by Representative Yap Christopherson. To the Committee on Public Order and Safety. 
House Bill Numbers 4962 and 4964, establishing satellite multi-species multi marine hatcheries in Libangon and Pintuyan, Southern Leyte, by Representative Yap Christopherson. With the Committee on Aquaculture and Fisheries Resources. House Bill 4965, declaring November 12th of every year as a regular holiday in the city of Valenzuela, by Representatives Gachalian and Martinez. To the Committee on Local Government. House Bill 4966, upgrading the minimum salary grade of public school guidance counselors from salary grade 11 to salary grade 12, by Representative Saulo. To the Committee on Appropriations. House Bill 4967, establishing Establishing Resource Development and Crisis Assistance Centers for Women and Children in every province and city of the country. By Representative Saulog. To the Committee on Women and Gender Equality. House Bill 4968, modifying the penalties in the sale of tobacco products to minors. By Representative Saulog. To the Committee on Welfare of Children. House Bill 4969, providing assistance to minimum wage earners by waiving government fees and charges collected in connection with the issuance of documents required in their application for employment. By Representative Saulog. To the Committee on Labor and Employment. House Bill 4970, institutionalizing and encouraging partnerships between agriculture, village, farm management, and enterprises, and smallholder farmers and fisher folk. By Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Agriculture and Food. House Bill 4971, providing a standard of care for the treatment of persons with bleeding disorders, establishing treatment centers. By Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 4972, Institutionalizing an installment payment scheme on basic utility bills during calamities by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Disaster Resilience. House Bill 4973, institutionalizing the community-driven development approach as a national strategy for inclusive growth and social protection by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Poverty Alleviation. House Bill 4974, providing for a comprehensive development plan for the dairy industry geared towards Philippine dairy self-sufficiency by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Agriculture and Food. House Bill 4975, establishing family health and wellness centers in every city and municipality in the Philippines, by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Health. House Bill 4976, exempting incentives, rewards, bonuses, and other forms of emoluments received by national athletes and coaches, and coaches from taxes, by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Ways and Means. House Bill 4977, providing national support for the growth of local culture and history, by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4978, providing for the reintegration and repat of repatriated OFWs into the Philippine workforce and business sector by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs. House Bill 4979, directing the DTI to create an online market platform for Filipino creative arts, products, and services to support MSMEs, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Trade and Industry. House Bill 4980, establishing the Rental Housing Subsidy Program by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Housing and Urban Development. House Bill 4981, providing for a monthly internet allowance for all public school teachers by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4982, establishing the Teaching Supplies Fund for all public schools in the country by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4983, Mandating the TESDA to update the existing training for work scholarship program, special training for employment program, and technical and vocational education and training by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. House Bill 4984, creating a national policy on sustainable urban mobility and the use of alternative sustainable modes of, trans of transportation by Representative De Los Santos. To the Committee on Transportation. House Bill 4985, converting the City College of San Fernando, Pampanga, in San Fernando City, Pampanga, into the State College of the City of San Fernando, Pampanga, by Representative Gonzalez Aurelio. To the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. House Bill 4986, regulating rentals of school dormitories and boarding houses, by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. House Bill 4987, standardizing the salaries of private school teachers, by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Labor and Employment. House Bill 4988, creating an online library by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4989, prohibiting discrimination of teachers who are unwed mothers, single parents, and members of the LGBT community by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4990, giving road access to all public schools in the country by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Public Works and Highways. House Bill 4991, creating the National Center for Scholarships by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. House Bill 4992, 
systematizing, standardizing, and unifying the school accreditation process in the Philippines by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture and the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. House Bill 4993, granting free tuition fees to teachers pursuing graduate studies by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. House Bill 4994, granting tax in incentives for research activities by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Science and Technology. House Bill 4995, institutionalizing the holding of job fairs in all colleges, universities, technical vocational schools, and senior high schools all over the country by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Labor and Employment. House Bill 4996, <coughs> providing OFWs and their dependents abroad access to higher education and skills training by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Overseas Workers Affairs. House Bill 4997, establishing a computer and internet laboratory in all public elementary and high, school, high schools in the country by Representative Bordado. To the Committee on Basic Education and Culture. House Bill 4998, instituting absolute divorce and dissolution of marriage in the Philippines by Representative Alvarez Pantaleon. To the Committee on Population and Family Relations. House Bill 499, 4999, creating two additional branches of municip municipal trial courts in cities in the 11th Judicial Region to be stationed at Tagum City, Davao del Norte by Representative Alvarez Pantaleon. To the Committee on Justice. House Bill 5000, providing protection to freelancers by Representative Herrera. To the Committee on Labor and Employment. Resolutions. House Resolution 393, condemning in the strongest terms the filing of charges of alleged terrorism financing against nuns and staff of the rural missionaries of the Philippines by Representatives Castro France, Rosas, and Manuel. To the Committee on Justice. House Resolution 394, urging the appropriate committees to conduct an inquiry into the Philippines' compliance with the International Convention on Standards of Training, Certification, and Watchkeeping for Seafarers by Representative Magsino. To the Committee on Rules. House Resolution 395, creating the House of Representatives Institute for Legislation and Legislative Governance by Representative Marcos. To the Committee on Accounts. House Resolution 396, directing the appropriate committees to conduct an inquiry into the alleged feeding of Muslim and Seventh-day Adventist inmates with pork prohibited by said inmates' religious beliefs by Representative Mastura. To the Committee on Rules. Subpoena Dusa Stekong, pursuant to Section 154, Rule 14 of the Provisional Rules of the House, transmitting the subpoena, the subpoena Dusa Stekong dated September 1, 2022, issued by the Office of the Ombudsman in Criminal Case Number SB-22-CRM-01492150. Committee Report. Committee Report number, fi number 50, submitted by the Committee on Higher and Technical Education on House Bill 5001. To the Committee on Rules. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Edsel C. Lagman of the 1st District of Albay, for, uh, on a matter of personal collective privilege. What is the nature of the privilege in which a gentleman from Albay is rising? Mr. Speaker, constituents and concerned citizens have been asking me what I would and the rest of the House say on this celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Declaration of Martial Law. The gentleman has 10 minutes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker and distinguished colleagues. 50 years constitute a golden jubilee, a celebration of life for half a century. But for the imposition of martial law on September 21, 1972, Five decades recall years of infamy, repression, corruption, and economic despoliation, the darkest years in Philippine history. Mankind celebrates both anniversaries of bliss and liberation, as well as years of despair and subjugation. Mr. Speaker, we must never forget the tragic and horrific past where friends and kin were suffered to torture, extrajudicial killings, and enforced disappearances for their conviction and heroism. We must always remember the years of state terrorism by a dictator as we firmly resolved never to allow 
this national tragedy to again besiege us. Commemorating the horrors of the past instills in us the obligation to guard and be vigilant against its recurrence. Remembering will make it more difficult to normalize violence and injustice. Remembering will help foreclose the propensity of people to turn a blind eye on official corruption and misconduct. Remembering is honoring the victims and survivors of martial law and celebrating their lives and sacrifices. Remembering helps counter revisionist attempts to deodorize the dictator's odious regime and sanitize the scene of the Marcoses against the Filipino people. Remembering is essential to demanding accountability. I remember and continue to honor the memory of my brother, Attorney Herman Lagman, the first lawyer to be forcibly disappeared during martial law on May 11, 1977 for courageously challenging above ground the martial law regime and its disastrous consequences on civil liberties and the national economy, and for his resolute crusade to promote and protect the rights of workers, Mon was forcibly disappeared by agents of the state and is still missing after 45 long years. The memory of both the horrors of martial law and the courage and the conviction of its victims and survivors must be indelible in our history. We must resist all attempts of historical revisionism and self-serving sanitizing in literature and the arts, including cinematography. Lamentably, the scenes of the, of the Marcos senior dictatorship the grievous human rights violations, unrestrained cronyism, the plunder of the economy, the negative economic growth are barely thought in educational institutions, despite the provision under the Republic Act 10368 of the Human Rights Victims Reparation and Recognition Act for the Deaf Ed and Chad to ensure that the teaching of martial law atrocities, the lives and sacrifices of human rights, violations, victims in our history are included in the basic secondary and tertiary education curricula. With the advent of troll farms cultivated by the beneficiaries and enablers of martial law, among others, what is heard and learned by, by our youth are sadly twisted facts and outright lies about the Marcos senior regime, deviously and massively peddled, mainly online, by paid perpetuous mercenaries masquerading as truth preachers. Mr. Speaker, the slogan, never again, is not used exclusively to, re to refer to martial law in the Philippine context. It was first used as a battle cry against the horrors of the Holocaust and later genocide and tyranny in general. But never again is more than a battle cry. It should be a moral code that we must live by. Never again must we allow ourselves to be victimized. Never again must our human rights be trampled upon. Never again must our nation be shrouded in fear and oppression. Never again should a brother so dearly loved lose his life so that we may live to enjoy basic freedoms. It is both a prayer and a promise that we will never forget the tragedy of martial law and that evil will never again be allowed to thrive. We should not forget the perpetrators and beneficiaries of martial law until they admit their odious crimes and show concrete repentance. Filipinos can forgive, but should never forget the atrocities and despotism of martial law. 
widespread amnesia of the abhorrent abuses and inordinate profligacy of the martial law era must be cured and jettisoned as a national malaise. Mr. Speaker, concrete apology and genuine repentance are demanded of martial law's perpetrators and beneficiaries in order to eventually achieve this administration's much valued call for national unity. Acknowledging and rectifying the errors, the, hurt, the errors and excesses of the past is a condition precedent to forging national unity as what Germany and Spain did on the respective odious regimes of Adolf Hitler and Francisco Franco. But, Mr. Speaker, it seems that instead of apologies and repentance, the main beneficiaries of martial law are determined to whitewash this blood-stained and repugnant years as they continue to encourage negative historical revisionism by purging the sins of Marcos Sr., his cronies, the Marcos family, by sweeping them under the filthy rug of historical perfidy. Last September 15, it was reported that President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. denied that his father was ever a dictator because of so-called consultations regularly conducted by his father in Malacanian. Mr. Speaker, when an authoritarian leader with vast or limitless powers consults with favored sectors, these stakeholders will merely concur with the despots' self-serving desires or decisions. In the context of the Marcos, of the Marcos martial law, when dissent was conveniently stifled, consultation inevitably was a farce. It should, be, it should be recalled that upon his declaration of martial law, Marcos Sr. padlock Congress and exercised legislative powers by issuing a series of executive issuances that have the force of law without any consultation with the people or concerned stakeholders. <laughs> Filial defense is understandable, but history does not lie in documenting the dictatorship of Ferdinand Marcos Sr. during his martial law regime. His son's denials do not and cannot change the horrors of the past. It cannot repeal statutes and overturn Supreme Court decisions declaring indubitably the atrocities and banalities of the Marcos dictatorship. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, for as long as President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. persists in denying the undeniable dictatorship of his father, Ben Marcos Jr. will forever be known as the son of the Marcos dictator. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, distinguished colleagues. What is the pleasure of the Honorable Majority Floor Leader? Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Raul Manuel for his manifestation on the privileged speech of the Honorable Lagman. What is the nature of the privilege of the Honorable Raul Manuel? This is a short manifestation, Mr. Speaker, uh, based on the topic that was uh, delivered by uh, Congressman Lagman. The gentleman has 10 minutes for his privilege. Uh, maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. Uh, we appreciate uh, the effort of our uh, colleague, Congressman Lagman, to uh, speak about this uh, topic sa araw na ito habang uh, ginugunita natin ang 50th year ng uh, deklarasyon ng martial law sa ating bansa. Uh, the youth of today will not forget and will continue to study the lessons that have been imparted to us by past generations who fought for democracy in our country and who... Uh, try to push for uh, the rights of our people so that these are protected 
from any types of threats or attacks. Sa panahon ngayon, Mr. Speaker, ay uh, tila ba nararamdaman pa rin natin yung mga hibo ng repressive and tyrannical rule sa ating bansa. At hindi din dyan na uh, nakakatakas at isa pa nga sa mga primaryang target ang mga kabataang Pilipino. Hayaan po ninyo ako, Mr. Speaker, na ibahagi ang isang insidente na naganap kahapon sa isang aktibidad na ginanap sana in line with the commemoration of the 50th year of martial law declaration. Naglunsad ng isang educational film showing activity ang Kabataan Partilist Pasay sa Barangay 178, isang araw bago ang paggunita. Pero pinatigil ito ng limang hindi uniformadong ahente ng intelligence unit ng PNP Pasay City. Habang naghahanda ang mga kabataan para sa aktibidad at kinakausap ang mga dumalo rito, ay nanghimasok ang mga ahente ng PNP na nangharas at nagvideo ng walang paalam sa lugar. Ang isa sa mga ahente ay nagpakita pa ng barel sa mga lumahok at maging sa media personnel sa event upang manindak habang nagtatanong-tanong siya. Kinumpis ka niya ang sign-up sheets at iba pang kagamitan para sa aktibidad. Sinubukan din nilang maniktik sa pagtatanong sa mga participants at sa facilitators ng activity kung sino-sino ang nanguna at kalahok doon sa film showing. Pinakita naman ng mga kabataan ang resibo ng pagrenta ng covered court mula sa nasabing barangay. At maging ang barangay captain ay nakiusap sa mga pulis na hayaan ng matuloy ang film showing. Pero ang idinahilan lang ng mga ahente ay hindi raw gugustuhin, di umano, ng ating chief executive sa Malacanang ang ganong tipo ng aktibidad. Matapos ang pag-uusap ay nagmatigas ang mga pulis at napilitang hindi na ituloy ang film showing ng mga facilitators. Naninindigan tayo na hindi labag sa batas ang pagmulat sa mata ng mga kapakabataan at mamamayan. Direktang pamamasista na ito, katulad ng nangyari sa Nazi Germany at noong batas militar ni Marcos Sr. Inilunsad ang aktibidad na iyon para ipaalam sa bagong henerasyon ng kabataan ang malagim na kasaysayan ng batas militar sa bansa. Uh, Mr. Speaker, nakakapangilabot na ang mga nangyari dati na nababasa lang natin sa mga nobela, sa mga iba't ibang akda, sa mga historical books ay sinisikap ng inormalize ngayon, Mr. Speaker. Kaya naman, sa bahagi natin, hindi natin papahintulutan na magpatuloy pa ang ganitong aktibidad ng mga law enforcement agents natin na dapat ay nagtitiyak ng peace and order sa ating bansa. Hindi po banta sa peace and order ang pag-aaral ng kasaysayan, hindi banta sa peace and order ang uh, pagpapalaganap ng katotohanan. Ating uh, sariwain ang mga alaala at ang mga aral dahil ito ay magiging gabay ng ating bansa sa kung paano tayo tunay na magkakaisa tungo sa kaunlaran na nakabatay sa hustisya, Mr. Speaker. Yun lamang, maraming salamat. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Arlene Brosas for her manifestation. What is the nature of the privilege in which the Honorable Arlene Brosas Yes, Mr. Speaker, this, this is in support uh, for the uh, privileged speech of our esteemed colleague, uh, Congressman, uh, Congressman Lagman, in his, uh, in his speech about the martial law at 50 or the anniversary of the declaration of martial law. The lady has 10 minutes for, his privilege, for her privileged speech. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. This is a short manifestation, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, sa commemoration po ng ika 50th no, o limampung taon ng deklarasyon ng batas militar ni Marcos Sr., inaalala at pinagpupugayan namin ang lahat ng kababaihan at mamayang lumaban para biguin ang diktatura. 
Pinag-aalab din namin ang diwa ng paglaban para sa tuloy-tuloy na pagsusulong ng tunay na demokrasya at kalayaan. Hindi po natin malilimot ang libo-libong pinaslang at kinulong sa ilalim ng diktaturang Marcos. At tuloy-tuloy po ang ating paniningil, tuloy ang ating pagsigaw ng katarungan, never again, never forget. Maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you. Please take note that the three group members of the House who spoke a while ago stood on a question of privilege and not on a privilege hour scheduled every Monday. What is the pleasure of the Majority Leader? Mr. Speaker, I move that we now continue consideration of House Bill 4488 and request that the Secretary General read the titles of the bills. Is there any objection? Chair is done. The Secretary General is directed to read the title of House Bill 4488. House Bill 4488, an act appropriating funds for the operation of the government of the Republic of the Philippines from January 1 to December 31, 2023. Majority Leader. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for one minute. Session suspended. Session is resumed. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, on other executive offices, we begin with Philippine Space Agency. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I recognize the Honorable Bem Noel for his manifestations. The Honorable Bem Noel is recognized. Mahupay nga aga, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Uh, there being no member from the minority who wishes to interpolate on the budget of the Philippine Space Agency, uh, we move that uh, we uh, terminate the period of interpolation and debate on the budget of the same. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the liberation of the Philippine Space Agency. Is there any objection? Chair Houston, motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, uh, we continue uh, film, the Film Development Council of the Philippines. I now move that we recognize uh, the Honorable Stephen Tan for his manifestation. The Honorable Stephen Tan, Vice Chairperson of the Committee on Appropriations, is recognized to sponsor the budget of the Film Academy of the Philippines. Mr. Speaker, 
there being no member who wishes to interpret it on the budget of the Film and Development Council of the Philippines, I have I move that we terminate the period of interpolation and debate on the budget of... A correction from the chair, uh, it's uh, from the minority. So, majority leader, please. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the deliberation of the budget for Film Development Council of the Philippines. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion to terminate the deliberations of the Film Academy of the Philippines is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we continue the deliberation of the Optical Media Board. I now recognize the Honorable Stephen Tan for his manifestations. The Honorable Stephen Tan of the minority is recognized. Mr. Speaker, there being a member who wishes to interpolate on the budget of the Optical Media Board, I move that uh, we terminate the period of interpolation and debate. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate deliberation of the Optical Media Board. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion to terminate the interpolation of the optical of the budget of the optical media board is approved. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Please proceed, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, we now move. Uh, we, uh, we now continue with the Philippine Racing Commission. I now move that we recognize the Honorable Stephen Tan for his manifestation. The Honorable Stephen Tan is recognized. Um, Mr. Speaker, may we request the sponsor to please uh, take the rostrum? Uh, this representation missed it. Please take note of the request of the minority for the sponsor to stand at the rostrum number three. Please proceed, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we recognize the Honorable Stella Kimbo for his sponsorships. Okay. The Honorable Stella Kimbo, the Senior <laughs> Vice Chairman of the Vice Chair, Senior Vice Chairperson of the Committee on Appropriations is recognized to sponsor the budget of the Philippine Racing Commission. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we proceed? Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I recognize the Honorable Stephen Tan for his manifestation. The Honorable Stephen Tan is recognized. Mr. Speaker, there being no member who wishes to interpolate on the budget of Philippine Racing Commission, I move that we terminate the period of interpolation and debate. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the liberation of the Philippine Racing Commission. Uh, is there any objection? Chair is none. Motion is approved. <laughs> what is the pleasure of the Honorable Majority Leader? Session suspended.
Kupon. Session is resumed. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we continue with the consideration of the budget of the Civil Services Commission. Uh, I recognize the Honorable Stella Kimbo. The Honorable Chairperson. Vice Chairperson of the Senior Vice Chairperson of the Committee on Appropriations is recognized to sponsor the measure. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to sponsor the budget of the Civil Service Commission amounting to 2.726 billion. I am ready to answer questions from our colleagues, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. <clears throat> Session suspended. I I do this is the primary. Bakit ganito to? Session is resumed. Um, Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Marissa Del Mar Magsino for her manifestation. The Honorable Marisa Del Mar Magsino, OFW party list, is recognized for her interpellation. Good morning, Mr. Speaker. Thank you so much. May our dear sponsor yield to our interpellation? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Gladly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, our dear sponsor, as Human Resource Manager in the public sector, the Civil Service Commission seeks to build a civil service imbued not only with the value of excellence, but also with integrity. It is constitutionally mandated to uphold the principle that public office is a public trust. In pursuit thereof, CSE undertakes various programs specifically to curb corruption and promote good governance. One of these programs is the Administrative Justice Program, which has an allocation of 161,823 million for 2023. Under it is the sub-program of resolution of administrative cases filed or pending before it involving erring public officials and public employees subject to its jurisdiction. Mr. Speaker, may we know from the sponsor how many administrative cases are pending with the Commission as of this date? Mr. Speaker, almost 2,000 cases are pending as of today. Thank you, Mr. S uh, Madam Sponsor. Mr. Speaker, what is the rate of resolution of pending administrative cases? Mr. Speaker, as of August 2022, the case resolution rate is 84.18%, meaning of the 7,245 cases, 6,099 had been resolved. Okay. Mr. Speaker, how many of these resolutions resulted to finding of guilt or respondent civil servants, and how many are absolved? Uh, 
I Mr. Will, Mr. Yes. Speaker, yes. will Rep. Magsino agree to just receiving the reply through a written submission within the day? Yes, Mr. Noon. Speaker. Thank you, uh, Madam Sponsor. May, my next question is, what is the average time for the final disposition of any pending case? Mr. Speaker, it takes less than a year to uh, resolve cases on average. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Sponsor, thank you for those responses to my question, my dear Sponsor. We can see that the Commission is working hard to rid our bureaucracy of unfit, incompetent, and corrupt employees and officials who do not only drain our scarce resources, but taint the good name of our government and of sincere and honest civil servants. Mr. Speaker, the tasks of the Civil Service Commission are enormous and challenging for the Commission to fully discharge. They speak well of our efforts as a people and as a nation in establishing a government bureaucracy that is effective and efficient, manned by qualified and highly competent civil servants, guided by the principles of integrity, efficiency, effectiveness in public service, worthy of our people's trust and confidence. After all, our nation is only as good as a government that runs it for the people, without which there would be anarchy and chaos. There is no better reason than this, Mr. Speaker, in our contemplation to provide the Commission of Civil Service sufficient funding for its operations to live up to its task. No less the incumbent chairman of the commission, the Honorable Carlo Nograles, is aware of this imperative himself, being the chairman of the Committee on Appropriations of this August Chamber in the 17th Congress. Now finding my, himself on the other side of the fence, so to speak, I stand here to give my full support to him for the approval of the budget of the Commission on Civil Service for 2023. Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker, our sponsor, the uh, CSC family, and Chairman Nograles. Maraming salamat po, my colleagues. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the CSC, we uh, deeply appreciate the support uh, that Rep. Magsino had expressed. And in addition, you may uh, be happy to note that um, they had already quickly provided the data. So if I may, Mr. Speaker, total pending cases in the CSC as of August 30 is 3,630. Of that, 1,249 are disciplinary and 401 are non-disciplinary. And then out of the promulgated disciplinary cases dated January 18, 2022 up to June 2, 2022, 43 found the appellants guilty and 25 were exonerated due to lack of substantial evidence, while three appeals were dismissed due to technicality. Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Sponsor, thank you. Before we proceed, the Chair would like to acknowledge the presence in the plenary hall of two former colleagues, former members of the House of Representatives, now Secretary of Justice, Crispin Boying Rimulia, sir, and Civil, Civil Service Commission Chair, Carlo Nograles. Welcome again to the House of Representatives. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to recognize the Honorable Franz Castro for her interpolation. The Honorable Franz Castro of uh, Act Party List is recognized for her interpellation. Maraming salamat. Um, Aginong Speaker, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat, sa pamilya po ng Civil Service Commission na pinangunahan po ng ating former colleague, um, um, Chief Commissioner um, Carlo Nograles. 
So, yung unang ano ko po, topic ko po, uh, Mr. Speaker, yung may kinalaman sa mga contract of service at saka yung job order ng ating mga government employees. Uh, may kinalaman ito, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor doon sa um, DBA, uh, Civil Service Commission, COA, DBM, Joint Circular Number 1, series of 2017 hanggang dun sa pagpapalit ng ilang mga provision para, para dito hanggang sa 2021. So, sa the Civil Service Commission, COA, DBM, JC Number 1, series of 2017 was issued to provide the rules and regulations regarding the engagement of the services of COs and JOs workers in the government. Under item number 11, Mr. Speaker, on transitory provision, agencies may renew the individual contracts of existing contract of service and job order until December, 20, December 31, 2018. Thereafter, the hiring of contract of service and JO workers shall be in accordance with the provision of this joint circular. As far as practicable to ensure the, pro the protection of the existing Uh, uh, contract of service and JO workers. The institutional contract to be entered into by the government agencies with a contractor or service provider shall include a provision which shall state that the existing qualified contract of service or job order workers hired by the agency shall be given priority in the hiring of the contractor of service provider. So take note, uh, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor of the word priority. In 11.2, existing contract of service or job order workers shall be given priority in the appointment by the agency to its uh, vacant positions, provided that these workers meet the appropriate eligibility and other qualification requirements for the position subject to the existing civil service rules. 11.3, In accordance to Section 90 of the General Provisions of the Fiscal Year 2017 GAA, government agencies shall review their function, systems, and procedures, organizational structure, and staffing to determine the appropriate manpower complement to their programs, activities, and projects, etc. However, uh, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, The CSC COA DBM issued Joint Circular Number 1 in year 2018 to amend the earlier JC as follows. So, yung 11.1, agency may, yung renew, Mr. Speaker, pinalitan na yan ng engage. So, tinanggal yung individual contracts, services of existing uh, new contract. Tapos, through individual contract and renew existing individual contract until December 2018, 2020. So, there, thereafter, yung, yung hiring, pinalitan ng engagement, etc. And then, on 11.2, the institutional contract to be entered into by the government agencies with a contractor or service provider shall include a provision which will state that the, ex the existing Uh, J.O. or C.O.S. workers engaged by the agency may be considered in hiring by the contractor or service provider. So, ibig sabihin, uh, may be considered for hiring, hindi na siya priority. Okay? So, 11.3, nandoon yung agency CSC provide the approved merit selection, ano no, selection plan. Uh, dito rin sa 11.3, pinalitan yung qualified, pinalitan yung existing ng qualified and considered for appointment. And so on, ano po, so marami pong ano, no, mga pinalitan hanggang sa nakarating po tayo dun sa 11.2. Okay, so uh, ang ibig sabihin nito, ang tanong ko Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, So, yung mga existing na mga JOs and mga COs na nakalagay dito ay priority, uh, nakalagay, uh, nakalagay din di, sa, uh, sa original, ay dapat sila ay to be ano, no, given priority, pero tinanggal, considered. 
at saka yung existing ginawa siyang qualified. Okay. So may we know the ano no the the rationale for this uh, Mr. Speaker kasi pag ginawa natin ganito we are not considering yung length of service. Alam niyo po Mr. Speaker, marami po tayong contract of service na almost ano na po yan ano 600,000 sa lahat ng mga ahensya at saka sa mga LGUs. At saka kung ganito po ano hindi natin pinoproteksyonan yung length of service ng ating mga contract of service and JOs. Mr. Speaker, napaga, napahaganda po ng mga observations ng uh, ating kagalang-galang na Honorable Castro. Unfortunately, ito pong uh, matter na to ay wala po sa jurisdiction ng uh, CSC. Ang uh, pinakamaganda po ay ang DBM ang magbigay ng sagot po dito sa katanungan na to. Ang JO at, C at uh, Contract of Service ay MOOE items po sila. Uh, hindi po PS, so yun po yung rational kung bakit uh, wala po sa jurisdiction ng CSC ang mga issues na yan, Mr. Speaker. Um, I beg to disagree, Mr. Speaker, dahil ito ay joint. So hindi tayo pwedeng, ano no, hindi tayo pwedeng sabihin natin sa DBM yan. Pag sinabi natin CSC, COA at DBM joint circular, Actually, dun sa last na, mga, na, na circular, Mr. Speaker, uh, so, Mr. andun Speaker, pa rin yung civil service. Pero ang, ang gusto nating marinig sa ating distinguished sponsor, yung ano no, uh, bakit pumayag? Sige, bakit pumayag ang civil service na hindi priority? Ang, ilag, ang ano no ilagay as as in the original na uh, CSC COA DBM JC at saka yung sinabi natin kanina dito na dapat ay yung qualifications so pwede ba nating malaman kasi hindi pwedeng basta na lang sabihin na DBM yan at DBM sa DBM ko na lang itanong ito di ba dapat ang civil service commission nagpoprotekta siya ng lahat ng mga government employees be it regular be it ano no uh, na, um, uh, non regular or JOs and COs uh, Mr. Mr. Speaker, Speaker we uh, reiterate our point earlier doon po sa pinaka bagong joint cir circular kasama lang po diyan ay DBM at COA however dahil napaka proactive napaka husay ng ating uh, chairman eh Nagkakaroon na po sila ng talakayan na kung pwede ay uh, maisama po sila. But at this point, eh, sana po galangin natin ang jurisdiction ng DBM at COA on the matter, Mr. Speaker. Okay, um, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, it seems that, ano no, so it seems that the civil service, ano, um, ay, ano no, ay mukhang hindi siya talagang, um, nagbibigay ng protection. Tama ba ako dito sa ganito? Kasi kung, kung tutuusin natin ang nang galing ito sa 2018 na kung tutuusin natin Mr. Speaker, meron talagang hand ang civil service dito mula dun sa uh, joint circular number 2017 hanggang doon sa uh, 20 ano no, 2020. So 2021 lang naman nagkaroon ng civil uh, uh, BBM and and COA. So siguro um, um, Mr. Speaker, ano na lang po kayang proteksyon ang makukuha ng mga JOs and COs sa ating Civil Service Commission uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor. Mr. Speaker, at this point in time, hindi legally considered na government employee ang JOs at COs. However, siyempre no uh, ang CSC bilang parang HR na rin ng ating buong gobyerno, syempre uh, inaalala pa rin ang welfare ng JOs at saka COS. Kaya ang talagang gustong mangyari ng CSC is maabsorb ang mga JOs at COS into the government. So yan nga po, um, nakakapag-isip po sila ng mga uh, innovations tulad ng 
pagkakaroon ng isang point system para sa mga existing na JOs. Nang sa ganon, yung mga matagal na pong JO o matagal na pong COS ay magkakaroon ng dagdag na bonus points pagkukuha po sila ng civil service eligibility exam. So that's one way na may encourage ang JOs at COS na ma-absorb ng ating mga government into authorized plantilla positions, Mr. Speaker. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, distinguished sponsor. So, ilan po sa ano, no, Mr. Speaker, mga kapuna-puna na mga pagbabago doon sa uh, J JC number 2, series of 2020 ng COA at DBM. So, maari ko na lang sigurong uh, for, for the information of the civil service, no? So, una, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, tinanggal ang one-year limitation sa pag-hire ng mga institutional COs that covers lump sum work or services to perform janitorial, security, consultancy, and other support functions. Number two, in-extend ang patuloy na pag-hire ng mga contractual mula December 31, 2020 patungong December 31, 2022. And number three, subject na sa availability of funds, quote-unquote, kung makakatanggap ng premium ang mga COs and JOs. Ang nagiging problema pa nito, uh, Mr. Speaker, na narinig ko doon sa mga JOs and COs mula doon sa aking pakikipagkonsultasyon sa kanila, um, once na ano po ano, madelay sila ng pagbabayad sa BIR. Alam nyo po, nagbabayad din sila, Mr. Speaker, ng tax, uh, distinguished sponsor, pag nabilay ng pagbabayad ng tax, ay ano no, uh, merong mga penalty kahit na sila ay JO and COs. So, ano po masasabi natin dito, mas lalong naging kawawa ang mga COs and JOs workers sa ilalim ng JC number 2, 2020 ng COA at DBM. Kapansin-pansin na hindi isinama ang CSC sa paggawa ng bagong JC, hindi tulad ng mga, na, 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 mga naunang dalawang uh, joint circular. Okay? Number two, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, yung tungkol doon sa under the GAA 2022 changes in the general provision, particularly in section on the employment of contractual, ano no, contractual personnel. As compared to the NEP of 2023, So, in, on section 43, nakalagay po dito sa NEP ng 2023, Mr. Speaker, employment of contractual personnel. Contractual personnel may be hired by the agencies as part of their organization in order to perform agencies' function or specific vital activities or services which cannot be provided by the regular permanent staff of the hiring agencies subject to compliance with the organizational staffing and compensation standard set by the DBM. The total annual personnel services requirement for contractual personnel to cover um, salaries, uh, etc., etc. So, contractual personnel shall be considered as an employee of the hiring agency, but only during the period when the services are reasonably required. So, yung, pag, yung changes po dito, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, from GAA 2022 to NEP 2023, contractual personnel shall be considered as an employee of the hiring agency, but only during the period when their services are reasonably required. So, tinanggal po yung existing contractual employee who are required for any vacant position within the agency to which... Um, wish to apply shall be considered in hiring the permanent employees by the agency. So, ano po ba yung masasabi dito ng ating distinguished sponsor, uh, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, sa totoo lang po talagang naiintindihan natin ang uh, kalagayan, ang sitwasyon, ang uh, naradanasan ng ating mga JOs at COs, COS. Talagang uh, kawawa po talaga sila. Kaya, Again, ang posisyon ng CSC is dapat talaga silang ma-absorb into plantilla positions. And as of today, 
Mr. Speaker, there are 171,000 unfilled positions in government. So yan po, uh, ang pinagtatakahan natin is um, bakit hindi uh, ma-absorb ng agencies ang JOs. Of course, maraming dahilan dyan. Ang CSC ay tumutulong para ma-absorb sila. Um, alam naman natin na meron ding uh, tinatawag na scrap and build option. Uh, na ibig sabihin kung yung mga unfilled positions mo ay hindi nagmamatch dun sa pangangailangan ng isang ahensya and therefore they end up having to hire or engage a JO or COS. Pwede naman ipagsama-sama in a scrap and build way ang mga positions nang sa ganon makapag-absorb ng mas maraming JOs and COSs. And at the same time, um, Mr. Speaker, uh, Rep. Castro, you might be pleased to know that Finally, DBM and uh, COA are re-inviting CSC para baka makasama na ulit sila dito sa joint circular na pinag-uusapan po natin. Uh, sa totoo lang, uh, Mr. Speaker, gusto natin ay prioritize at hindi lang quote-unquote considered in the hiring of permanent employees. Kaso sa NEP 2023, tinanggal nila yung provision para maging permanent employee ang mga contractual personnel. So, ang tanong ko, Mr. Speaker, susuportahan ba ta ako? Susuportahan ba ang kinatawang ito ng ating distinguished sponsor para maibalik natin doon sa provision sa, sa NEP yung sinasabi nating uh, prioritization or priority at hindi lang quote-unquote considered. Pag-aaralan po natin yan, ang pinaka-importante naman ay uh, um, we have to observe yung ating mga existing rules and regulations. Asahan niyo po okay. ang, uh, ang suporta natin um, pagkatapos po natin pag-aaralan na mabuti. Actually, Mr. Speaker, nagawa naman yan eh, uh, before 2020. So bakit hindi natin pwedeng gawin, di ba? Yung, yung pinalitan yung priority sila at hindi considered. Alam niyo po, Hindi uh, sa sinabi po ng distinguished sponsor kanina, kundi sila kailangan ng department. Pero Mr. Speaker, merong 5 years, merong 10 years, merong 15 years, hanggang mag-retire na na 35 years ang isang contractual, ando doon pa rin, uh, contractual pa rin. So bakit natin sasabihin na hindi sila kailangan o hindi nagmamatch yung kanilang, yung kanilang, uh, uh, kanilang ano no, uh, ability or kanilang uh, qualification doon sa kanilang position. Kasi kung hindi talaga sila kailangan, dapat one year tanggal na sila. Pero Mr. Speaker, five years, ten years, fifteen hanggang thirty years ang mga contractual na ito. So anong masasabi dito ng ating distinguished sponsor? Mr. Speaker, una sa lahat, paglilinaw, paglilinaw lang po, hindi ko po sinabi na hindi sila kailangan. Ang sina the fact that they are... Uh, currently engaged as JOs, obviously means na kailangan sila ng ahensya. Ang sinasabi ko lang po, ang mga available na positions ay baka hindi nagmamatch. Ibig sabihin, kung kailangan mo ng isang IT specialist, pero doon po sa unfilled positions mo, wala naman pong akma doon sa IT specialist, pero kailangan mo ng IT specialist. Kaya eh, hire mo ang IT specialist as a consultant. Kaya COS ang... Uh, ang uh, magiging ending niya. Pero hindi ko po sinabi na hindi sila kailangan. Paglilinaw lang po, Mr. Speaker. So, oh, sana magkaroon tayo, Mr. Speaker, ano, ng siguro uh, pag-aralan natin yung paano kalang batas na tungkol dito sa um, ganitong kalakaran sa ating gover gobyerno na kung saan tayo yung talaga yung ano, no, uh, nagtataguyod ng contractualization sa sa ating bansa ang, ang government pa ang nagtataguyod ng ganito. So paglilinaw pa rin um, sinasabi natin na talagang kung hindi fit at hindi qualified at hindi uh, walang performance yung mga COs and JOs sana hindi sila tumagal ng more than 5 hanggang 30 years na sila ay nag ano no, nag, na sila ay nag uh, nagretire na. So halimbawa, itong mga contract of service na ito, na, con na consultant, di naman sila mga consultant eh, actually gumagampan din sila ng mga trabaho, ng mga regular employees. Actually, marami pa nga dyan ay talagang ano, no, mas qualified. Okay? Um, 
Tignan na lang din natin, um, Sir Speaker, uh, willing ba ang, um, ang Civil Service Commission na mag-review ano, no, mag nitong mga JOs and COs, uh, Mr. Speaker, sa iba't ibang mga ahensya. So, titignan natin yung qualification, length of service, at saka yung fitness nila doon sa position. So, ito po yung kailangan natin eh. Matagal na natin po itong, ano no, matagal na po natin itong uh, problema, yung mga COs and JOs sa atin. Hindi naman sila problema, no? Ibig sabihin, yung um, um, uh, security of tenure. Kailangan maka-enjoy din sila ng security of tenure, katulad ng mga regular employees. Kahit nga dito, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, marami rin tayong JOs and COs dito na Hindi natin namamalayan mga 10 years, 15 years, pero essential sila sa atin dito. ba? Diba? So, dapat kahit na dito, pag-aralan natin na i-permanent na natin yung mga COs and JOs na nagsisilbi sa atin sa, sa House of Representatives for more than 10 years, 15, and 20 years. Um, bakit po sinasabi ko ito, Mr. Speaker? Dahil kapag JOs and COs mananatili po, na wala silang mga benefits na katulad na ine-enjoy na mga regular employees. Inaano natin yung kanilang serbisyo, pero dapat meron din silang mga benefits na katulad na ine-enjoy na mga regular employees. So, yun po yung aking, ano no, yun po yung aking panawagan. Mr. Speaker, muli, um, I uh, reiterate a uh, position that I mentioned earlier that the CSC really wishes for JOs and COSs to be absorbed into um, authorized plantilla positions. And therefore, willing na willing po ang CSC na pag po ang lahat po ng mga issues na nabanggit po ni Representative Castro. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I think yung ilan, ilan ko pang mga questions ay to be directed sa DBM and COA. Um, marami salamat, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Distinguished Sponsor. Before we recognize the next interpellator, the chair would like to acknowledge the presence of another former colleague, uh, the Honorable former Congressman Jerry Selapudin, who is now with the Southern Philippines Development Authority. Welcome back again to the House of Representatives. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Arlene Brosas for interpellation. The Honorable Arlene Brosas of Gabriela Party List is recognized for her interpellation. Please proceed, Madam. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. Will the sponsor yield to uh, some questions, Mr. Speaker? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Akala ko mag din, Mr. Speaker, si uh, Rep. Brosas. No, Mr. Speaker, um, walang holiday sa atin. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, ito po ay isang question lang kasi ito po ay inilapit ko na kay um, uh, CSC Chairman, inilapit ko na kay um, uh, CSC uh, si Eileen Lazada, inilapit ko na po kahit po sa kulig natin kay Kong Migs Nograles para po malaman kung ano yung case no, ng inaabot ng basiwa sa employees po ito, Union Civil Service, na sila po ay tinanggal sa trabaho, pero nagkaroon po ng desisyon noong August 20, 2021, ang CSC Regional Office, na sila ay bumalik na no? at i-reinstall, o reinstate pala, sorry. Um, yung... Request po nila mula sa CSC main office para i-deny yung appeal ng Basiwa Board sa CSC regional office decision that Basiwa Board illegally dismissed 59 employees and to return to their respective position and payment of em employees' back wages. Yan po sana yung gusto kong malaman. Ano po ba talaga ang update na dito at bakit ever since kahit na po nag na no at uh, 3 years na na walang trabaho yung ating mga uh, Basiwa employees hindi ma-reinstall hanggang ngayon. Hindi ma-reinstate hanggang ngayon. 
Mr. Speaker, the case involves um, 59 workers. So, hindi po madali dahil ito po ay isang bulk case. But as we speak, the CSC is drafting the decision, Mr. Speaker. Drafting the decision, Mr. Speaker, kahit isa lang po doon sa mga ano, ay hindi pa po natin nakikita. Yes, the, the decision, the single decision will apply to all 59, Mr. Speaker. Yes, so is it favorable to the Basiwa employees, Mr. Speaker? Ano ba ang current na kalagayan nito? Mr. Speaker, kung sagutin ko po yan, eh, ako naman ay may paglabag sa batas. Hindi po natin pwedeng sagutin po yan, Mr. Speaker. Okay, Mr. Speaker. At least malalaman po natin at maibibigay sa atin ano, yung decision kaugnay dyan. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yun lang, yun po, yung, yun po sana, sana. Uh, 59 employees po ito. May pamilya po ito. Kumakain na araw-araw. Tatlong taon silang walang trabaho. Walang back wages, walang anything. So, Mr. Speaker, sana po matugon na natin yung kanilang pangangailangan. Ang isa po dito ay asawa ng yumaong journalist no, na si Nonoy Espina na lumaban din sa oppression ng panahon ng diktatura. Kaya po, sana po, no, etong Basiwa employees ay Marine State na. Maraming maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Madam Sponsor. Huh? Salamat, Mr. Speaker and uh, dear colleague. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Bem Noel. The Honorable Bem Noel is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, there being no member from the minority who wishes to interpolate uh, on the budget of the Civil Service Commission and in deference to a fraternity brother, the chairman of the Civil Service Commission, I move that we terminate the, inter the period of interpolation and debate on the budget of the civil service. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate budget deliberation of the civil service. Is there any objection? Hearing none. The uh, period of interpolation for the budget of the civil service commission is hereby terminated. Congratulations. Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend session. Session suspended.
Stop. Development na kayo. Pare, di. Sambay-sambay na natin. Session is resumed. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to recognize uh, the Honorable Bem Noel. Mr. The Honorable Speaker. Bem Noel is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. May I amend my uh, earlier motion uh, uh, on the termination of the budget of the civil service to include its attached agencies? Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the majority, I move to adopt the amendment. Is there any objection? Chair Houston, motion is approved. Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of Southern Philippines Development Authority. Uh, And for this purpose, I move to recognize the Honorable Hataman. Uh, please, uh, Mr. Speaker, repeat the agency. What agency, Your Honor? Southern Philippine Development Authority. SPDA. Mm -hmm. Wait, wait. The Honorable Hataman. May now proceed. Your Honor. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. On the part of the minority, there being no members who wish to interpolate on the budget of the Southern Philippine Development Authority, I move to terminate the period of interpolation and debate. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate budget deliberations of the Southern Philippine Development Authority. Is there any objection? Chair is done. The deliberations on the budget of the Southern Philippines Development Authority is hereby terminated. Congratulations. Congratulations. <laughs> Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of Development Academy of the Philippines. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move to recognize Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move to recognize the Honorable Hataman. The Honorable Ed Selagman is recognized. Um, Mr. Speaker, may we know who is the sponsor of the budget of the Development Academy of the Philippines? Majority Leader. Uh, we recognize the Honorable FAD. The Honorable Faustino Inod. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on the part of the minority, there being no members who wishes to interpolate on the budget of the Development Academy of the Philippines, I move to terminate the period of interpolation and debate. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberations of the Development Academy of the Philippines. Is there any objection? Chair is none. The budget deliberations of the Development Academy of the Philippines is now terminated. Congratulations. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Department of Justice. Justice. Yes, uh, please proceed, Your Honor. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Gonzaga. The Honorable Ruel Peter Gonzaga, Vice Chairperson of the Committee on Appropriations is recognized to sponsor the budget of the Department of Justice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. We are now ready to defend the budget of the Department of Justice in the amount of 26 billion, 686 million. Session is suspended.
announcement from the presiding officer. Before we proceed, uh, for those uh, budgets who have already been taken up or approved, uh, the staff and uh, personnel kindly vacate the area so the other agencies whose budget will be taken up can uh, take over the seats. Session is resumed. Majority floor leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Gonzaga. The Honorable Vice Chairperson of the Committee on Appropriations, Honorable Ruel Peter Gonzaga, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good morning. We are ready to defend the Department of Justice. To two hundred twenty-six billion six hundred eighty-six million budget for 2023 calendar year 2023. We are ready, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Arlene Brosas for her interpolation. The Honorable Arlene Brosas of uh, Gabriela Party List is recognized for her interpolation.
Session suspended. Ayan na, ayan na. Session is resumed. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Arlene Brosas. The Honorable Arlene Brosas is recognized for her interpellation. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, may the good sponsor yield to a few questions, Mr. Speaker? Yes, ma'am. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on my first question, um, last June 30, 2022, uh, kami po ay nag-file ng House Bill Number 402 or the Dignity for Women Deprived of Liberty Act, which defined and enumerated the rights of women who are incarcerated and in prison. Now, these rights include right to have access to health care, health care, right against restraint when pregnant, right against close confinement or discipl disciplinary segregation, and right to information and education. Now, in connection to this, the Bangkok rules or the United Nations rules for the treatment of women prisoners and non-custodial measures for women offenders was adopted by the UN General Assembly on December 2010 to set international standards to address the needs of women in the criminal justice system. Since the Philippines is a member of the UN, has the Bureau of Corrections done anything to address and follow the standards set by the Bangkok rules? Mr. Speaker, uh, Ginong sponsor. It is a very welcome move to, to have that kind of bill, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, Madam Interpellator and Mr. Speaker. The question is whether or not the Bureau of Corrections are attending to the needs as well as the constitutional rights of women deprived of liberty. It, is, it has been the practice of this government and it has been the practice of the Bureau of Corrections to protect and to enhance liberties, uh, the, uh, women deprived of liberties. So rest assured, Madam uh, Interpellator, Mr. Speaker, that the Bureau of Corrections will continue the, the protection and the enhancement of the rights of women, particularly those deprived of liberties. So, uh, Mr. Speaker, sa Bangkok rules po, ano-ano yung nagagawa ng Bureau of Corrections? We have examples. Na Meron naman po, for example, may, may batas naman tayo na pag ang babae ay buntis, ay dapat may, may tawag dyan kwarto para sa sariling, sariling kwarto yung buntis na ba, di, uh, babae na deprived of liberty. Pag may naman bisita, pamilya ba o miyembro ng pamilya, yung babae na deprived ng liberty, ay meron naman pong kwarto na nakalaan para sa kanila. Kung may babae naman na may sakit, ay meron naman pong kwarto para sa kanila at meron naman pong mga tao o empleyado ng gobyerno na nakalaan para sa kapakanan ng mga babaeng may sakit. So those words are the examples what the Bureau of Corrections have done to protect the rights of women deprived of liberties, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, ina-apply nyo po sa ating penal system ang Bangkok rules. Tama ba, Mr. Speaker? Exactly, Mr. Speaker. 
Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, kaugnay naman sa... It, is, it has been more than a year since the March 7, 2021 po, no? Na Bloody Sunday murders of nine human rights activists. Now, during simultaneous raids by the PNP and the Philippine Army in their homes in Rizal, Batangas, and Cavite. As of January 2022, only the murders of Emmanuel Mani Asuncion, Bagong Alyansang Makabayan Cavite Secretary General, and Ana Maris Chai Lemita Evangelista, yung mag-asawa po, and Ariel Evangelista, members of Ugnaya ng Mamayan laban sa pagwawasak ng kalikasan at kalupaan, have been addressed through filing of murder complaints against a total of 34 police officers. However, these complaints are still under the prosecutor's offices and no case has yet been filed in court. Can we get an update on these pending complaints filed before the prosecutor's offices? Halimbawa po, sino yung, uh, clarify po natin, sino ang nag-file ng complaint sa cases nila Mani, ang uh, mag-asawang evangelista, NBI po ba? Meron na po bang nag-file ng other complaints against the police officers sa mga pending cases? With regard to the Bloody Sunday that had happened in Rizal, there are cases filed as of August 30, 2022. With regard to the case versus NBI, uh, case title NBI Solinda, Rosenda Limita versus Lieutenant Colonel Joseph Tan Nando et al. There are almost 20 respondents. These cases, this case has been, uh, has been filed. And with regard to victim Emmanuel Asuncion, <coughs> as of January, 20, uh, January 13, 2022, <coughs> there is a continuation of the preliminary investigation. So the respondents are almost 20 respondents. So Madam, Speak, uh, Madam Interpolator, Mr. Speaker, the prosecutors under the Department of Justice are doing their job for the prosecution of the respondents. Uh, Mr. Speaker, nasa NBI po ba? The, the, sta the status of the cases now are in the prosecution office for preliminary investigation. PI so after preliminary investigation, rest assured, if there is probable cause, cases will be filed against the respondents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Sana po ay maasikaso agad no, ng prosecutor's office ito. Dahil, ibig sabihin, after kailan po yan nangyari? After a year? After ay hindi pa rin, hindi pa rin po nakakasuhan yung mga perpetrators nito. Ms. Uh, Mr. Speaker, kaugnay po sa... Yun lang po ba yung update, Mr. Speaker? So, yes, sa PI Mr. Pa lang. Speaker. Kaugnay naman po sa proposed funding ng 2023 for MOOE for local funding ng implementation ng Administrative Order Number no. 35 on the Interagency Committee on Extra Legal Kill Killings and Forced Disappearances, Torture and Other Grave Violations of the Right to Life, Liberty and Security of Persons, uh, parang bumaba po siya, no? Lower than the 2022 approved budget for this item. Mula po 3, uh, mula 7.392, bumaba ng 3.515 million. Tama po ba, Mr. Speaker? Yes, Mr. Speaker. You're correct. Bakit po Wrong. nagkaroon ng ganitong kalaking kalta sa budget? considering there are still a lot of extrajudicial killings that are unaccounted for. Kung idadagdag po natin yung unsolved cases ng pag-torture, pagpaslang, halimbawa kay Anak Pawis Chairperson Randall Etchanis, 
at ang pagbaril at pagpatay kay Karapatan para legal Zara Alvarez, bakit po bumaba yung budget natin para dyan? At anong, anong items po ang natanggal, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, there is indeed a decrease of the budget from 10.9 to 3.5. You are correct there. But the budget utilization of under 2022 is ongoing. So, idagdag mo natin yung budget for 2023, still meron pa namang budget yung ahensya dyan. So, do not be worried, Madam Interpellator, Mr. Speaker, the DBM is performing his job to situate that all agencies, arms of the government, are functioning well. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Sponsor, meron pang sobrang budget before. Yun ba yung sinasabi ninyo? Kaya Hindi magagamit pa. Budget, pa. Yung, ginagamit pa po nila. Ginagamit pa. So, kaya, it's not actually a decrease, kundi meron pang ginagamit na budget at i-add natin itong budget yes, na ito ngayon. So, may ongoing pa. Oo. Uh, Mr. Speaker, kasi gusto natin, ano, uh, yung mga unresolved cases na katulad nga nito tapos hindi naman hindi naman po ano eh hindi naman po kaila sa inyo na marami pa rin yung mga cases ng extrajudicial killings kung kaya uh, importante po no na, na 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 we can go after them no and Mr. Speaker wala pong item na nawala tama doon oh, kumbaga walang specific item sa AO35 na hindi mapopondohan. Wala po, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yun lang po kinaklarify natin. Now, ang next question ko po, Mr. Speaker, ay tungko sa pending case ni Apollo Kiboloy, who is wanted by the FBI for sex trafficking of minors and women in the U.S. Ngayon, ang tanong ko po, meron na po bang ginagawa ang Department of Justice to ensure that he will not be able to flee the country and escape arrest. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Sponsor. There are, Mr. Speaker, there are cases involving the Mr. Kiboloy and some of the cases were already dismissed and some are under or ongoing investigations. So we will report to the good speaker, and we will give you a copy of the report of the Department of Justice regarding to the status of the cases against Mr. Kiboloy. Mr. Speaker, do you have any specific actions na ginawa? Specific actions po na ginawa for now? The, under the processes, we, the Department of Justice is trying hard to conduct the preliminary investigation. So the only effort and action of the Department of Justice is to conduct the preliminary investigation as this, at, at this point of time. The Department of Justice cannot do more than what is required by law. So under, after the conclusion of the prelim preliminary investigation, that would be the time the Department of Justice would do more and, of course, do the prosecution. As of this moment, let us await the decision and the result of the preliminary investigation, investigation, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Mr. Speaker, kirong sponsor, ang tanong ko po ay simple lang eh, kung may ginawa or may ginagawa. Yes, ngayon, meron po, Mr. Specific. Speaker. Um, the, the conduct of the preliminary investigation is now what the Department of Justice is doing. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Napaka-serious po ng allegation against a child rapist. At alam po natin na dapat, ano, we really go after dito sa mga perpetrators na ito. Hindi po natin pwede payagan, lalong-lalo na dito sa Pilipinas. Lalo na ang conviction rate natin and prosecution rate natin ng mga trafficking cases, child molestations, at iba pang mga klase ng perpetrators against children and women, eh talaga namang ano, napakababa. 
Mr. Speaker, you know, sponsor. Kaya po tinatanong natin, kahit po sa specific no, na issue ni ito, na ito, ay sana magkaroon ng aksyon ang ating, uh, ang ating uh, DOJ, ang ating Department of Justice. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, noong June 24 po, 2022, the International Criminal Court Prosecutor Karim Khan has requested for the reopening of the ICC's investigation into the human rights violations and killings during former President Rodrigo Duterte's war on drugs. Now, on July 14, the Philippines was re requested to file comment by September 8, 2022. Nag-file na po ba ng comment on this matter ang Pilipinas? Mr. Speaker, The Office of the Solicit Solicitor General is acting on it and in fact out of compliance but not of committee, out, out of committee, not of compliance. So the Solicitor General is doing what is better for this country. The issue on the ICC was discussed intently many years back under the administration of President uh, Rodi Duterte. There is what we call the principle of complementarity. Hindi maka-acquire ng jurisdiction si ICC because yung bansa po natin, Pilipinas, ay may ginagawa po doon sa mga AJK. So kung walang ginawa yung Department of Justice o yung ahensya ng gobyerno sa bansang Pilipinas, that, is, that would be the perfect time the ICC will take cognizance of the issues at hand. Pero kung may ginawa naman po si Pilipinas doon sa mga issues raised against the former president, the principle of complementarity will apply. ICC cannot take, take jurisdiction of the cases at hand. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Sponsor. Um, tama po ba na as of April 2021, the government has acknowledged that at least 6,117 suspected drug dealers have been killed during police operations? That is the figure given by the PCOO, but the Department of Justice will ascertain the data and the figure provided for by the PCOO, Mr. Speaker. By the PCOO, what do you mean, Mr. Speaker, by the PCOO? That the 6,000 plus was the, est the, number, the estimate number given by the office of the PCOO. The Department of Justice now is trying to ascertain the veracity and the correctness of the data presented, presented, presented by the PCO. After the Department of Justice verifies the data presented, we will give you the exact number as well as the correct status of those cases, Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. So, hanggang ngayon, inaalam pa rin kung ilan. Anyway, Mr. Speaker, noong June 24, 22 po, 2022, the ICC Prosecutor Karim Karan can move before the ICC pre-trial chambers to reopen the probe on Duterte's war on drugs. Ngayon, according to his reports, the investigations done by the Philippines was not enough and was a mere desk review as they involve mostly administrative and not criminal sanctions. Ano pong masasabi ninyo dito, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Sponsor? That is the, Mr. Speaker, that is the position of the IC, uh, ICC in the person of Mr. Khan. But as to the vantage point of the Department of Justice, 
the agency has been filing cases, has been conducting investigations, and in fact, pursuing the cases as reported by the PNP. Therefore, the Department of Justice and all agencies in the Republic of the Philippines are performing their functions for the prosecution of the respondents or of the accused. Therefore, with regard to the OJ, Department of Justice, we are performing despite the, the position and opinion of Mr. Khan, Mr. Speaker. I hope so, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Sponsor. Kasi po, yung request na isuspend yung ICC probe noong November 2021 by the Philippine government, ang sinight po talaga na um, sinabi no, uh, is to ensure the prosecution of erring police officers. Pero ang nakalagay, nakalagay po doon, ang na-review ay 52 drug raids and na nakonduct between 2016 to 2021. So I hope ngayon po meron tayong maibibigay na report kasi kung yun ay 52 drug raids lang, Tapos sinasabi natin na inaalam pa natin yung 6,117 6, suspected drug dealers no, na pinatay. So, at hindi po ito yung cases din na sinasabi ng mga human rights defenders na as high as 30,000. Sana po ay mabigyan tayo ng report. No? Um, kaugnay ng ano na yung inaabot talaga na investigation dito. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Sponsor. Yes, Mr. Speaker. After, the, after all, the witnesses will come out and testify and uh, cooperate with the Department of Justice. The Department of Justice will render its report as to the what exact figure we are now, Mr. Speaker. Yes. Last question, siguro, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Sponsor. Kapag um, nag-investigate ang ICC, is it necessary na magkaroon ng um, permission from the government of the Philippines kahit ang sinaklaw po ng kanilang i-investigate ay panahon na tayo ay kasama pa at kabilang, kabilang pa sa ICC as a member state? It has been, Mr. Speaker, it has been the position, the consistent position of the Department of Justice that the CC cannot conduct its investigation here in the Philippines. They cannot acquire jurisdiction over the matter because the Philippines are doing the job for the Filipino people with regard to the investigation of the cases as you have mentioned. Second, the Philippines is no longer a member of, the, of that. So, Mr. Speaker, that is now the position of the Department of Justice. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. That is the position of the Department of Justice. Pero, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, ginong sponsor, po pwede mag-imbestiga on their own ang ICC at may mga cases na nangyari ito sa ibang mga bansa. Mr. Speaker, ginong sponsor. Lalo na kung ang issue ay it is... Crimes against humanity, Mr. Speaker, Mr. Sponsor. First, uh, with regard to crimes against humanity, Mr. Speaker, yun nga, mayroon tayong principle of complementarity. Second, kung papasok sila rito and then conduct investigations, they don't have compulsory processes. So, I hope that we, that issue will be settled, Mr. Speaker. That's the last of my question, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat. Maraming salamat, Mr. Sponsor. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we recognize the Honorable Franz Castro of Act Teachers Party List for her interpellation. The Honorable Franz Castro of Act Teachers Party List is recognized for her interpellation. Thank you, uh, Ginoong Speaker. Magandang, uh, magandang umaga po sa ating lahat. Um, sa ating sa pamilya ng DOJ lalong lalo na po ang ating mabait na secretary ng DOJ si Secretary Boying Remulla Nagiging ano ko na to uh, Mr. Speaker nagiging BFF ko na si secretary <laughs> Okay 
So, auna sa lahat, gusto ko ring ano no, gusto ko ring ipahayag yung aking kasiyahan sa mga ginagawa ngayon ng DOJ no, yung performance na ginagawa. Lalong-lalo na po yung ginawa niyang ano no, pag-recommend kay Pangulo doon sa mga 300 plus na mga uh, PDL binigyan ng clemency, etc. So, napapanahon ito, uh, Mr. Speaker, at uh, maraming salamat po. Uh, gusto ko rin magpasalamat doon sa um, binigay na sulat, September 9, 2022, through our chairman, Representative eh, Lizalde Co. Kaugnay po doon sa uh, uh, report on the Bloody Sunday na siya pong uh, ginawa kong ano, tanong nung nakaraan. So, uh, siguro, ano, no, ilan na lang po, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor na paglilinaw Uh, kaugnay, hindi naman ito doon sa ano, no, mga policy lang po ng DOJ na, na hindi ko rin po natapos noong briefing. So, uh, una po, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, alam ko po na maliit ang ano, binawasan yung budget natin sa Administrative Order Number 35 na siya po naman sanang ano, no, responsable sa pag-iimbestiga doon sa mga di torture, disappearances at saka yung mga hindi uh, ano na mga pagkamatay ng ng Pilipino. Okay? So uh, kaugnay niyan uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor. Dito po sa AO35 paglilinaw lang po no. Um Si former Justice Secretary, a uh, former Secretary Guevara recommended the filing of murder complaints again against 17 police officers in killing of Cavite Union ano no, leader Manny Asuncion. Okay? So yun dito, uh, sinasabi sa report na under preliminary investigation. So kailan kaya matatapos uh, Mr. Speaker yung preliminary investigation? Ay hintayin ba natin yung cooperation noong ano no cooperation ba ng ano po ba yung, hindi ko pa masyad na rinig Mr. Speaker ano ba yung iniintay natin para matapos na yung PI dito sa mga 17 na mga respondents puro mga pulis ito Mr. Uh, speaker distinguished sponsor Mr. Speaker naman sa conduct naman po ng PI or preliminary investigation it is within the power of the prosecutor assigned to the cases to and to examine the whether or not there is a crime committed or whether or not the the accused is probably guilty or the respondent is probably guilty and whether or not the uh, respondent should be held for trial sa tatlong elemento po yan titining tinitingnan po ng prosecutor kung may probable cause ba kung pwede, nag nagawa ba yung krimen? Yes, may krimen. E kung nagawa yung krimen, e probably guilty ba yung respondent na yan? 17 respondents. Hindi po madali yan within the period of one year. E yun po ang tinitingnan po ng prosecutor assigned to that case. But rest assured, Madam Interpellator, Mr. Speaker, na ginagawa po ng prosecutor, ginagawa po ng DOJ, yung trabaho po nila. So, With regard to the uh, time frame, uh, we cannot uh, interfere with the work of the prosecutor assigned to that case. Thank you, Mr. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor. Dahil habang tumatagal po ito, Mr. Speaker, ay ano no, just sabi na nga natin, justice denied, a uh, justice delayed is justice denied. So sana maintindihan din Uh, ito ng prosecutor na nag dito kasi habang tumatagal ito uh, dinideny natin yung hustisya doon sa mga sa, at, sa ating mga biktima okay uh, next uh, Mr. Speaker uh, distinguished sponsor so meron lang po akong ano rito no yung tungkol doon sa ha, paano po ba dinidetermine ng DOJ through the eight AAO 35 kung alin yung tatanggalin doon sa mga cases na under sa AO 35. Kasi meron pong nangyaring yan. Um, there are cases po no, in 2000 and 
uh, before before 2001, may mga tinanggal po na mga cases, like for example, eto po Mr. Speaker do sa report ng DOJ, halimbawa, etong mga dumagat na may mahabang record na pagiging environmental activist, ay ano, itong si Puroy Berhermino de la Cruz and Randy Pulong Berhermino de la Cruz, ang sinabi dito sa report, in, um, na exclude po sila dahil ano no, hindi naman daw sila members. There is no evidence that victims are members of advoca advocates of any group. So ito pong dalawang ano no, ito pong dalawang dumagat. So uh, pwede po bang malaman ang dahilan? Bakit ito tinanggal? Kasi mahabang panahon na po itong environmental activist doon sa lugar. Mr. Speaker, I beg the interpolator, pardon, what is the question? Uh, ang question ko po, uh, Mr. Speaker, paano po na-determine ng DOJ through AO35 yung case na ma ma magpo-fall within AO35? Uh, Kasi halimbawa, itong sinight ko pong case ng dalawang dumagat na matagal na po itong environmental activist at member po ito ng mga organization ng mga ng mga ano no ng mga um, progressive groups pero tinanggal po sila doon sa uh, ano no iniimbestiga under AO35 dahil no evidence daw na yung mga victims ay member ng advocates of any group Mr. Speaker yun naman po sa uh, Administrative Order Number 35, Interagency Committee po yan on extrajudicial uh, extra legal killings, enforced disappearances, torture, other grave violations of the right to life, liberty, and security of persons. Sa interagency dyan, kasali po yung Commission on Human Rights. Sa mga cases naman na included dyan, kung ang biktima, the victim, I, 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 read the, I will read the guidelines of the Executive Order Number 35, one, the victim was either a member or affiliated with an organization to include political, environmental, agrarian, labor, similar causes, or advocate of any of the above causes, persons apparently mistaken or identified to do so, to be so. The victim was targeted and killed because of his, her actual or perceived membership, advocacy, or profession. The person responsible for the killing is a state agent or non-state agent, in the method and circumstances of the attack reveal a deliberate intent to kill. E kung papasok ka sa apat na yan, exactly, kasali ka doon sa uh, Administrative Order Number 35. E wala naman pong tatanggalin si DOJ dyan, kahit isa. Basta nandun ka sa apat, na, na, nasali ka sa apat na guideline ng uh, Administrative Order 35, then the said order will apply. Now, with regard to the status, in the event there is a violation of the one of the above uh, mentioned guidelines, ano ngayon yung status niyan? E nandun na po yan sa prosecutor. Si prosecutor na po ang magdedetermina kung meron ba ding probable cause na pwedeng isubmit o endorse doon po sa korte. Kaya that is the status of the Administrative Order Number 35. Wala pong tatanggalin ni isa si Department of Justice dyan. Thank you okay. po, Mr. Uh, thank you, Distinguished Sponsor, Mr. Speaker. So, uh, ayon po sa ating information, no, lumalabas, lumabas, dito sa binabanggit kong mga dumagat, lumabas ang warrant of arrest para sa kanila, seven hours matapos silang patayin. Another information, same day, same units, same modus yung ginawa na pagpatay doon sa iba pang mga pinatay noong sa Bloody Sunday. At may findings po si Dr. Raquel Fortun on July 2021 na all of them, including the Dumagats, had shots in the chest, shot to be killed, at violent death, or, or tinatawag natin itong executive style. So pwede po ba, uh, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, 
makakuha po ng detailed report substantiating the statement that there is no evidence. Uh, Mr. Speaker, yes, pwede naman po. Ibibigay po ng DOJ yan. But with respect to your uh, uh, statement, yung seven hours may warrant of arrest, no, di, uh, different to the case of the Bloody Sunday. Ang, ang, ang provision kasi ng criminal procedure po natin, yung batas po sa in the prosecution of a respondent or a, uh, of an accused, may, may different stages po. Like for example, kung ang isang krimen was committed flagrante delecto o ginawa tapos nahuli kaagad, ibig sabihin dyan, hindi na kailangan yun si, si preliminary investigation. Inquest ni diretso yan. Kasi may nakita flagrante delecto eh. So kailangan Hulihin, unahuli, diretso kaagad si inquest proceeding. Therefore, file kaagad ng kaso. Ibig sabihin yan, pag file kaagad ng kaso, lalabas na yung, yung parang ang bilis-bilis nung proceeding po. E kung wala naman pong na, na, nahuli in the commission of the crime, tapos may mga witnesses na lalabas, ibig sabihin, hindi po si inquest proceeding ang gagamitin. Ang gagawitin po natin dyan, si preliminary investigation po. Kaya yun po ng distinction, bakit yung isang kaso, napakadaling na-file yung kaso, e bakit naman tong isa, napakatagal i-file ng kaso? Because there are two different uh, courses of actions that we are doing, the DOJ is doing, or are doing. So, iba-iba po yung sitwasyon po natin, Mr. Speaker. Okay, thank you, distinguished sponsor, Mr. Speaker. Uh, and how many cases are delisted by the IAC since 2012? Give us the report detailing what are these cases and the reasons why they are being delisted. So, meron As, po kasi mga cases na delist. Can Speaker, you give us the report, uh, Mr. Speaker? Uh, we will provide you, the, the Department of Justice will provide you the report with regard to that uh, issue, Mr. Speaker. And in 2007, Mr. Speaker, Supreme Court designated 99 RTC as special courts to hear, try, and decide cases involving extra-legal or extrajudicial killings. How did the DOJ maximize these courts? Well, ang marami-rami din naman yun, Mr. Speaker, yung ginawang special uh, RTC na mag, uh, mag, mag-conduct or, has, or have jurisdiction over the AG case. Pero si Department of Justice po naman, kung ang kaso nandun na po sa korte, sa RTC, kung saan po na-file yung kaso, ang role lang man po ni DOJ through the, the prosecutors, a pro prosecute yung kaso with all the evidence uh, na, na nailagay sa kaniyang opisina po. But with regard to the appreciation of the evidence, eh, hindi na po trabaho ni Department of Justice yan itrabaho na po ni RTC o ni Judiciary yan. Kaya, kaya kung si, si, Judicia, si Department of Justice through the prosecutors are performing their jobs, eh doon naman po sa kabila mahina yung appreciation evidence o mahina yung, ka, yung abogado ng akusado, talagang may, may delay yan. Okay. So we have uh, to consider po all the factors po, Mr. Um, Speaker. Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, with due respect, Ang tinatanong natin, uh, yung RTC number 99. Ito po yung dinesignate na Supreme Court na special courts to hear yung mga kaso ng extrajudicial killings. Uh, nagagamit po ba natin ito at dito po ba nilalagay yung mga kaso na dapat po? Kasi ito na yung dedicated na, na, tra, na trial court eh, para sa mga ganitong kaso. So paano natin ito na ma-maximize? Okay po. Uh, Mr. Speaker, we will give you the updates with regard to the uh, AGK, AGK cases filed before the uh, RTCs. Pero sa ngayon po, may status po tayo dyan sa extrajudicial killings cases. Uh, as, of to the, uh, as of today, total cases acted upon is 168 cases, may 10 acquittals, 90 cases archived, 16 cases dismissed by the RTCs. Meron naman pong 7 cases dismissed by the Ombudsman, 31 cases dismissed by the prosecution, 
and 14 cases provisionally, dis provisionally dismissed. A total of 116 cases are pending due to various reasons under investigation and under trial. From 2001 to 2022, there are 295 AGK cases filed. Out of these cases, there are 11 convictions. convictions. So yun po ang report na, na mga kaso under po sa AO number 35 po. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, uh, distinguished sponsor, Mr. Speaker. Uh, ito po yung ano no, on, ano naman po, on Alston report on extrajudicial summary or arbitrary executions. So, in November 2007, Philip Alston, the United Nations Human Rights Council's Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Summary or Ar Arbitrary Execution, released the final report on his fact-finding mission to the Philippines. According to this report, a significant number of hundreds of extrajudicial executions of leftist activists in the Philippines have taken place over the past six years. Are the, result, are the result of deliberate targeting by the military as part of the counterinsurgency operations against communist rebel. Um, quote unquote, red tagging, as we call it today, is already present back in 2007. And according to the report, and I quote, many in the government have concluded that numerous civil society organizations are quote unquote fronts of the CPP and its armed group, the New People's Army. One response has been counterinsurgency operation that result in extrajudicial execution of leftist activists. In some areas, the leaders of leftist organization are systematically hunted down by, interrog by interrogating and torturing those who may know their whereabouts. And they are often killed following a campaign of individual vilification designed to instill fear in the community. The priorities of the criminal justice system has, has also been distorted and it has been increasingly focused on prosecuting civil society leaders rather than their killers. So, sinasabi pa dito, no, na, so ito po ay kasalukuyan ha, na nangyayari pa rin, ano, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished is uh, distinguished sponsor at meron po rin siya dito mga summary and recommendations uh, kaugnay noong mga nangyaring mga extrajudicial killings and ano no and uh, extra legal killings okay so ang tanong po um, one of the recommendation uh, Mr. Speaker uh, distinguished sponsor by the rapporteur uh, is for the prosecutors to provide reasonable decisions for probable cause determination. For example, if the prosecutor already found that the evidence provided by the police lacking or there is no probable, the case should already be dismissed. This way, hindi na makukulong ng napakahabang panahon ang political prisoners and victims of trump-up cases. Ano kaya ang masasabi dito ng DOJ? Uh, Mr. Speaker, madagdag ko lang, during the DOJ briefing, ang ating Prosecutor General ay meron daw pong guidelines na ginagawa kaugnay nito. So, ang tanong ko po, um, nandyan na po ba yung final version ng guidelines na ginagawa po ng ating um, Prosecutor General? Yung, Mr. Speaker, yung pong guideline na ginagawa ng Prosecutor General ay... Hanggang ngayon, gagawin, ginagawa pa po. So, pag lalabas po yung guideline na yon, we will immediately give you a copy of that guideline. Second so, meron po, po bang timeline yan? Kasi napakahalaga na nito, Mr. Speaker, at kay urgent na ito dahil uh, patuloy yung pag ano, no, na mga trump-up cases. Actually nga, more than 30 cases na nga yung dinismiss uh, na mga ito. korte dito sa mga trump-up cases na yan. Habang nagpapatuloy ito, uh, maraming mga inusente na mga mamayan, mga aktivista, mga opposition, na different ang paniniwala, ay napapatulan, napapa, 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 
ano, ano, kinakasuhan ng mga Trump up cases. So, meron po ba tayong timeline dyan, um, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Uh, Speaker, by sponsor. October of 2022, the guideline will come out and image soonest, we will give you a copy of that. Okay, um, thank you po. Okay, uh, next po, ano, ang... Okay na po tayo dyan, ano. Uh, siguro po, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, Distinguished Sponsor, uh, yun, na, yun na lang po sa mga Bureau of Corrections, ano, yung meron kasing 70 pesos na daily subsistence allowance at saka 15 pesos na medical allowance na um, may, na, may number of inmates ng 2023 na 49,481. So sa tingin ng 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 representasyong ito, Mr. Speaker, napakaliit nung food allowance na ibinibigay natin or inaalat natin para sa mga inmates sa Bureau of Corrections. So ako po ay nagpapanukalang batas, ay nagpapa, nagpapanukala na sana po ay madagdagan itong 70 pesos uh, para sa allotment natin sa mga food ng ating mga inmates. So, sinusuportahan po ba ako ng distinguished sponsor? At ano po kaya yung suggestion or proposal ng DOJ kaugnay nito, uh, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, yes. Yun naman pong sinasabi mo ngayon, nakakababuti po sa mga persons deprived of their liberties. So, kung hihingi po tayo ng... Uh, anong may tutulong namin po sa inyo sa personal mo na kusada, we will give you the assurance na DOJ will support your effort or initiative to file legislations on this matter po. Uh, meron po bang suggestion ang DOJ? Kasi ilalagay po ito sa ano eh, ilalagay po ito sa special provision. So, 70, so kung meron pong suggestion ang DOJ ay pwede ko pong malaman. Uh, yun naman po, Mr. Speaker, yun naman po ang inisyatibo ng DOJ with regard to the issue that you have posed before uh, this plenary, ay may ginagawa naman po si DOJ na hihingi po tayo ng additional budget. Like for example, as of 2023 proposed budget, hinihingi po ni, ni DOJ o ni Bucor na dadagdagan po yung budget ng building for, uh, for buildings and other structures. Dadagdagan po yung uh, machinery and equipment nila. Much more, dadagdagan po yung pondo para po sa buong ahensya, lalong-lalo na po si Bureau of Corrections. So, yun po ang inisyatibo na ginagawa ng Department of Justice for now, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, kung wala pa pong ano, no, masasuggest sa ngayon yung ating DOJ, kaugnay doon sa subsistence allowance ng ating mga PDL, ay marahil intayin po ng, ng kinatawang ito bago po ako magawa ng amendments ano, dito sa, sa, sa GAB. Kaugnay noong pagdaragdag ng subsistence allowance. Um, thank you, Mr. Speaker. At hihintayin ko po ano, na napakahalaga sa amin yung guidelines dito sa pagpa-file ng mga, ano, no, pina-file ng mga Trump-up cases. Uh, for that, uh, Mr. Speaker, gusto ko rin samantalahin ang pagkakataon na pasalamatan din ang PAO sa ginagawa nila doon sa ating mga, ano, no, mga PDLs. At uh, siyempre, generally, ang DOJ. At muli, maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. Uh, distinguished sponsor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Majority Floor Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we recognize the Honorable Raul Manuel of the Kabataan Party List for his interpolation. The Honorable Raul Manuel of Kabataan Party List is recognized for his interpolation. Uh, magandang araw, Mr. Speaker. Uh, magandang araw din sa sponsor ng uh, budget ng Department of Justice. Uh, isa lamang po yung uh, topic ng aking uh, interpolation, ito ay tungkol sa budget ng Presidential Commission on Good Government. Uh, maari bang uh, 
mabanggit sa atin na ating sponsor kung uh, magkano ang uh, proposed budget natin para sa Presidential Commission on Good Government para sa fiscal year 2023. Mr. Speaker, for fiscal year 2023, ang inihingi po ni Presidential Commission on Good Government is 146 million 473,000 pesos po. Okay. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, to clarify, yan ba yung nakalagay ngayon sa National Expenditure Program? For 2023, yes, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, maari bang maihambing na ating uh, kagalang-galang na sponsor kung magkano naman ang naapurbahang budget para sa Presidential Commission on Good Government para sa taong ito, 2022? 160 million pesos po. Okay. Uh, thank you for that, uh, good sponsor. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, gusto kong tanongin din yung ating sponsor kung uh, sa atin bang uh, pagtatasa ngayon ay makakasapat ba ang pondo na iyan para maipagpatuloy ng uh, Presidential Commission on Good Government yung kanyang mandato? Ah... Uh... Mr. Speaker, kung titingnan po natin yung budget po ng PCGG in fiscal year 2022 may 160 million and sa 2023 proposed budget which is reflected now in the NEP is 146 million may binaba po siya na 8% 8.446%. Pero kung titingnan po natin kung we will break down yung ano yung binaba na 8.4% ay makikita po natin dyan po doon po sa capital outlay. Sa capital outlay for 2022, si PCGG may 6 million. Pero sa 2023 na budget under NEP or reflect, which is now reflected under the NEP is zero po siya ng capital outlay. So kung titingnan po natin sa MOOE, si Presidential Commission of Good Government, meron po siyang MOOE in the year 2022, 52 million. E sa 2023 po, ay meron na lang siyang 40 million. But with regard to PS, si PCGG may 102 million. Under sa 2023, ay tumaas nang siya ng 106 million. So titingnan natin, ay yung bumaba po ni PCGG nandun po sa capital outlay nandun po sa MOOE Mr. Chair and Mr. Speaker uh, Mr. Speaker, maari bang malaman kung merong mga ipinropose for capital outlay ang Presidential Commission on Good Government? For 2023, wala po Mr. Speaker Okay, uh, at least uh, yun ay naklarify Mr. Speaker Now, uh, this representation believes na meron pa rin uh, trabahong dapat na ipagpatuloy ang Presidential Commission on Good Government. At uh, sa minimum, no, at least nakita natin na walang uh, drastic na pagbaba doon sa magiging budget ng Presidential Commission on Good Government. Marireassure tayo na para sa isa pang dagdag na taon ay uh, merong resources ang commission na ito to uh, continue its job of recovering the ill-gotten wealth no, of uh, the Marcos family. At uh, timely na meron tayong ganong assurance at uh, sa araw na ito natin narinig iyan. Yun lamang, Mr. Speaker. Salamat, sponsor. Thank you. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we recognize the Honorable Bonifacio Bosita of One Rider Party List for his interpolation. Please proceed, Your Honor. Mr. Speaker and the Honorable Sponsor, other public servants, sa ating mga babayan, good morning po. Actually po, uh, wala akong masyado itatanong po sa parte ng DOJ. Gusto ko lamang pong ipaalam sa ating lahat na 
Isa po kami sa One Rider Party List <coughs> and sa uh, Rider Safety Advocates of the Philippines, RSAP, and Road Safety Advocates of the Philippines, RSAP, ang uh, nagpapasalamat po sa performance ng Public Attorney's Office. Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, maraming beses na po at hindi maitatanggi na may ilang mga nanunungkulan na sinasabing public servants, kabilang na po, li, kas, kabilang na po, kabilang na po dyan, ang ilang mga kasamahan ng mga police officers. Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, nitong nakaraan lamang po Ilang weeks, may ilang pong mga maliliit na manggagawa na nabiktima ng maling trabaho ng ilang mga kasama natin sa Philippine National Police. Sila po ay dumulog sa police stations. Unang police station, sila po ay tinanggihan, ikalwa, and doon sa ikatlo, sila po ay tinanggap. But unfortunately, sila po na nagsumbong, sila po ang mga nakulong. At sa tulong po ng butihing chief ng Public Attorney's Office, Attorney Perseda Acosta, ito po ay mabilis na nabigyan ng atensyon at napalaya po ang mga kaawa-awang biktima. Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, in behalf of Rider Safety Advocates of the Philippines, RSAP, Road Safety Advocates of the Philippines, RSAP, and One Rider Party List. Kami po ay taos-pusong sumusuporta sa Public Attorney's Office na sana po ay mabigyan ng kaukulang pansin ang suporta para sa kanila. Lalong-lalo na po sa kanilang mga field offices nationwide. Dagdag ko lamang po, Mr. Speaker, and gentlemen, sponsor from DOJ. Totoo po na ang ating mga kapatid na mga detainees o PDLs ay dapat bigyan ng kaukulang attention. Alam po nating lahat, Mr. Speaker and gentlemen, sponsor, na ang mga detainees o PDL na kasalukuyang nakadetain sa iba't ibang detention cells na pinanunungkulan ng BGNP, hindi po lahat ng nakakulong ay mga kriminal. Katulad po ng ating sinasabi, the suspect is presumed to be innocent until proven guilty. Mr. Speaker, gentlemen sponsor, tayo po ay mga public servants, mga nanunungkulan, at ang ating pong mga kababayan ay walang ibang maaring asahan, kundi tayo po lamang. Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, gusto ko lamang pong bigyan ng pansin at iparating sa inyong lahat na maraming taon na po ang nakalipas at Tila baga, napapabayaan natin ang mga kawaawang detainees na kasalukuyang mga nakakulong ngayon, na katulad ng aking nabanggit, sila po ay hindi pa na sisintensyahan, hindi pa convicted. And of course, even criminals, kailangan pong bigyan natin ng pantay na trato bilang sila po ay mga tao. Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, bagaman at ngayon po ay budget hearing at maaring itong aking ipaparating sa inyo ay huli para bigyan ng atensyon. Pero gusto ko po ipalam, Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, base po 
sa nakalab kong impormasyon. May mga PDLs, mga detainees na hindi po nabibigyan ng pansin yung kanilang ibang mga pangangailangan. Kabilang na po dito yung facilities, billeting facilities nila, and particular ang kanilang comfort rooms. Mr. Speaker and gentleman sponsor, ako po ay civil engineer at kinumpiyot ko po Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, sa isang araw po, may mga detainees tayo na binibigyan lamang ng dalawang minuto hanggang apat na minuto para makagamit ng comfort room. Ano po ang ibig sabihin natin dito? May isa pong detention cell sa parte ng Rizal na Less than 100 lamang ang capacity, ang ideal capacity ng detention cell. Pero ang actual detainees po nila is more than 600. At base po dito, bawat isa po ay mayroon lamang allocated space na 2 square, two square feet. Para dito, tunay po na napakahirap para sa kanilang kalagayan. At ulitin ko po, Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, mahalaga po ang ating kalusugan, pero doon po sa 2 minutes per day na allocated para makapaggamit ng comfort room ang isang detainee, ako po'y naniniwala na ito ay hindi makatao at hindi makatarungan para sa kanila. Kaya, kaugnay po nito, hiniling ko, Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, hopefully, immediately, mabigyan po ito ng tamang atensyon. Nabanggit ko na po kanina, Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, walang ibang magmamalasakit sa kapwa natin Pilipino, kundi tayo na mga halal ng taong bayan. Sila po ay kapwa natin Pilipino, Sila ay tao at sila ay dapat din natin bigyan ng kaokulang atensyon. Mr. Speaker and Gentleman Sponsor, sa mga kasama nating mamabatas, sa inyong lahat, maraming maraming salamat po sa oras na ipinagkaloob ninyo sa akin sa umagang ito. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we recognize the Honorable Paul Daza of the 1st District of Northern Samar. The Honorable Paul Daza is recognized. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, will the sponsor yield? Yes, Mr. Uh, Speaker. Uh, thank you to our good sponsor. Uh, initially, I was reluctant <clears throat> to bring up these concerns, but I felt duty-bound, Mr. Speaker. <clears throat> I received a few summaries, essentially, of complaints uh, from the public. Uh, honestly, I, I don't know where it came from, but I was kind of glad that uh, it was sent to me. It's a few pages, but to save time, and not to bog down the uh, budget debates and, and uh, interpolation, I, I will not uh, go through the details of each particular complaint. And I think maybe the best thing to do, Mr. Speaker, is to ask the sponsor a few things regarding, uh, in general, what I think will do to, to, to basically address this specific cases and concerns. Uh, first of all, is the good sponsor familiar with the, the law that was passed by this House in the 17th Congress called the Ease of Doing Business, which created the Anti-Red Tape Authority? Yes, Mr. Chair, Mr. Chairman. And would the sponsor 
recall that in that particular law, which I think most of us uh, support and believe it's a good law, it established the three, seven, 20 day rule. Is the sponsor familiar with that new law under the ease of doing business? Yes, Mr. Chair, Mr. Cha, Chair, uh, Speaker, the three days, seven days, and 20 days within which the agency will act upon the uh, issues concerned. Yes, uh, thank you. And essentially, for my colleagues who are here today, uh, that simple rule, if it's a simple permit or request from any agency, whether it's national or LGU, like a mayor's permit uh, or whatever permit, it's three days. If it's a little bit more uh, complicated, it's seven days. And if it's a highly technical type of permit or license, for example, uh, in the FDA, uh, permits, licenses, requests for, let's say, new drugs, uh, even coloring for food, it's maximum 20 days. Uh, w w would the sponsor agree with me that that's essentially the new law as of today? Yes, Mr. Chairman and uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you uh, Mr. to our sponsor. Now, I wanted to relate that to the series of complaints that I received that uh, basically falls under the Land Registration Authority. For example, uh, Mr. Speaker, and I, I'll just cite one just, just so the DOJ and the DOJ family can appreciate uh, the essence of my interpolation. There was a request for a certified true copy of a TCT, October 2020. And it's already September 2022. There hasn't been a response from that regional office or the ROD. And in fact, I, I won't be embarrassed to mention, just so they can act on it, it's Region 11. Okay? As of the time I received this, almost two years, there hasn't been a response to a request for a copy of a TCT. Would the sponsor say that that's within the 370 or maybe 20 day rule? That that should probably be at least at a minimum in a 20 day rule. That that particular office should respond within 20 days. Mr. Mr. Speaker, uh, that case happened in Region 11, right? And the problem is the issue ones that reaches two years, more than two years. Well, uh, that particular office hasn't even responded for two years. Well, my, my just to simplify, uh, I. I, uh, I understand it's a little too detailed, and I don't want to speak about a re particular region, but let me rephrase my question. Under the new law, the ease of doing business law, which is now under the scope of the anti-red tape authority, that even for the most technical permits or licenses or requests, it should not be more than 20 days for the particular office to respond. That is the general rule, Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker. 20 days if the issue is highly technical. But with regard to the issuances of title, as, as you have cited, really that is the problem. And the, the office, the LRA, is uh, contemplating 
on the issues that we have posed today. But to have specifics, because we want specifics now, because really, if we consider the Arta Law, that is really a violation of the Arta Law. But if we go on details, probably there are factors uh, uh, involved. Like, for example, if the property involved in the issuance of title is contested, of course, there will be no application of the Arta Law because that is contested. That is why we would like to know what is really the, de the details or the specifics of the case you have mentioned, Mr. Speaker. Uh, my, my, my question was simple, Mr. Speaker. So it seems that the sponsor is justifying two years of no response to a to our request. No. Is, is that basically, is the sponsor defending an office that for two years did not even res respond to a letter request? Is that justifiable, uh, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, we would like to make it clear that I am not defending the office or the person sitting that office performing or not performing his duties or her duties. What we are trying to say here is that we would like to know the specifics of the case that you have mentioned. But we have made it clear that in highly technical cases, up, ARTA law will apply the 20 day within which the person sitting or the officer sitting in that office would have to act 20 days. That is really the ARTA law, ARTA law. But we cannot also answer your question directly because we do not know the specifics. Well, the problem uh, now, general, yes, there is a violation. But with regard to the specifics, we would like also uh, to know. So if you can provide copies to this representation as well of the office of the LRA, we are happy to accept the specific details of the case, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. In fact, I had said earlier that I, I will dispense with the specifics to save time. But should the sponsor want to discuss specifics, I'm willing to do that at this point. All am I highlighting, Mr. Speaker, a particular complaint is they wrote to the LRA two years ago, and it's simple. They haven't responded for two years. So is the good sponsor saying that that's tolerable, it's, it's not so complicated. I just want a simple answer, which I think that's wrong. For any office not to respond to a citizen's request, a letter, for two years, that, that's not acceptable for any office. And I don't think the good sponsor should even try to defend that. And I know he's trying to do his job, but there's no specific, it's just a simple request from the LRA and they haven't acted on it. Mr. Speaker, uh, the LRA as well as the office, the DOJ who has administrative uh, supervision over the office of the LRA will have a commitment to investigate and see to it that the problem posed by the good representative of Zamar will be acted upon within due time. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, there is a commitment of the DOJ to give you updates soonest, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I appreciate that, and I, I, I will forward uh, these complaints to the Secretary and to the uh, new LRA Administrator. By the way, uh, allow me to congratulate our colleague uh, who was, is our new DOJ secretary, uh, the Honorable Boeing Remulia. Uh, welcome back. It's so good to see you. Uh, also, a special uh, mention, who was our, uh, Mr. Speaker, who was our uh, basically uh, secretariat uh, of the minority bloc, the new immigration commissioner, Attorney Norman Tancinco. And to my uh, friend, uh, in fact, uh, I, I was happy to find out he's the new LRA administrator, Attorney Jerry Sirius, who's here also. 
Uh, welcome to the house, and uh, thank you for your presence uh, uh, today. Now, to continue on my concerns and interpolation, as to the LRA, because I did receive uh, numerous complaints, may I ask, uh, in general, has the LRA established its citizens' charter as required by the Civil Service Commission in the past, which has been absorbed by the ARTA uh, recently because of the new law? Uh, pardon, Mr. Ch Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, in the past, as we know, the Civil Service Commission established Citizens' Charter, uh, and essentially to help the, the public. So, for example, if you wanted to get your driver's license from the LTO, uh, a Citizens' Charter was created for all the agencies to basically help, you know, the small person, anyone from the public. So, for example, in the LTO, I remember in the Citizens' Charter, it's supposed to be a few hours, you should be able to get your driver's license. And, and all these charters that were created for various departments and agencies were now absorbed by the ARTA under the new law, uh, un under the anti-red tape authority. And in fact, uh, no less than uh, our former colleague, uh, the chairman of CSC, Nograles, had mentioned that they are now interfacing with ARTA so that all these different citizens' charters will be complied with. So my question is, in the past, has the LRA complied with the citizens' charter? Mr. Speaker, yes. Okay. Can we, uh, can we request from the good sponsor uh, a documentation from LRA as, as to its citizens' charter compliance? Yes, Mr. Speaker, yes. We will produce and give you a copy of that document. Uh, thank you. May, uh, may I also request from the DOJ in general, and I, I'd like to take advantage of the presence of the good secretary, that in this new law, all executive offices and the LGUs are subject to the ease of doing business law and the ARTA. Can we get an assurance from the sponsor and the secretary that all the attached agencies and offices within the DOJ, including LRA, will continue to work with ARTA with the view of complying with the 3 7 day rule? Yes, Mr. Chairman, we will commit working with ARTA. Could we, w thank you. Uh, to the sponsor, could I kindly request from the sponsor, maybe within even, I think we're all busy, maybe within 30 days, if we can get something in writing from the DOJ as to your assurance that you just made on the floor just now. Would that be acceptable, uh, Your Honor? Yes, Mr. Speaker. End of October, we will do uh, as the request of the good interpolator. Uh, Mr. Speaker, may I move to suspend session just for a few minutes? Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for a few minutes. Session suspended.
Mr. Speaker, I move that we. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Deputy Minority Leader, the Honorable Nonay Libanan. The Honorable Minority Leader, uh, the Honorable Dasa. Uh, sorry, speaker. apologies, Mr. Chair. I withdraw my motion. I move that we recognize the uh, Senior Deputy Minority Leader, the Honorable Paul Daza. The Honorable Paul Daza is recognized. Please uh, Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, in, in ending, um, in the House, Mr. Sponsor, I'm sure you know that uh, we have been very frustrated in the last few years with the digitalization, the ICT programs that's really within the DICT. But uh, during the budget hearings, we heard the new secretary, Secretary Ivan Uy and, and the many under secretaries, and we're very optimistic uh, that we will do better in the next few years in terms of uh, e-governance, uh, the e-government system, digitalization, and ICT. Uh, and because DOJ uh, is, is a large department with many attached agencies, may I ask the sponsor, uh, what sort of ICT programs uh, that's on the way or that's happened that will help in terms of uh, the operations uh, of the different offices of the DOJ? Just basically in summary, if, if, if he can kindly share with us. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Speaker, the intention of the DOJ is to have all offices, uh, of course, to have all the offices under its administrative functions be digitized. In fact, the proposed budget for 2023 is 2 billion to 2 billion, 28 million, and 177 pesos. But under the President's budget, or the NEP, what is reflected now is 237 million, 523 pesos. With regard to other offices or annexed offices, like, for example, the Mr. Speaker, can I ask for a one-minute suspension of proceedings? Uh, Mr. Speaker. Session suspended. Uh, Mr. Speaker, to expedite the proceeding, I, I will just, uh, I will be satisfied from the Honorable Gonzaga uh, if they can just provide, spend by okay. Can we? You know? Session suspended. Yeah, suspended. Yeah. open. open. Mr. Speaker, we move to resume the session. Session is resumed. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Yes, the Honorable Dasa. Uh, to expedite the proceedings, uh, I, I will be satisfied just to get a written report, a summary from the Honorable uh, Sponsor, my esteemed colleague, uh, Congressman um, Gonzaga. Uh, Gonzaga. Just a written report will be good. My last one uh, in wrapping up. Um, I'd just like to get an assurance from the Secretary um, as to avoid wastage. And I think uh, we, we all want to maximize the utility of all appropriations. Just an assurance that 
any ICT, IT, uh, uh, PAP that the agency will do will be coordinated with the DICT because we've seen in the past some, some, uh, uh, some servers, database are established and then they're not compatible with other offices. So we just want to make sure that this is all integrated and coordinated with the right agency. And his assurance on those two things uh, will, will, will suffice for my interpretation. Mr. Speaker, the, that is really the reason why the Department of Justice has appointed a uh, chief technology officer to oversee all the ICT as well as digitalization program of the offices, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. I appreciate uh, the, the time given to me by, by, uh, by our esteemed colleague. Thank you very much. Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Minority Leader, the Honorable Nonoy Libanan. The Minority Leader, Honorable Nonoy Libanan, is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there being no other members of the House to interpolate the budget of the Department of Justice, this humble representation as the Minority Leader and the former member of the Department of Justice family, being its former commissioner of the Bureau of Immigration, I hereby move that we terminate the deliberations on the budget of the Department of Justice, Mr. Speaker. So move, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. And all, and all its attached agencies, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Department of Justice, including its attached agencies. There is a joint motion to terminate interpolations of the budget of the Department of Justice, including all its attached agencies. Is there any objection? Hearing none, interpolations of the budget of the Department of Justice and its attached agencies is hereby terminated. Congratulations. Session suspended. Congrats, boss. Boss, dapat nandun kasi guru kasi teacher tayo. Oh, sponsor kay.
Kalau pak. Mr. Speaker, I move that we resume session. Session resumes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. Mr. Speaker, we are ready to ask uh, to answer questions. Rather, okay. the, is there any Mr. objection? The chair hears none. The budget of the Cultural Center of the Philippines is now in, under consideration. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Christopher De Venecia. The Honorable De Venecia is recognized to sponsor the budget of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, the proposed budget of the Cultural Center of the Philippines under the NEP is 356,267,000. Uh, there's a decrease. We are hoping for an increase or an augmentation, which we will lobby at the appropriate time. We are now ready to answer questions from our colleagues. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Minority Leader Nonoy Libanan. The Honorable Libanan is recognized. Mr. Speaker, the Minority wishes to support budget of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. 
where this humble representation once played in the Namsia during the national music competitions for young artists in 1981. So, Mr. Speaker, from the part of the minority, I move that we terminate uh, the, the hearing of the, on the budget of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Cultural Center of the Philippines. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The interpolation of the proposed budget of the Cultural Center of the Philippines is hereby terminated. Congratulations to the CCP family. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, we move to suspend session for a few minutes. Session suspended. Oh, am not
Session resumes. Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Zamboanga City Special Economic Zone Authority. Is there any objection? Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Angelica Natasha Ko for the sponsorship. The Honorable Ko is recognized to sponsor the budget of the Zamboanga City Special Economic Zone Authority. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, as Vice Chairperson for Appropriations, it is my honor to sponsor the budget of Zamboanga City Special Economic Zone Authority for fiscal year 2023. I'm now ready to receive any interpolations, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Mujib Hataman. The Mr. Honorable Speaker. Mujib Hataman is uh, recognized. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the minority, there being no member who wishes to interpolate on the budget of Sambuanga City Special Economic Zone, I move to terminate the period of interpolation and debate on the said budget. I so move, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the major majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Zambuanga City Special Economic Zone Authority. There is a joint mo motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Zamboanga City Special Economic Zone Authority. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The interp interpolations on the proposed budget of the Zamboanga City Special Economic Zone Authority is hereby terminated. Congratulations. Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for one minute. Session suspended.
Hermanito. Session resumes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Cagayan Economic Zone Authority. Is there any objection? Chair, here's none. Motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Angelica Natasha Ko. The Honorable Angelica Ko is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is my honor to sponsor the budget of Cagayan Economic Zone Authority for fiscal year 2023. I am now ready to receive any interpolations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Bernadette Herrera. The Honorable Bernadette Herrera is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the part of the minority, there being no member who wished to interpolate. The sponsor, I move to terminate the period of sponsorship and debate on the proposed budget of the Cagayan Economic Zone Authority. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the, Cagay the Cagayan Economic Zone Authority. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Cagayan Economic Zone Authority. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. Authority is hereby terminated. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we now consider the budget of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, I move that we again recognize the Honorable Angelica Natasha Ko. The Honorable Angelica Ko is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, it is my honor to sponsor the budget of Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority for fiscal year 2023. I'm now ready to receive any interpolations. Thank Majority you, Mr. Speaker. Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Presley De Jesus. The Honorable De Jesus is recognized. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the minority, as there are no more interpolators, I move to terminate the interpolation and debate for the budget of Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority. Debate for the budget of Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved and the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Subic Bay Metropolitan Authority is hereby terminated. Congratulations to this SBMA family. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we consider the budget of the authority of the Freeport area of Bataan. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Mr. Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Angelica Natasha Ko. The Honorable Nata Angelica Ko is recognized. Mr. Speaker, it is my honor to sponsor the budget of authority of the Freeport area of Bataan for fiscal year 2023. I am now ready to receive any interpolations, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Nick Enciso. The Honorable Nick Enciso is recognized. Mr. Speaker, 
I move to terminate the sponsorship and debate of the authority of the Freeport area of Bataan. There will be no members to interpolate. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the authority of the Freeport area of Bataan. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the authority of the Freeport area of Bataan. Is there any objection? Sure. The chair hears none. The interpolations on the proposed budget of the authority of the Freeport area of Bataan is hereby terminated. Congratulations. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Climate Change Commission. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Angelica Natasha Ko. The Honorable Angelica Natasha Ko is recognized. <laughs> to sponsor the Climate Change Commission. Mr. Speaker, as Vice Chairperson for Appropriations, it is my honor to sponsor the budget of Climate Change Commission for fiscal year 2023. I am now ready to receive any interpolations, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Magsino. The Honorable Magsino is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, there being no other uh, members of the House and our minority members to interpolate, we would like to terminate the uh, deliberation of the proposed budget of the Climate Change uh, Commission. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Madam Sponsor. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Climate Change Commission. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations of the proposed budget of the Climate Change Commission. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved and the interpolations of the proposed budget of the Climate Change Commission is hereby terminated. Congratulations, Congratulations. to the Climate Change Commission. Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for a few minutes. Session suspended. Terminator.
Session resumes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Philippine Center for Economic Development. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Stella Kimbo. The Honorable Stella Kimbo is recognized. Mr. Speaker, I am happy to sponsor the budget of the Philippine Center for Economic Development and I am ready to answer questions from our colleagues, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Sergio de Gook. The Honorable de Gook is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, distinguished sponsor. Uh, there being no single member from the minority who wish to interpolate on the budget of Philippine Center for Economic Development, I move to terminate the period of sponsorship and debate on the fiscal year 2020 budget of the Philippine Center for Economic Development. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Philippine Center for Economic Development. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Philippine Center for Economic Development. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The interpolations on the proposed budget of the Philippine Center for Economic Development is hereby terminated. Congratulations. Salamat, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we consider the budget of the Games and Amusement Board. There are any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Gerardo Espina, Jr. The Honorable Espino is recognized. Mr. Speaker, it is my esteemed honor to present to you the proposed fiscal year 2023 budget of the Games and Amusement Board. I am ready to receive any interpolation. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Presti De Jesus. The Honorable De Jesus is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. On the part of the minority, as there are no more interpolators, I move to terminate the interpolation and debate for the budget of games and amusement, uh, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Philippine Sports Commission. There is a... Games and the Games and Amusement Board. There is Apologize. a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Games and Amusements Board. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The interpolations on the proposed budget of the Games and Amusement Board is hereby terminated. Congratulations to the Gab family. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I now move that we consider the budget of the Philippine Sports Commission. Is there any objection? The in the consideration of the budget of the Philippine Sports Commission is in order. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Eric Martinez. The Honorable Eric Martinez is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, distinguished colleagues, uh, this representation is ready to answer any questions about the Office of the Philippine Sports Commission. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Paduano. I apologize. I withdraw my motion. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Nick and Ciso. The Honorable Nick and Ciso is recognized. Mr. Speaker, with this in indulgence, this humble representation wishes to interpolate. The PSC is mandated to support our grassroots sports program. Yung mabigyan ng pagkakataon ang mga batang atleta mula sa malalayong lugar, tulad sa aming sa Bicol na madevelop ang kanilang galing. Now, I think parang kulang eh. Hindi natututukan ng todo. What are the hurdles? in terms of budget constraints 
that hinder the PSC to fully support our amateur athletes. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleague, the matter of uh, grassroots development is one of the priority policy direction of the incoming uh, uh, Philippine Sports Commission leadership. We have the Batang Pinoy, we have uh, the Palarong Pambansa, and other national games that uh, envisions to, to discover these athletes from the grassroots. One cannot uh, forget the likes of Lydia De Vega from a sleepy town of Mekawayan who rose to prominence. Those are grassroots uh, athletes who were discovered. We could go as far as Teofilo Ildefonso, known as the Ilocano Shark, the 1932, a grassroots development athlete. Uh, swimmers. So in as far as the policy direction of the leadership of PSC as of this time, grassroots development would be the main core. When it comes to budget, definitely we would always say there's no enough budget for those overachieving athletes that we have. We, kumbaga, we could call it sulit, sulit ang binabayad na buwis para sa training ng ating mga athletes. True to that is Heidelin Diaz uh, Olympic gold and the most successful games for the country, the last Tokyo Olympics, where we won uh, four Olympic medals. So as for the concern of our dear uh, colleague, when it comes to the grassroots development, true enough, that would be the policy direction of the Sports Commission. And when it comes to the budget, it is enough, but we want more, in as, in as much that we want more, because sulit. I'll use the word sulit for the Filipino athletes as they put in their blood, sweat, and tears for flag and country to answer the question. Uh, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if Congress will increase your budget, how will this increase directly improve the status of our amateur athletes? I'll use Alex Ayala, Alex Ayala the tennis prodigy that we have. And uh, E.J. Obienya, Kaloyulo, the weightlifters that followed after Heidelin. These are young athletes who started uh, uh, training at their very 12, 13 years old. And with the effort and funding that they got and support from the public sector and the government, we see results. We could uh, probably say E.J. Obienya will perform well in the Paris Olympics. Alex Ayala will be the next big thing of tennis in the next two to three years. Hopefully, he could uh, emulate the great Felicissimo Ampon, the mighty might. And of course, Kaloy Yulo is deep in training now in Japan for the Paris Olympics. The boxers and uh, this young uh, weightlifter that we have. So, things are looking up. This could be the renaissance of the golden period of uh, Philippine sports as we continue on with funding uh, from PSC and other sectors to answer the question. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I move to terminate the sponsorship and debate of the uh, Philippine Sports uh, Commission there will be no more members to interpolate. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Philippine Sports Commission. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Philippine Sports Commission. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The interpolations on the proposed budget of the Philippine Sports Commission is hereby terminated. Congratulations to my good friend, Chairman Nolly Ayala, and to the Philippine Sports Commission family. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move to suspend the session for a few minutes. Session suspended.
Kira. Eh, matan mo. Akala ko naman ngayon. Session resumes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of Basis Conversion and Development Authority. Any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Mr. Speaker, Leader. I move that we recognize Representative Angelica Natasha Ko. The Honorable Angelica Natasha Ko is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my honor to sponsor the budget of Basis Conversion Development Authority for fiscal year 2023. I am now ready to receive any interpolations, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Presley De Jesus for his interpolation. The Honorable De Jesus is recognized for his interpolation. Mr. Speaker, on behalf of the minority, as there are no more interpolators, I move, I move to terminate the interpolation and debate for the budget of Basis Conversion and Development Authority, Mr. Chair. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Basis Conversion and Development Authority. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Basis Conversion and Development Authority. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved and the interpol interpolations on the proposed budget of the Basis Conversion and Development Authority is hereby terminated. Congratulations to the BCDA family. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for a few minutes. Session suspended.
Session resumes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Commission on Filipino Overseas. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Angelica Natasha Ko. The Honorable Angelica Natasha Ko is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As Vice Chairperson for Appropriations, it is my honor to sponsor the budget of the Commission on Filipinos Overseas for fiscal year 2023. I am now ready to receive any interpolations. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Marisa Del Mar Magsino for her interpolation. The Honorable Del Mar Magsino is recognized. Good afternoon. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Sponsor, in our proposed budget of the Commission for 2023, there is an allocation of 61386 million for the Overseas Filipino Welfare Program. Under it is the sub-program policy formulation, coordination, plan implementation of the Filipinos Overseas Program. May we be clarified on what specific activities or projects are funded under this program? Even the sub-program does not provide any specific activities that clearly relate to the welfare of our overseas Filipinos. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Overseas Filipino Welfare Program is the collective term used by the DBM to describe the lump sum, the host of programs and services that the Commission provides. The Commission provides for the following programs and services. As a regular function, CFO has registered 290,939 immigrants from 2016 to March 2020. The Commission also provided peer counseling sessions to a total of 38,296 youth migrants aged 13 to 19 years old in 2018. There were also 76,408 Filipino spouses and partners of foreign nationals who underwent guidance and counseling with CFO. The program not only provides information about the country of destination, but also allows the counselees to have a one-on-one -on -one session with the guidance counselors of CF CFO. Um, Filipinos also, uh, who left also has au pairs to Europe, also underwent mandatory country, country familiarization seminar where they oriented about policies of the host countries and settlement concerns, among others. And the commission also registered 27,824 cultural exchange participants to the U.S. These are professional doctors, nurses, teachers, scientists, and hotel management trainees participating in the exchange visitor program. And uh, no less than the president himself, emphasized the need to wage war against trafficking. So as a member of the Interagency Council Against Trafficking, the chair of its Advocacy and Communications Committee, CFO continues to operate 1343 Action Line, the national hotline against human trafficking. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Sponsor. The seminars and certificates are prerequisites before a Filipino immigrant can, is allowed to leave the country. Why is this mandatory? Does it not impinge on the right to travel abroad? Mr. Speaker, just like the OFWs, Filipino immigrants and permanent residents are required to register and attend pre-departure orientation seminars in accordance to Executive Order 346 series of 1996, or the CFO reorganization, as signed by President Fidel Ramos. Recent legislations also require these programs, legislation such as RA10364 or anti-trafficking law, RA10906 or the Anti-Mail Order Spouse Act, and the Passport Act of 1997. But although this is mandatory, it is free of charge. These programs, the GCP, the Guidance Counseling, and the PDOS are needed so that they can get better, so that they can better integrate in the host country, and the families left behind may also cope better with the situation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. One more question, uh, Madam Sponsor. Does the Commission charge any fees for them? And if so, how much? 
Where do the receipts go? Is this for the commission that it has to be retained or for the savings? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. As under the 2022 General Appropriations Act, it was specifically provided that in the conduct of the provision of welfare services such as pre-departure orientation seminars, among others, the Commission on Filipinos Overseas cannot charge any kind of fee that is not expressly provided by the law. With that, uh, since last year, the Commission has not charged any sort of fee except for the documentary tax stamp for the certificate, which amounts to 30 pesos. However, previous collections prior were all remitted to the National Treasury and were never used by the Commission. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Madam Sponsor. Being the lone representative of the OFW party list, of course, I'm fully supporting the Commission on the Filipinos Overseas. Uh, the CFO is one of the bedrock institutions in strengthening migration and development as a policy framework. Their proposed budget will only allow them to realize their mission to anchor the ties of overseas Filipinos to their motherland and ensure that the benefits of migration will redound to the country as we continue to be partners of development with our overseas Filipinos. I thus support the approval of the budget of the Commission on Filipinos Overseas. Your Congresswoman, Marisa Del Mar Magsino of the OFW party list. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Sponsor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I am one with you in supporting uh, the budget for uh, Commission on Filipinos Overseas for 2023. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we joined the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Commission on Filipino Overseas. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Commission on Filipinos Overseas. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. And the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Commission on Filipinos Overseas is hereby terminated. Congratulations to the Commission. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for a few minutes. Sus session suspended. Session resumes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of Commission on the Filipino Language. Is there any objection? The, the chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, I'm sorry, I withdraw that motion. Uh, instead, I move that we consider the budget of the National Commission for C Culture and the Arts proper. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize the representative. Tof de Venetia. The Honorable Tof de Venetia is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, dear colleagues. Good afternoon. The proposed budget of the NCCA proper under the National Expenditure Program is 25,163,000. This is equivalent to a 
83.89% decrease in their budget compared to the 2022 General Appropriations Act. Uh, the current budget will cover its National Culture and Arts Coordination Program worth $13 million, and its National Culture and Arts Development Program worth $4.77 million. Uh, this will be augmented by funds from the National Endowment Fund for Culture and the Arts. So in total, they have about $500 million. Uh, so with that, Mr. Speaker, uh, dear colleagues, we are now ready to answer questions from our uh, dear colleagues. Thank you. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Arlene Brosas for her interpolation. The Honorable Arlene Brosas is recognized for her interpolation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, tatanong ko lang po, magkano ang budget na nabawas sa NCCA ngayon? So, Mr. Speaker, uh, as previously mentioned, they experienced an 83.89% decrease in their budget uh, compared to 2022. Uh, could I get the exact figures? That's about a 420 million reduction in budget, Mr. Speaker, distinguished uh, Congresswoman. Yes, Mr. Speaker, napakababa ng budget ng NCCA at ang halaga po ng uh, national culture and uh, National Commission on Culture and Arts natin ay napakahalaga. Lalong-lalo na, yun po yung naguhubog ng ating mga kamalayan. Kaya po, uh, yung mga programa, I believe, na makakatulong, malaki yung maitutulong sa atin, lalong-lalo na sa pagpukaw no, ng kamalayan, pag-aral sa kasaysayan, pagbalik sa mga dapat nating um, importante o mahalagang katotohanan no, na pinapahayag sa ating bayan, dapat po yung ating NCCA na pangunahin, no, na komisyon na nakatalaga dyan, ay kung hindi matataasan ang budget, ibalik yung budget na kailangan nila, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, uh, So, Mr. Speaker, yun lang siguro no, ang request namin na maibalik ang budget ng National Commission on Culture and Arts, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, we completely agree with what was shared by our dear colleague and we will work tooth and nail from today until the passage of the budget to make sure that there's augmentation provided to our primary cultural agency here uh, in the government, uh, especially, of course, hearkening to the earlier pronouncements uh, of the president during his State of the Nation address that culture and the arts will be one of the main drivers alongside tourism in terms of establishing a country brand. And so we do really need to augment the budget provided to NCCA so that they can properly implement all the programs uh, that uh, they are charged uh, with implementing. Programs such as the Order of the National Artist, programs like cultural mapping, programs such as establishment of museums. And may I just add, Mr. Speaker, that we have four legislated museums from the previous Congress that are unfunded uh, in this uh, uh, general Appropriations Bill. So uh, the distinguished Arlene Brosas has my commitment, my personal commitment, that we will work towards the uh, augmentation uh, of the NCCA budget to at least the level that it enjoyed in the previous General Appropriations Act, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Yun lang po. Maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Gabby Bordado for his uh, manifestation. The Honorable Bordado is recognized for his manifestation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. I also support the move to augment or to restore the budget of 
the National Commission for Culture and the Arts. Thank you. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Arlene Brosas. The Mr. Honorable Arlene Brosas is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, there being no member in the minority who would like to interpolate, I move to terminate the period of sponsorship and debate for the budget for the National Commission on Culture and Arts. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that on the part of the minor majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the National Commission for C Culture and the Arts proper. There is a motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the National Commission of, for Culture and the Arts. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. And the interpolations on the proposed budget of the National Commission on, for Culture and the Arts is hereby terminated. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Thank you, colleagues. Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for one minute. Session suspended. Session resumes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Commission on the Filipino Language. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. 
Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Toff de Venecia. The Honorable de Venecia is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Dear colleagues, good afternoon once again. The proposed budget of the Commission on the Filipino Language or the Commission on Wikang Filipino under the General Appropriations Bill is 70 million four hundred eighty seven thousand so this amounts to a ten point sixteen percent decrease in their budget as compared to the previous fiscal year an amount of fifty six point nine million will be allocated to their filipino and other philippine languages development program geared towards the policy advisories on filipino and other philippine languages as well as its promotion and enrichment mr speaker dear colleagues we are now ready to answer questions Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Fra Franz Castro for her interpolation. The Honorable Franz Castro is recognized for her interpolation. Uh, magandang hapon uh, sa ating lahat. Thank you, uh, Ginang Speaker. So, ay yung unang tanong ko po, uh, Mr. Speaker, ay uh, yung may kaugnayan ano, doon sa memorandum or doon sa Oh yeah, memorandum number uh, 0669 ano, yung kaugnayan, may kaugnayan doon sa pagkapatigil sa mga aklat ng KWF publication uh, memo number 220063. Uh, na ginawa noong August 16, 2022. Uh, ito po, uh, Mr. Speaker, um, distinguished sponsor, may kinalaman doon sa pagpapatigil ng pagpapalimbaga no, ng limang aklat. Okay, ang ilan dito po ay mga kilalang ano, no, mga author, mga premyadong author, uh, at isa pa nga dito, no, si... Uh, um, Benito Lumbera, isang national, national artist and literature. At, at labing anim pa na mga libro na itinigil o kasama at pinat, pinaratangan na nagtataglay di umano ng subersibong uh, laman. So, um, Mr. Speaker, uh, ginawang sponsor, pwede bang malaman ang mga proseso at uh, pamamaraan kung paano ang isang libro no, ay uh, uh, nadideklarang pwedeng mapalimbag, pwedeng ma-distribute um, ma mula sa KWF. Uh, can you give me the, pro the process kung paano po ito, uh, Mr. Speaker? Right. So, um, distinguished sponsor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, uh, dear Congresswoman uh, Franz Castro. So we have actually taken stock of this issue already uh, as it came out in the media months ago. And we join you in your uh, uh, position in that the agency really does not have the mandate to do so. And so upon uh, investigation and uh, through private communications with the chairperson, we were very pleased to know that he shares the same position as myself and, and uh, most of our colleagues here. Uh, unfortunately, there were some internal conflicts uh, within the said agency that a board meeting was called for even without the knowledge of our distinguished chairperson of Commission ng Wikang Filipino. And this has translated to a resolution being passed that really runs contrary to the mandate of the KWF. So uh, I, I believe the distinguished congresswoman will be pleased to know that uh, we have gotten commitments from the chairperson and through him also from some of the other board members that they will be rescinding uh, the said resolution condemning uh, these titles uh, that are uh, supposedly uh, subversive uh, because, uh, again, it is not in line with a mandate. Uh, in terms of the timeline, however, I think the said board meeting was supposedly uh, scheduled for today but because the agency's budget was being taken up today, the board meeting is instead moved to the 24th, which is three days from now. So um, that being said, Mr. Speaker, uh, there is a commitment to rectify uh, this wrongdoing 
um, and to rescind uh, the said resolution so that uh, our cultural agencies, including the Commission ng Wikang Filipino, will continue to be bastions of uh, freedom of expression uh, here in the country, Mr. Speaker, uh, Ma'am France. Salamat, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor. Gusto ko lang ano no, uh, matmakita kasi it, first time itong nangyari uh, sa kasaysayan ng KWF at alam ko walang kinalaman dito ang ating ano no, yung uh, chairman ng komisyon ng wikang Pilipino at nagtataka rin ako no, meron ding in, meron ding involvement uh, dito sa aking pag-iimbestiga uh, sa aming mga naririnig at nakikita po sa mga iba't ibang mga pahayag na may kinalaman dito yung NTFLCAC. Ano kaya yung kinalaman ng NTFLCAC dito sa mga paglilimbag ng mga libro? Meron ba silang, ano, no? Uh, meron ba silang uh, capacity, uh, competency para, ano, no? Para magsabi or mag-advise na itong mga binanggit na mga uh, libro na pinigilan sa paglilimbag kasama ng labing anim pa na ibang mga libro ay uh, mapigilan sa paglilimbag. So, um, gusto ko lang marinig sa ating distinguished sponsor, uh, naniniwala ba siya sa paniniwala ko na uh, walang, com walang competency, walang K, walang karapatan ang NTFLCAC sa pagdetermine kung alin ba yung mga libro na dapat na mapalimbag o dapat na ma maituring ng mga subersibo. Pero, di ba, uh, Mr. Speaker, ginong sponsor ng tinanggal na nga sa batas ano yung subversive uh, na sa law um, naniniwala ka ba um, ginoong sponsor dun sa aking paniniwala na walang karapatan ang NTFLCAC sa KWF So Mr. Speaker uh, before I move for a suspension I just like to augment what I previously shared earlier that uh, according to the chairman, uh, the developments on this uh, board resolution is so much that uh, three of the commissioners had already retracted their signatures as of last night. So there are just two that are left, which does not constitute a majority, which really renders it, uh, you know, moot and academic. So um, I, I'm sure our distinguished colleagues will be very happy with this development. Now, with regards to your query as to the involvement of NTFL CAC um, in said uh, board resolution being passed. I will move for a suspension so that I can further confer with the KWF family. Thank you. Session suspended. ready again. Session resumes. So, Mr. Speaker, if I may continue. Please proceed. So, yes, we have gotten a definitive uh, comment from the chairperson, uh, Chair Casanova, that there is no involvement whatsoever. So, um, so I'll take the, the, the answer of our distinguished sponsor at that. Pero sa paniniwala ko po, ano, uh, ginong, spons uh, ginong speaker, uh, naniniwala ako na yung mga ganitong mga uh, ginawa uh, na labas doon sa uh, tamang proseso noong pag, ano, no, pag, pap uh, pagpayag kung papalim ipapalimbag o hindi ang libro ay dapat ay pinagpapasyahan ng lahat ng mga opisyales ng ano no ng KWF at dapat duman ito sa tamang proseso at alam natin ang nakataya dito ginong speaker ay yung ano no yung karapatan sa uh, malayang pamamahayag at pagsusulat kaya itong ganitong gawain ay uh, ganitong pangyayari ay naway mag, mag, maging ano no mag magbigay sa atin ng lesson, lalong-lalo na sa KWF, uh, kung sino man yung mga involved ay dapat ay ano, no, mag-reflect uh, kaugnay nito dahil malaki po ang ano, no, ma-epekto ng nangyaring ito 
uh, sa pangyayaring ito dahil nakasalalay nga po dito yung ating uh, basic uh, no, no, basic rights at saka yung isa pang right na nakapaloob sa ating konstitusyon which is the academic freedom. So, uh, dahil nabanggit naman po uh, ginong speaker ng ating kagalang-galang na sponsor na uh, soon o sa September 24 ay magkakaroon ng board meeting uh, na may kaugnayan dito at inaasahan natin uh, ginong speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor na mai, ano, na, uh, mai, mabigyan ng kinatawang ito at ng Committee on Appropriation noong official uh, na, na resolution man yan o memorandum kaugnay doon sa pagre-resend nung firma nung tatlong ano no commissioner para uh, ano no ma-avoid ma yung unang memorandum uh, bilang pagkilala po doon sa mga batayang karapatan Mr. Speaker the distinguished Franz Castro has my commitment uh, that uh, we will see this issue through to the end and uh, until such time that an official uh, communication, whether it's a rescinding or revocation of previous resolution, will be passed again, undergoing the proper, uh, the proper process of like calling for a board hearing and then passing said resolution with majority, um, and then it being an official communication of the agency. So uh, the distinguished Franz Castro has our commitment, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ang pangalawang topic po, ano, yung tungkol doon sa Filipino Sign Language. Uh, ito naman ay pagbibigay ko ng, ano, no, ng pasasalamat sa, sa effort ng um, um, komisyon ng wikang Pilipino sa pagpapahalaga ng FSL. Alam niyo po, Mr. Speaker, uh, pinasa natin yung, ano, no, yung, yung batas kaugnay ng Filipino Sign Language na magbebenepisyo yung mga mga deaf uh, kaugnay nito at uh, syempre binigyan ano no uh, pag, sa pagbibigay din ng ano ng espasyo ng Committee on uh, Filipino Sign Language uh, uh, KWF yung pagbibigay ng espasyo sa ating mga um, um, opisyales o kinatawan noong ano no deaf community natin at nagpapasalamat po tayo doon sa pagpahalaga na yon at sana po ano uh, map mapaunlad pa natin yung FSL uh, sa mga susunod na ano na ma-improve sa mga susunod na panahon. Pangalawa, uh, pangatlo uh, ginong speaker, uh, isa pa sa tanong natin ay yung pagpapaunlad ng ating mga wika. Alam ko ang Filipino, Komisyon ng Filipino ay ito yung mandato niya para paunlarin ang ating iba't ibang mga wika. Uh, para po ano mapaunlad natin ano yung ating kultura sa pamamagitan ng wika. So ang tanong ko lang po uh, Mr. Speaker, ginawang sponsor, uh, ilan na po ba ang mga bukod sa Filipino at 19 na dineklara na mga official language ng Filipino, ilan pa po ba yung dinedevelop ng komisyon ng wikang Filipino at pinapaunlad kaugnay ng mga halimbawa po mga katutubong wika? Uh, Mr. Speaker, after having conferred with uh, the chairman, they are uh, developing five to eight, five to eight orthographies, uh, which is an ongoing program of the Commission ng Wikang Filipino. So every year they, tar they are targeting five to eight to be developed. On top of the nineteen that they've already uh, published, as well as Filipino as a language. Thank you. Okay. Oh, ongoing po, uh, Mr. Speaker, no, yung development ng iba't iba pang mga katutubong wika. Uh, sana, no, huwag maging ex extinct yung mga katutubong wika natin, ano, dahil yan lang yung, ano, pagkakakinalanan uh, ng ating mga, uh, mga katutubo. At syempre po, mahalaga din po ang wika dahil sa, alam natin, ito yung primary na, 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 ano natin, ano, lagu, na lagusan ng komunikasyon uh, sa ating mga ano no sa ating mga mamamayan at kailangan itong ma-develop. So kaugnay nito um, 
Matanong ko lang yung budget, ano? Binawasan ba ang budget ng Komisyon ng Wikang Filipino at magkano po? Binawasan o dinagdagan? Uh, Mr. Speaker, there is a 10.16% decrease in the budget of the agency as com decrease as compared to uh, the 2022 GAA decrease 10.16 percent decrease uh, the monetary equivalent of that 10 percent is uh, eight around eight million around eight million uh, uh, thank you, uh, distinguished sponsor, um, Mr. Speaker. So, kaugnay po niyan, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, um, I'm manifesting na dapat maibalik itong budget cut sa Komisyon ng Filipino Language at pagtulungan po natin, uh, Mr. Speaker, kasama ng ating Committee on Appropriation. With that, Mr. Speaker, I end my interpolation. Thank you. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, I, excuse me, we, since uh, there is no more uh, member from the minority black who would like to pro uh, profound more questions, uh, I move to terminate the interpolation and debate on the budget of the KWF. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Commission on the Filipino Language. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Commission on Filipino Language. Is there any objection? The chair hears none, the motion is approved, and the interpolations of the proposed budget of the Commission on the Filipino Language is hereby terminated. Congratulations. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for one minute. Session suspended.
Session resumes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Toff de Venecia. The Honorable Toff de Venecia is recognized. All right. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, distinguished colleagues, good afternoon once again. The proposed budget of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines under the General Appropriations Bill is 212,772,000. This is a 27.26% decrease in their budget compared to the 2022 General Appropriations Act. So that translates to about 79.7 million reduction. The budget will be utilized for, for its historical asset preservation and management program, amounting to 121,835,000, and its historical commemoration and promotion program worth 52,055,000. That being said, Mr. Speaker, we are now ready to answer questions from our distinguished colleagues. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Franz Castro for her interpolation. The Honorable Franz Castro is recognized for her interpolation. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. At muli magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. So, Mr. Speaker, nakakalungkot po talaga no, itong budget cuts mula, uh, ng budget ng ating NHCP, 70.90%. So, National Historical Commission, mahalaga po itong ahensya na ito, no? Sa pagpipreserve ng ating mga, uh, ng ating kasaysayan. Okay? At yun din po, no? Yung Historical Asset Preservation and Management Program nila ay tinapyasan ng 56,373,000. So, uh, talagang ano, ano, mula doon sa GAA 2022. Uh, so talagang ano no talagang katulad din ng NCAA na napakalaki din yung tapyas itong arts at saka yung culture talaga ito. So uh, siguro ang unang manifestation ko Mr. Chair sana ay ay uh, you know speaker sana ay may restore natin ano itong budget ng uh, NHCP. Uh, ano po yung masasabi dito ng ating uh, kagalang-galang na sponsor Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, we fully agree with Congresswoman uh, Franz Castro, that we do need to restore the budget of the NHCP. In fact, uh, she will be uh, pleased to know that uh, they have also propounded uh, a wish list or a proposed augmentation of 186 million on top of the budget that they have been allocated in order to fund a lot of the programs uh, and uh, projects that the agency wishes to undertake. Um, you will remember that an earthquake shook the northern regions of the country very recently and a lot of historical structures were damaged as a result. Uh, those that are found in Vigan, in Ilocos Sur, in Ilocos Norte, in Abra. And uh, those restorations need to be funded um, as well as perhaps checking on the uh, structural integrity of a lot of the different historical sites across the country because we do not know when the next earthquake will hit. And all of these uh, responsibilities fall under the National Historical Commission of the Philippines, uh, which again needs uh, augmentation in their budget. So we fully agree with the distinguished uh, Franz Castro that uh, we need to augment increase and you have at least my personal commitment in my capacity as a cultural advocate here in the house that we will work tirelessly until such augmentation is provided thank you uh, mr speaker distinguished sponsor laganap ang pagkalat ng fake news sa kasaysayan at kanilang sabi-sabi sa golden era accomplishment ng martial law at uh, kamakailan na lamang nga, no, ay sinabi ng ating Pangulo na hindi diktador ang tatay niya. Sa panahon na laganap ang disinformation at historical distor distortion, 
Ano-ano po, ba, Mr. Speaker, ginong sponsor, ang ginagawa ng NHCP para labanan. Labanan ito. So, Mr. Speaker, to the question of the distinguished uh, Franz Castro, we were just informed by the chairman, uh, Chairman Escalante, who is also concurrent chairman of the National Commission for Culture and the Arts, that there are several research grants that have already been extended by the agency to be able to uh, look into like what happened uh, during the martial law period so that they would be preserved at least insofar as uh, the final output of the said research grants. Uh, so there are measures being undertaken uh, by the agency um, in line with uh, what you mentioned. Uh, on the Philippine-American War, so ano nga po kaya ulit ang activities natin kaugnay noong Philippine-American uh, War Memorial Day Come February 9, 2023, um, Mr. Speaker, at bukod sa mga ceremonies, ano pang mga activities in coordination with the DepEd, CHED, and other agencies? Like meron po bang publications? Uh, at iba pa? Okay, to your question, uh, Mr. Speaker, distinguished Franz Castro, uh, there is a regular commemoration that's uh, usually held in Sosiego Street in Santa Mesa. Uh, and there's also a conference uh, on the particular matter that's being organized by the NHCP in partnership with the DepEd. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor. So, un related to Philippine-American War, ano, alam niyo po, Mr. Speaker, dito po... Uh, Napakarami po na mga Pilipino compatriots ang nagbuwis ng buhay dito sa Philippine-American War. At ito po yung kabayanihan nila at yung kanila pong contribution uh, sa ating bayan, yung, yung ating pong ginugunita. Hindi lang po nangyari ito sa isang lugar ng Pilipinas, kundi sa lahat ng parte po ng Pilipinas nangyari ito, no, yung atrocities nitong Philippine-American War. Uh, kaya po, ano no, um, May ginawa, may, may initiative, initiative po ba ang NSCP para mag-issue mag ng official apology ang U.S. sa kanilang war crimes sa mga Filipino nung panahon na ito. Dahil uh, ang kanitawang ito po ay meron pong final na House Resolution po number 688 nung nakaraang uh, Kongreso, uh, kaugnay nitong ano no uh, nung war crimes na ang an, na ang gusto nating output po dito ay magkaroon ng apo, uh, ng ano no official apology ang US kaugnay nito uh, while the agency is reviewing what action steps can be taken uh, in relation to what you mentioned uh Kong France i think it's important to also celebrate the agency and their role in the retrieval of the Balanginga Bells uh, that were uh, res restored to the country uh, very recently. So uh, again, to your question, Mr. Speaker, uh, the agency will look further into, ma into the matter as to what other actions can be taken um, in partnership, of course, with uh, uh, the whole of uh, government uh, initiative uh, in, in this regard. Okay, uh, thank you po, uh, sir, uh, distinguished sponsor. On the redesigning of 1,000 peso bill. So last December 12, 2021, the BSP announced the new design of 1,000 peso bill. BSP go uh, then Governor Jokno said that the new series will focus on fauna and flora in the Philippines. He also claimed that the National Historical Commission approved the banknotes new design. Uh, at yan nga, nakita na po natin ano, na may mga ipinalabas na na mga 1,000 peso bill na tinanggal po, Mr. Speaker, ginong sponsor, yung mga heroes ng World War II.
kagaya ni Chief Justice Jose Abad Santos, Brigadier General Vicente Lim, at Girl Scout of the Philippines. Uh, wala, namang, wala naman kaming issue na ma-feature ang ating ahlaman at hayop sa Pilipinas, pero dapat ito ay ano, no, in expense sa pagtatanggal ng ating mga national heroes. So mahalaga po ang, ang, ang mga ginawa nitong mga binanggit nating mga tatlong uh, mga mga ano no mga bayani sa ating kasaysayan. So maari bang malaman kung totoo bang inapprove ito ng NSCP at kung totoo ano po yung justification? So Mr. Speaker on the matter of the redesign of the 1000 peso bill, unfortunately the agency was not consulted by the Banco Central ng Pilipinas. And in fact, they also registered their objection to the redesign. Uh, and uh, then, uh, governor of the Banco Central, uh, Ben Diokno, uh, admitted that uh, the NHCP was not consulted on the matter, unfortunately. Okay, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Sana maibalik po ano, uh, itong mga bayani natin ng World War II. Uh, ulitin ko lang po ano, si Chief Justice Jose Abad Santos, um, isang, sundalo, isang sundalo, Brigadier General Vicente Lim at Girl Scout of the Philippines. Sana maibalik po ito no, sa disenyo nung, uh, nung 1,000 peso bill. Paugnay naman po doon sa pag, ano natin ng justice sa mga comfort women. On December 2017, a comfort women monument was unveiled along Rojas Boulevard. According to the reports, ito ay tinayo ng Tulay Foundation at ito ay pinayaga ng NHCP. Maganda ito at sinusuportahan natin ang panawagan ng ating mga lola para sa ustisya. On, on, on April 27, 2018, under the Duterte administration, the DPWH removed the Comfort Women Memorial Statue and former President Duterte said, you can place it somewhere else. Ano na ang nangyari dito at nasaan na po ito ang uh, Ginong Speaker, Distinguished Sponsor. So, Mr. Speaker, the NHCP actually supported the said project uh, and was provided itself a historical marker that the chairman himself, Chairman Escalante, unveiled. However, it was removed by the DPWH uh, while a drainage system was being installed um, and supposedly it's to be restored after said project is completed. Uh, that is so far as what we know about the status of this said project. But perhaps uh, with due diligence, we will uh, follow up uh, with the other agencies with regards to their commitments uh, in bringing back uh, the said shrine. Nasaan na po, uh, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, uh, itong memorial statue na ito? Um, unfortunately, it's not within the purview of the NHCP, it's the DPWH that um, sort of moved it and perhaps uh, stored it until such time that it is to be returned. So we will follow up uh, with the agency uh, that much commitment we shall give. So ang demand po ng ating mga lola no, mula sa Lila, Filipin Filipina at na iba pang mga comfort women na dapat Ano, no, mag-issue ng official apology mula sa Japanese government at maisama ito sa mga history book dito sa Pilipinas. Ongoing struggle na in-acknowledge ng Japanese government ito at maging ng Philippine government ang issue ng mga comfort women. Kaya sana po ano, um, matupad yung sinasabi ng NCP na ito ay malocate at malagay din doon sa tamang lugar na kung saan dapat uh, ito ay mailagay. The distinguished Franz Castro, Mr. Speaker, has my commitment that we will follow up with the DPWH as to the whereabouts of the said shrine and also uh, that uh, if the drainage project is already completed, that it be restored to where it was previously located. Okay, uh, huling topic na po ito, Mr. Speaker, ginong sponsor, on the removal of anti-Chico Dam Heroes Monument. Naghain ng demolition order ang DPWH, Upper Kaling Kalinga District Engineering Office no October 1, 2020 para sa Anti-Chico Dam Heroes Monument ng Bugnay Village, Tinglayan, Kalinga. Tinuring ng DPWH ang historical monument bilang 
obstruction daw. Significant ang naging papel ni na Makling Dulag, Pedro Dung Dungok, at Lumbaya Gayudan para, para mapag-isa ang mga Kalinga at Bontok laban sa Chico Dam noong panahon ng martial law. Isa rin si Makling Dulag sa mga pinaslang ng militar noong martial law. Natatandaan din natin na sinuportahan noon ng NHCP ang pag-preserve ng anti-Chico Dam Monument. Sa kasamaang palad ay nagtagumpay sila dahil sinira at tinanggal. So ano po ang ginagawa dito ng NHCP? Naimbestigahan ba ito? Uh, kung sino man yung talagang ano, no, nagtanggal nito? At plano ba itong i-restore ng NHCP kasama ng mga mamamaya ng Kalinga na naging uh, naapektado ng, ng lugar na ito? So, Mr. Speaker, actually, the, the local marker on that, uh, the Chico Dam monument that was mentioned uh, by the distinguished Franz Castro is an LGU marker. Uh, it was not, it's not within the purview of the National Historical Commission. However, uh, we have gotten a commitment from the chair that they will coordinate with the DPWH and the DILG as to the matter the status of the marker, um, of the shrine, and hopefully uh, uh, whatever was done will be rectified. Okay. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker, a distinguished sponsor. And for that, Mr. Speaker, I end my interpellation. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation. Uh, the minority Point leader of order, is, Mr. Speaker. Yes. The minority leader is uh, recognized. Yeah. Um, since there is no more uh, member of the minority who, who would profound questions on the budget on the, of the NHCP, uh, Mr. Speaker, I move to terminate the sponsors uh, the interpolation and debate for the budget of NSCP, Mr. S Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Uh, Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved and the interpolations on the proposed budget of the National Historical Commission of the Philippines is hereby terminated. Congratulations. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the National Library of the Philippines. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Toff de Venetia. The Honorable Toff de Venetia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, good afternoon once again. The proposed budget of the National Library of the Philippines under the General Appropriations Bill is 161,122,000. This is a 22.64% decrease in its budget as compared to its 2022 General Appropriations Act funding. This budget shall be used for the National Library Program worth 77.2 million and for the Library Extension Program amounting to 9.6 million. So Mr. Speaker, dear colleagues, we are now ready to answer questions from the plenary. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Raul Manuel for his interpolation. The Honorable Raul Manuel is recognized. Magandang hapon, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask our sponsor to uh, briefly uh, state the mandate of uh, the institution that uh, our colleague is sponsoring. Okay. So, Mr. Speaker, uh, the mandate of the National Library is that it is the repository of the printed and recorded cultural heritage of the country and other intellectual, literary, and information sources. Okay. 
Uh, I'd like to ask our sponsor kung uh, ano yung magiging epekto nung uh, mas mababang budget dun sa pag-fulfill nung ganong mandato. Mr. Speaker. Well, Mr. Speaker, uh, we were provided a wish list uh, by the agency as to the programs that they are hoping to implement <laughs> to further carry out their mandate which really includes the following. First is the development of a permanent gallery uh, within the National Library, amounting to 52 million. There's also a children's services modernization plan worth 37 million. The development of a conservation laboratory worth 40 million and a gas-based fire suppression and alarm system, which is the heftiest amount of the four at 97.6 million. So that's a total of uh, 227.53 million uh, requests for augmentation so that they can uh, better carry out their mandate, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, nais ko rin uh, malaman mula sa ating sponsor kung alin din doon sa mga programa ng uh, institusyon na ito yung pwedeng ma-access lalong-lalo na ng ating mga kabataang estudyante. Kasi uh, maraming mga taon na, Mr. Speaker, yung uh, pagkaka-implement ng moratorium sa pagpapatayo ng mga library sa ating mga paaralan. Uh, nakakagulat din ito, lalo na uh, yung ating mga library nga ay repository ng kaalaman ng mga uh, historical records and documents. At uh, dapat lamang imatiyak natin na abot kamay ng ating mga kabataan ang ganitong mga nabanggit, Mr. Speaker. Um, actually, the National Library, especially during the pandemic, has undertaken uh, programs to uh, make their resources available online uh, so that it can be accessed by as many youth, as many users as possible. Um, now, with regards to the moratorium, it's actually the DepEd that uh, issued that, uh, which does not necessarily involve the National Library. So uh, the National Library, in fact, Mr. Speaker, still does not have a charter to this day. So we will enjoin our dear colleagues to co-author a measure creating a charter by which the National Library can properly operate uh, and serve as its mandate. However, um, they do have a program of, uh, a called the Library Extension Program where they provide books to libraries and schools, public, sorry, pub public libraries, um, oh, sorry, yes, uh, books to public libraries only. So um, th that's, the, that's the answer to the query of uh, Congressman Manuel, Mr. Speaker. Uh, Mr. Speaker, this representation would be honored to be part of such efforts for uh, our National Library. Uh, with that, Mr. Speaker, uh, I end my interpellation at uh, hinikayat natin yung ating mga kapwa mambabatas na suportahan ang uh, pagtaas no? o yung pag-restore ng budget para sa ating National Library. Yun lamang, maraming salamat. Majority Leader. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Honorable Mon Esperas. The Honorable Mon Esperas is recognized. Mr. Speaker, uh, there being no member or members who wish to ask for a question, I move to terminate the period of sponsorship and debate of the budget of the National uh, Library. Uh, National Library of the Philippines. Majority Leader. So move, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the National Library of the Philippines. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the National Library of the Philippines. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. Motion is approved. And the interpolations on the proposed budget of the National Library of the Philippines is hereby terminated. Congratulations to the National Library. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of National Archives of the Philippines. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. 
consideration of the, na the budget of the National Archives of the Philippines is hereby in order. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Toff de Venecia. The Honorable Toff de Venecia is recognized. Mr. Speaker, dear colleagues, good afternoon once again. The proposed budget of the National Archives of the Philippines under the General Appropriations Bill is 169.25 million. Uh, again, registering a 25.27% decrease compared to its 2022 General Appropriations Act uh, allocation. So that translates to about 55.88 million decrease. The budget will cover the Government Records Management Program worth 53.63 million and its government archives administration program worth 52.67 million so that being said mr speaker dear colleagues we are now ready to answer questions majority leader mr speaker i move that we recognize representative raul manuel for his interpolation the honorable raul manuel is recognized for his interpolation uh, magandang hapon ulit mr speaker uh, narinig natin mula sa ating kagalang-galang na sponsor na ang National Archives of the Philippines ay magkakaroon ng uh, kaltas sa kanyang budget. No? Proposal for 2023 kumpara sa budget niya ngayong 2022. Uh, nangangamba doon yung mga kabataan natin given yung uh, primacy and urgency no? para uh, pangalagaan no? yung mahalagang archives na ating bansa. Uh, in fact, uh, sa hanay na ating mga kabataan, dahil sa pagpapahalaga natin sa ganung mga bagay, Mr. Speaker, ay nag-initiate na ng kanika nilang mga efforts to supplement what is being done by the National Archives of the Philippines. I would like to present as an example yung Project Gunita. Ito ay isang proyekto ng mga kabataan kung saan yung mga newspapers dati, noong uh, panahon ng uh, martial law period, ay dinidigitize na. Uh, siniscan yun lahat, kinocompile, para uh, mabilis na maipalaganap at ma-preserve ang mga iyon, uh, Mr. Speaker. Kaya naman, while may ganitong uh, independent initiatives among our young people, mahalaga na yung ating institutional efforts bilang isang bansa ay uh, ma-strengthen pa natin, Mr. Speaker. Uh, with that, uh, I'd like to uh, enjoy no, our lawmakers na dapat din ay uh, matiyak na Matagdaga ng pondo ang National Archives of the Philippines. Yun lamang po, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Marisa Delmar Magsino. The Honorable uh, Delmar Magsino is recognized. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam, Mr. Sponsor. Uh, there being no other uh, member of the minority who would like to interpolate the sponsor, may I move to terminate the interpolation of the proposed budget of the National Archives of the Philippines. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Majority Leader. Thank you, our colleagues. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the National Archives of the Philippines. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the National Archives of the Philippines. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved and the interpolations on the proposed budget of the National Archives of the Philippines is hereby terminated. Congratulations to the National Archives of the Philippines. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Philippine Competition Commission. Are there any objection? The chair hears none. The consideration of the Competition Commission budget is in order. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Stella Kimbo. The Honorable Stella Kimbo is recognized to sponsor the budget. Mr. Speaker, I am pleased to sponsor the budget of the Philippine Competition Commission and I am now ready to answer the questions of our colleagues. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Arlene Brosas for her interpolation. The Honorable Arlene Bra Brosas is recognized for her interpolation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, on... 
issues on the PCC. Uh, will the good sponsor yield to a few questions? Yes, Mr. Speaker, gladly. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, under the Philippine Competition Act, the Philippine Competition Commission, or PCC, is mandated to prohibit anti-competitive agreements, abuses of dominant position, and anti-competitive mergers and acquisitions. Tama po ba? Tama po, Mr. Speaker. Now, Mr. Speaker, isa sa mga mapait na karanasan ng martial law at diktaturang Marcos ay ang pagkopo ng mga crony sa mga kritikal na industriya ng bansa. At dahil sa declaration ng martial law ngayong araw, September 21, mainam na magbalik tanaw tayo ayon mismo sa isang 1984 Washington Post article. Ito po ay the crony capitalism is a system that has allowed certain friends and relatives and uh, of relatives of President Ferdinand Marcos and his wife to acquire great wealth and economic power through special favors and privileges extended by the government. The favoritism has continued to benefit some cronies through government bailouts, even after their firms went belly up. Will the PCC be resolute in preventing the repeat of crony capitalism and in upholding its mandate, even if it runs counter to the business interests of the President's family and friends? Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, maliwanag ang mandato ng PCC. At uh, katulad na nabanggit ni Representative Rosas, it is to prevent three things, anti-competitive mergers, abuse of dominance, as well as anti-competitive agreements. It is agnostic to political considerations. So it's a very technical matter. Very clear ang uh, Philippine Competition Act kung paano sila the decision, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, according, uh, Mr. Speaker, Madam Sponsor, the Bayanihan 2 provision on the adjusted 50 billion threshold for mergers and acquisitions for compulsory notification expired last September 15. Tama po ba? Yes, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, according to PCC, under the two-year effectivity of the thresholds under Bayanihan 2, it processed 55 letters of non-coverage for transactions that did not reach the Bayanihan 2 prescribed thresholds involved internal restructuring or consolidation of ownership without change in control and referred to the acquisition of lands. May we, may we request the list of these 55 transactions? May 55 transactions po eh. So, including transaction amounts and the line of business industry classification. Uh, ano po yung biggest transaction dito in terms of size of transaction? Mr. Speaker, hinandaan na po namin ang listahan para kay Representative Rosas na sa amin na the biggest transaction. The biggest transaction is in the financial and banking sector, Mr. Speaker. Do you have an example, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, in the interest of time, while we are pulling up the data, you wish to ask me your next question? Unless the reply is, of course, related. Yes, Mr. Speaker. Actually, related din naman siya. Kasi tatanong po po sana kung logical ba to conclude that the less stringent thresholds under Bayanihan, Bayanihan 2 created a wider room for mergers and acquisitions with pandemic as justification. 
Kasi Mr. Speaker, tatanong ka na rin, previously ba, gano'ng karami yung mga ganitong mergers natin nangyayari, parang ganyan? Mr. Speaker, baka... There were 53 in 2017, 41 in 2018, 36 in 2019, 18, 2020, 4 in uh, 2021, and 2 in 2022. And alam naman natin, kaya mababa ang numbers for 2020 as well as 2021 is because of the Bayanian Act. So, Mr. Speaker, meron na bang data kung alin? Mr. Speaker, just a clarification. So you want the biggest transaction in this list of 55. Are you referring to size of party or size of transaction? There are two ways to, when you talk about magnitude, yes, are you Mr. talking about size of party or size of transaction? Size of transaction, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, but do you have the list of the 55 transactions right now? Yes, we do have the list. By sector, unfortunately, the uh, size of transaction is not indicated in the list. Mr. Speaker, mukhang mauubos yung oras ko, kakahintay doon sa... <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I would like to go on to my uh, next question. Mr. Speaker, baka ito po masagot. Ano, bahagi ba ng 55 transactions na ito ang acquisition ng Odena ng 45% Malampaya shares ng Shell Philippines Exploration BB SPX? Hindi po, Mr. Speaker. So, wala pong sinabmit sa kanila na letter of non-coverage? <laughs> Hindi po sila bahagi sa LNC. Sila po ay not notifiable. Alam naman po natin that there are three tests for, an, for a transaction to be considered notifiable, yung size of transaction, size of party, and the control test. So, hindi po na-meet ang three tests na to, and therefore, hindi po siya notifiable. But having said that, hindi naman kinakailangan, hindi required ang PCC na mag-issue ng isang LNC. Sa isang sitwasyon na non-notifiable siya. It is optional on the part of uh, that party to go out of their way and seek an LNC 
from PCC. Okay. Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, sinasabi niyo po na wala silang letter of non-coverage, no? Wala po, because that is voluntary on the part of the parties. Now, Mr. Speaker, may isinagawa bang competition review ang PCC kaugnay ng acquisition ng Odena sa shares ng Chevron at Shell sa Malampaya? Kahit hindi po notifiable ang transaction na yan, minabuti ng PCC na gumawa ng isang assessment at ang kanilang assessment ay wala pong horizontal nor vertical concern. Papaliwanag ko lang ng kaunti. So, sa isang merkado, halimbawa, nung binili ng Grab ang Uber, naging problema yon kasi existing market players ang Grab at Uber sa parehong merkado. Kaya nung binili ni Grab ang Uber, nagkaroon ng virtual monopoly. So from two players, naging halos isa na lang ang player. So in that situation, sinasabi natin na merong horizontal concern. Nagkakaroon ng virtual na monopolyo. Pero sa sitwasyon na to, ang nangyari ay ang uh, kompanya ng Udena ay hindi siya existing player at the point of acquisition. So siya po ay nireplace lang niya ang isang existing na market player which is Chevron. So hindi po nagbago ang market structure with that acquisition. In other words, wala pong pagdagdag sa market dominance ng isang existing player, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, pero dumulo ito sa 90% controlling stake ng Udena sa Malampaya. Mr. Speaker, tama ba? So, ang nangyari po is pumasok ang PNOC at hindi pinayagan ang uh, subsequent na pagbili ng additional 45%. Kaya ang nangyari po, yung 90% ay bumalik ulit sa 45% upon the intervention of PNOC. Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, bagamat yun po yung sinasabi ninyo na parang uh, pagkakaunawa ko, no? walang monopolyo na nangyari, bagamat ibinenta na ng Udena ang 45% shares nito previously acquired from Shell to Prime Infra at nag-expire na ang provision sa Bayanihan 2, Kasi wala na ngayon, di ba, Mr. Mr. Speaker? Hinggil sa mas maluwag na threshold, sana po magdulot ng proactive measures at magsilbing precaution ang mga nangyari para paigtingin ng pamahalaan ang regulation. Power which belongs to the list of industries imbued with national interest should not be controlled or monopolized by a single corporate entity nor left to be up for grabs for private interests. We hope the national government will keep a closer watch on the Malampaya project in particular. Kasi po, naalala ko nung hearing nung nakaraan, pinag-usapan yung Malampaya, meron pa pala siyang, uh, meron pa palang, uh, meron pa siyang po pwedeng makuha no, sa ngayon. At uh, of national interest pa rin yun, Sa atin pa rin yun, at pangalagaan din natin yung pag-regulate din noon. Uh, in fact, meron pang mga deals no, na pinag-uusapan na mag-explore sa, sa usapin na yan, Madam Speaker, uh, Madam, Mr. Speaker, uh, Madam Sponsor. So, as it is one of the most important power assets accounting for around one-fifth of the country's electricity requirements, requirements right now. Kaya po mahalaga ang uh, malampaya sa atin. Mr. Speaker, Madam Sponsor, yun lang po. Mr. Speaker, ECC recognizes that very important responsibility and in fact, electricity is one of the top sectors, no? Priority sectors na binabantayan ng uh, PCC kasi just to explain ang mandato talaga is ultimately importante sa PCC na maging masaya ang ating consumers at alam naman natin that electricity is really one of the biggest sources of inflation kung mapababa natin ang presyo ng uh, electricity eh, definitely 
sasaya ang ating consumers. So rest assured po, hindi natutulog sa pansita ng PCC pagdating sa kanilang mandato, Mr. Speaker. Yes, uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, ipapaalala ko na lang yung hinihingi ko po yung list. Sabi niyo naman, may ready list na kayo ng 55 transactions. Then, yung ilan pa po, pare-pareho po natin pagbantayan to, babantayan din po to ng taong bayan. Maraming maraming salamat, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Madam Sponsor. Salamat. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Honorable Presley De Jesus. The Honorable De Jesus is recognized. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the minority, as there are no more interpolators, I move to terminate the interpolation and debate for the budget of Philippine Competition Commission. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Philippine Competition Commission. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Philippine Competition Commission. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved and the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Philippine Competition Commission is hereby terminated. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, before we continue to the next uh, department, May we acknowledge the guests of Representative Raul Manuel, who are present in the plenary? Namely, Siegfried Severino, the student regent of the UP system, Albian Rivalde, chairperson of the PUP Centro ng Consejo ng Mag-aaral, Latrell Felix, chairperson of UP Diliman University Student Council, Jonas Abadilia, National Union of Students of the Philippines, and Cairo Jan Gayusko, University of Makati President, Junior Association of Local Col Colleges and University and Student Regent. The guests of the Honorable Raul Manuel are uh, welcome to the House of Representatives. We thank you for your visit. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for one minute. Session suspended. Session resumes. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Commission on Higher Education. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. Motion is approved. And consideration of the budget of the Commission on Higher Education is in order. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Janet Garin. The Honorable Janet Garin is recognized to sponsor the measure. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I have the honor to sponsor the proposed $30.734 billion proposed budget of the Commission on Higher Education. The agency needs our support to craft a budget responsive to the current times, one that can adequately support the needs of our schools and our students. I wish to assure the Commission that this Congress will do what it can to help them achieve their goals and vision for our youth, and that, to quote the President, ang edukasyon ay ang tangin nating pamana sa ating mga anak na di mawawaldas. 
With that, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, we are ready to answer your questions. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Gabby Bordado for the his interpolation. The Honorable Gabby Bordado is recognized for his interpolation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Madam Sponsor. Mr. Speaker, according to the budget briefer, Ched's total appropriations for 2023 amount to 30.7 billion pesos. Of this amount, 97.3% or 29.9 billion pesos will be sourced from new appropriations while the remaining 2.7% or 841.7 million pesos from automatic appropriations. Mr. Speaker, Madam Sponsor, under the Higher Education Development Program, or the HEDP, the universal access to quality tertiary education is CHED's biggest sub-program and is proposed to be allocated with 25.8 billion pesos, a reduction of 2.2% from the current year's approved funding of 26 Point three billion pesos. There is also a decline between the 2021 actual and 2022 approved appropriations for the program. According to CHED, lower proposed budget in the NEP can be attributed to the automatic download of funds to the state universities and colleges which transfer the placement of the appropriations from CHED directly to the SUC budgets in the NEP. So, Mr. Speaker, for the previous academic year, how many students were able to benefit from the free tuition fees under the universal access to quality tertiary education. Mr. Speaker, may I request for a one minute suspension? Session suspended. Session resumes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. For academic year 2021 to 2022, 2.03 million students have availed a free higher education and 364,742 are continuing TES grantees with 229,863 students being TDP grantees. Thank you, Madam Sponsor. Mr. Speaker, for this school year, does the CHED foresee an increase in the number of students that would enroll at the tertiary level? Definitely, Your Honor. Definitely, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Madam Sponsor, Mr. Speaker, with a 2.2% reduction or the universal access to quality tertiary education, would the budget be sufficient to properly support the current number of students enrolled in college and to accommodate incoming students? Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, 
The pandemic actually paved way for many students to transfer from private institutions to government institutions. With this, the 2.2% reduction in UWACTE is a mild slap to the Commission on Higher Education. Be that as it may, the Commission is doing its best to look at opportunities by which avenues will be generated so that no student will be refused education. Thank you, Madam Sponsor. Mr. Speaker, we also have the Student Financial Assistance Programs, or the STUFAPs, and the Financial Assistance for Postgraduate Students, or PAPGS, both amounting to 1.5 billion pesos. The budget for STUFAPs also declined from 1.8 billion pesos in 2022. Now, Mr. Speaker, Madam Sponsor, can CHED provide the number of students eligible to receive assistance under the so-called STUFAPs and the FAPGS? Yes, Mr. Speaker. You are sure of that, Madam Sponsor? For graduate studies, Mr. Speaker, we were assured by the Chairman of the Commission. Mr. Speaker, for 2022, how many students have received financial assistance? Three hundred sixty-four thousand seven hundred forty-two for tests, Mr. Speaker, and two hundred twenty-nine thousand eight hundred sixty-three for Tunong Tulong Dunong program. I uh, thank you, Madam Sponsor. Mr. Speaker, Madam Sponsor, what are the department's requirements for students applying for financial assistance? In the test, um, Mr. Speaker, they must be in the Listahanan 2.0 of the DSWD. Or they are studying in private universities with no um, local universities and colleges, neither state-owned universities and colleges. How's that again, Madam Sponsor, Mr. Speaker? The other requirements for Tulong Dunong is a certificate of registration, must be enrolled in SUCs, LUCs, and CHED private higher education institutions, and must submit their income tax return, which qualifies them and proves that they are not capable of supporting their tertiary education expenditures. Uh, thank you, Madam Sponsor. Mr. Speaker, how much do they receive if they are found to be eligible and are approved. For Tulung Dunong, Mr. Speaker, it's 15,000 per year. For TESS, it's uh, 40,000 if they're in a public university, 60,000 if in a private institution. Again, please, Madam Sponsor. If they are for under the Tulong Dunong program, Mr. Speaker, they receive 15,000 per year. Under the test program, they receive 40,000 per year if they're enrolled in a public university, an LUC or an SUC, uh, 60,000 annually if they're enrolled in a duly accredited 
private institution. Thank you, Madam uh, Sponsor. Mr. Speaker, the two pups and the FAP GS programs, which provide financial assistance to students, follow the universal access to quality tertiary education system and size of allocations. But last March 2022, CHED announced that it would suspend application to its scholarship program for freshmen of the school year 2022-2023 because of lack of funding. Is this correct, Mr. Speaker, Madam Sponsor? The Chairman of the Commission confirms that, Mr. Speaker, because to lack of funding and streamlining, no new applicants will be accepted. Okay. So if the lack of funding is the problem in 2022, why is it that CHED is asking for an even lower allocation for the STUFAPs in 2023? Are there any other alternate programs to assist students in the tertiary level? Um, actually, Mr. Speaker, distinguished uh, colleagues, the request of the Commission on Higher Education was a lot, lot higher. However, that was, the amount that you mentioned is what was allocated by the Department of Budget and Management, considering the NEP 2022 as the basis for such. Okay, thank you, Madam Sponsor. Mr. Speaker, according to the Commission on Audit, the COA found that the unused funds from the STUFAPs were due to the discrepancies in the submitted documents from the CHED uh, regional offices. What is the nature of these discrepancies, Madam Sponsor, Mr. Speaker? Has Chad traced the root of these discrepancies? The report has been acted upon by the Commission. The SUCs and the LUCs concerned have been reviewed. Those with verified um, disallowances have been requested to return. Those with excesses have also been requested to return. And as far as I have been told, they are more or less halfway into the process of finishing the review of the alleged overpayments. Mr. Speaker, Madam Sponsor, I was asking uh, a while ago, what is the nature of this uh, so-called discrepancies? Yeah. What actually happened, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, is that many of the recipients um, receive what they call a double scholarship because by virtue of the rules mandated by the commission and audit, each recipient would only have to avail of a single scholarship. If you are a beneficiary of Tulong Dunong, you cannot avail of other scholarships. You cannot also avail of a DOST scholarship on top of a CHED scholarship. Uh, thank you, Madam Sponsor. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I understand that uh, Commissioner Prospero Libera had been reappointed as Commissioner of CHED. And there was this uh, report. I will uh, read a part of that report, and I quote, Mr. Chairman, uh, Madam uh, Sponsor, 
if the past years he has served as the Ched Commissioner have meant anything at all, it is that his reappointment does not bode well for students, faculty, their parents, and higher education in general, unquote. Can you react to this particular comment, Mr. Well, Mr. Speaker, Speaker, Madam Sponsor? Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, we confirm that the chairman of the commission has been reappointed. Um, that is the power of the executive that is vetted upon by the search committee, and we fully respect that. Thank you very much, Madam uh, Sponsor. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker. Thank you very much to the Honorable uh, Gentleman from Bicol. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Raul Daniel Manuel. The Honorable uh, Raul Manuel is recognized for his interpolation. Mr. Speaker, I withdraw that motion. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize uh, Representative Franz Castro for her interpolation. The Honorable Franz Castro is recognized for her interpolation. Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. So, yung uh, unang tanong ko po, uh, Mr. Speaker, ano, mula doon sa itinanong po ng ating kasama, Congressman um, um, Gabi Bordado, kaugnay po doon sa nirace na issue about doon sa overpayment, tapos yung uh, nirace na reimbursement doon sa mga LUC, yung delayed billings and documents for free higher education, at saka yung sa mga ano po, no, eight, um, yung mga walang official receipts. So, babanggitin ko po, ano, yung ka may kaugnayan po dito sa CHED Unifast na nearly 7 billion in questionable releases for the implementation of its program. So, isa-isahin natin, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, on 131 million in overpayment of TOSFs. So, uh, ano nga po yung explanation dito kanina? Well, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, um, for the overpaid reimbursement, the Unifast Secretariat actually gave a figure of 130.99 million. I believe the 7 billion that is being referred to by our distinguished colleague are the observations as contained in the audit um, observation memorandum. Um, for the overpaid reimbursement to TOSF, the update is that the disallowance of uh, TCC, Tagalongan Community College has actually been settled and reconciled in the second semester, the 21-2022 billing. As for JRMSU and USTP, they are in the process of reconciling the disallowances. On the other unwarranted or doubtful to to TOSF reimbursements, um, the LUC concerned has also been informed, and if the disallowance becomes final, CHED will demand the return of the money. As of the moment, they are still awaiting guidance and opinion from the Office of the Solicitor General. Um, the other unsubmitted or delayed billings, the issue, ones, the issue on no official receipts, um, all of these have actually been settled to the tune of uh, almost 5.5 billion. The delay in release of financial benefits to the tune of 1.003 billion has already been settled. Unutilized allotment for tests has already been settled. And CHED has always been fully transparent and accountable in the implementation of UWACTI. And the beneficiaries are the beneficiaries mandated by law. 
the disallowances actually stems from the alleged duplications because um, some of the recipients have availed of uh, two or three different programs. So uh, if, if that is the case, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, so yung pong naka-receive halimbawa ng tunong-dunong, yung estudyante ay mag, ano, na mag-return nung kanyang natanggap from the tunong-dunong. So mga magkano po ito at ilan po yung estudyante na, in, na mag, mag, ano, no, mag -re reimburse o mag Magre-refund, uh, tama, magre-reimburse doon sa CHED. May we know how many students are affected? Yung total. So, total for the whole. Hindi region, the whole. Approximately 200 students, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleague. Okay, 200, ano, 200 students in the amount of 100 more or less 131 million. So, magkano po uh, per student ang mag-reimburse? Mag um, Mr. Speaker, apologies. Um, let me correct the figure. Double scholarship grants has actually been given to 338 students, which resulted to an overpayment of four 4,430,000 pesos, specifically in Region 2 and 5. Um, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, so magkano po yung reimburse nung estudyanteng nakakuha nung overpayment from Region 5 and 2? Tama ba? Region 2 and Region 5. Approximately 15,000 per student. Okay. So 15,000 per student. Um, yeah. Mr. Speaker, just to clarify, if a student has two scholarships, ang nire-refund po eh kung ano yung mas mababa. Okay. So, halimbawa kung sa tunong-dunong yan, so yun ang i-refund ng bata. Ano? Yes, okay. Mr. So, Speaker. Okay. Um, Sinasabi kanina, Mr. Speaker, na it is still under the audit uh, proceedings. Nasa audit ba? Or na, nabigyan na natin ng notice yung mga estudyante to refund? Nabigyan na po, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleague. Yun lang pong isa uh, awaiting guidance and opinion from the Office of the Solgen. Um, dahil ito po yung... Uh, Ito po yung naibigay sa local universities and colleges that was actually being questioned. On the other hand, the local universities and colleges are insisting that they are um, uh, qualified beneficiaries of such program. Okay, uh, thank you uh, for that clarification, Mr. Speaker and distinguished sponsor. So, uh, very worrying po ito, no, Mr. Speaker, yung ganitong pangyayari. Uh, siguro hindi rin alam ng estudyante no, na bawal mag-avail. Tama ba? Ano ba yung nang, uh, naging reasons bawal mag-avail ng mga doble-doble o tripling, ano, no, tripling benefic beneficiary mula doon sa scholarship, sa LUC or SUC, at saka dito sa tupad? So, ang tanong ko po, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, paano kaya natin ito maiwasan in the future? Ano kaya yung mekanismo na pwede nating magamit? to avoid ano no yung duplication o baka naman uh, hindi ba pwedeng ma-justify na kailangan din ng estudyante ito halimbawa yung pinamimigay doon sa tuno at uh, tulong dunong well mr speaker distinguished colleagues gustuhin man ng commission to allow that their hands are tied because it's the decision of the commission on audit to prohibit du duplication of availment of scholarships Naiintindihan po natin na nangyayari ito kasi dalawang bagay. Pwede yung iba nagbabaka sakali. Pwede rin po, Mr. Speaker, na yung iba, eh hindi nila alam na hindi pwede. The Commission assures us that they will be more aggressive in informing the general public not to avail of duplicate scholarships because the risk of, re of, uh, of reimbursing at the end is really there. 
This can actually also be seen, Mr. Speaker, by the respective universities and colleges. So the control is before the institution that is implementing the program. Okay. So meron na pong uh, na-device ang ating CHED kung paano yung mas, ano, no, mas scientific o yung mekanismo para hindi nagkakaroon ng doble-doble. Aside from ano, no, um, um, education, information to our students. Yes, Mr. Speaker, the Commission assures that. At nasabihan na rin po ang lahat ng LUCs and SUCs because they can actually see it once the um, applicant avails of the scholarship. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. S Mr. Speaker, um, distinguished sponsor. Uh, kaugnay naman po, uh, Mr. Speaker, doon sa NBC um, 461, ito po yung ano, no, promotion of the teaching personnel to our mga SUCs uh, sa mga SUCs po natin. Uh, meron pong inilaan na pondo no, para sa NBC 461 uh, na nagkakahalaga ng 100 million under the MBBF. So, sa palagay ko, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, kulang, kulang ito. Uh, actually, sinasabi ng mga, na mga teachers Halos sa isang SU silang ito. So, um, meron pa kay, uh, meron bang ano, meron bang computation ang CHED uh, kaugnay nito? Kasi dati-dati kasi, um, Sir Speaker, sa GAA 2022, 100 million under the MBPF plus 4 billion under the UA. Pero sa ngayon, parang nakita ko wala sa... Uh, sa UA natin. So ano po yung masasabi ng ating sponsor dito? Uh, pwede po ba tayong ano, no, matulungan ang representasyong ito na madagdagan itong pondo under the NBC uh, 461 dahil ito, alimbawa, yung 4 billion under the UA ay sa ngayon ay wala na. Mukhang wala na siya sa NEP o sa GAB. We concur with the Honorable Franz Castro, Mr. Speaker. Kulang po talaga ang 100 million sa NBC 461. However, the situation arose from the fact that computation cannot be made in advance. Kaya hindi rin makuha ng DBM yung exact figure. However, they were assured that as the funds gets depleted, the DBM will, uh, for, will provide them or will augment NBC 461 via the Miscellaneous Personal Benefit Fund. Okay, uh, thank you, um, Sir Speaker, Distinguished Sponsor. Uh, ito, second question ko about the NBC 461, ano, the implementation, about the retroactive application ng guidelines. Uh, although sinagot na ito ng briefing, it's up for the BOR. Sila kasi yung nagpifix na mga rules. So, ang tanong ko dito, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, ano ba yung legal basis for that? Kung wala po ito dun sa guidelines na nando doon sa NBC 461, uh, at ang pondo po ay galing sa GAA na nasa ilalim ng CHED. Ang implementor, nagdi-disburse nito ay CHED at hindi ang SUC. Meron po kasing special provision 3. Uh, ZES, CHED at DBM ang may, ano na, may say. Kasi, si, kasi rules nila ang mag-govern over this fund. Isa pa, wala, wala po Mr. Speaker na specific authority. Ang BOR under the charters of the SUC over this uh, specific funding. Isa pa, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor, ayon sa report ng mga SUC at faculty natin, it's actually the CHED telling the BORs what to do in coming up with the new criteria, minsan out of the blue. Ang sabi nga nila, too much muscle flexing. Di, di tumutulong at tumahad lang sa promotion. Example, Yung requirement ng PhD for associate professor, wala po ito sa NBC 461 at naging mas stricto. Ang nagiging epekto nito, Mr. Speaker, 7 to 8 years nang napako ang promotion dahil inabutan ng bagong rules. Kaya po, uh, Mr. Speaker, baka pwedeng, ano no, uh, pwede pong, uh, sinasabi natin, ano po ba yung legal basis dito? Kasi kung yung guidelines ay ginawa ng CHED at ng DBM, uh, pwede po ba yon na basta nalang baguhin ng Board of Regents? 
itong ano na to, itong guidelines and criteria. At na nakonsulta po ba dito yung mga faculty kaugnay ng pagbabago ng mga criteria na to? Sample yung PhD for associate professor. Yeah. Kasi Mr. marami pong naapektuhan dito uh, uh, distinguished sponsor. Mr. Speaker, the Honorable Franz Castro is correct in uh, her concerns about the teachers impacted by uh, the decision of the board. However, for her perusal, the eighth cycle actually does not have any retroactive implementation. Next, um, these provisions is actually contained by a CHED. Uh, the CHED crafted these guidelines way back in 1998. So we believe, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, the solution for this is for CHED to look into and review these guidelines so that they will be attuned to the current times. Lastly, Mr. Speaker, the issue on the Board of Regents, unfortunately, CHED is only one vote. And the solution to this will actually be for the concerned affected professors to appeal before the Board of Regents because based on our knowledge, many BORs have actually granted their appeal. Uh, uh, yes, Mr. Speaker. Um, ito pong NBC 461. Actually, yung pinag-uusapan natin dito ay uh, seven to eight years ago. At naging retroactive yung implementation nung bagong CHED and DBM guidelines. So ang sinasabi natin dito at matagal na nating sinasabi, hindi nyo pwedeng i-retroactive kasi ito nga ay seven to eight years ago pa eh. Kaya kung meron bagong guidelines, dapat ito ay applicable doon sa current, hindi doon sa dati. Kasi alam nyo po, uh, marami na nga nag-retire na hindi na pinakinabangan itong promotion na ito. Ayan, katulad niya, yung PhD for associate professor, wala naman yan dun sa dating guidelines. Uh, Mr. Speaker, distinguished sponsor. Yeah. Um, ang naging problema po kasi, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, apparently naging retroactive siya because a special provision was inserted into General Appropriations Act of 2022. That's why for the eighth cycle, this is the ninth cycle. For the eighth cycle, hindi po siya retroactive. That's why it's very important that for the proposed 2023 budget, this special provision should not be there. We should take that out. Yes. But for the meantime, dahil nagkaroon nga tayo ng problema sa ninth cycle, the best remedy is for the affected professors to appeal before their individual BORs. Uh, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, just last week, the Board of Regents of the Western Visaya State University, which I see it as a member courtesy of the Honorable Mark Go, approved many appeals. So it's really doable. Uh, yes, uh, thank you for that. At pwede ba nating maisama lagi ang faculty club doon sa ating mga policy making? Kasi sila naman yung affected. Definitely, Whatever, Mr. Diba? Speaker. Yes. Uh, for that, ano, uh, is the sponsor, Mr. Speaker, amenable to an amendment of special provision number three? We insert a provision similar to what's found in 2022 GAA na tinanggal. And I quote, provided that the existing NBC number 461 imp implementing guidelines shall be used for the cycle nine promotion. Any new guidelines shall be prospectively applied. Actually, ang Act Teachers Party List din naman ang nagsingit nito noong 2022 na tinanggal sa 2023 NEP. So, amenable ba ang sponsor na ibalik natin itong provision na ito uh, para, para hindi nagtuturuan ano, uh, ng sisi ng pagpapa-implement, pagpapa Mr. Speaker, whether implemented based doon sa dating guidelines or retroactive, etc. But... Yeah. Once and for all, linawi na natin yan sa 2023 GAB. I-insert na natin yung nilagay ng natin noon sa 2022 GAA. What, at what do you think, uh, distinguished sponsor? Well, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleague, we, we don't have a problem with that. No? And unfortunately, the guidelines was a joint collaboration between CHED and the DBM. Um, the best recourse here is um, we will submit that proposal to the small committee that will be created after the second reading. And um, I, would, I, don't know, I would ask for the support of CHED 
and at the same time, our distinguished sponsor, Mr. Speaker. Pwede ko bang panghawakan ang suporta ng ating uh, butihing sponsor at ng CHED, uh, Mr. Speaker, kung ilalagay natin ulit ito doon sa GAB 2023. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, um, I believe the best recourse here is to consult the Department of Budget and Management. While in principle, the Commission on Higher Education is open to the recommendations of our distinguished, distinguished colleague from Act Teachers Party List, um, unfortunately, the former president vetoed this provision and gave the directive to utilize the new guidelines. Hence, CHED and DBM had to confer with each other and immediately craft the new guidelines. That's why the current situation is that it is now in the process of completion. Okay. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, yung commitment po na ating sponsor, uh, Mr. Speaker. Well, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleague, I can just have a very, very, very tiny voice. Um, we will appeal to the other members of the Committee on Appropriation so that we, um, uh, we support the request of the Honorable Franz Castro. Okay, third topic, uh, Mr. Speaker, about the unpaid tuition allowances under the K-12 transition program and other assistance. We, we sent a letter to Ched, um, Chair De Vera endorsing the claims of around 100 beneficiaries of the K-12 transition program and other assistance and scholarship programs of CHED. These beneficiaries are faculty of various SUC nationwide. Uh, at around 6 p.m. kahapon, ano, yung reply ng CHED, natanggap po natin. And these are some observations. Mukhang di pa lahat ng claimants ang na-address or di pa na-re-report sa atin. Dahil, Mr. Speaker, meron pong three grantees from the MIMA ROPA Palawan State University, one grantee from CHED RO7, eight grantees of Faculty Development Program. So, ang tanong ko po, Mr. Speaker, how about the other claimants and scholars? Any timeline for the action on the part of the CHED? We are after the receipt of the grantees of the benefits under the GAA and other laws. Uh, kailan nila matatanggap yung mga benefits nila and what are the reasons kung bakit hindi na babayaran yung mga benefits. Uh, so that, ano, Mr. Chair, ano, uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, we can do something, ano, uh, mag-provide tayo, halimbawa, ng special provision para mabayaran po uh, natin itong mga scholars na ito under the K-12 transition program. Mr. Speaker, out of the more than out of the more than 100 beneficiaries, about two or three have already been settled. The others have been requested to comply with the additional document requested, the uh, recom uh, the the loading. The certificate of the loading. Um, after um, which, the commission I'll, assures us that they will receive their unpaid allowances and tuition fees. So, out of 100 po na sinabmit natin sa CHED. Uh, kung sinasabi pong the loading, uh, Mr. Mr. Uh, Mr. Speaker, mula sa records na binigay ng CHED with respect to at least three beneficiaries ng K-12 transition program, lumalabas na nahagip ng disallowance ng COA. Ang main reason dito ay yung sinasabi na documents ng permanent employee and government ng SUC. Uh, it is neither reduced by reason of decrease or, or the loading uh, which exposed to threat of replacement. Alam natin na hindi accurate itong rason 
Dahil kapag deloaded ka, whether partially or fully deloaded, kabawasan sa sweldo yon. Ang compensation ng faculty ay nakadepende sa teaching loads or workloads nila. Di ba? Yeah, Mr. Speaker, can I can you please repeat the last statement? Ang um, um is you sinasabi po na ano no, sinasabi po nating sponsor Mr. Speaker na may kaugnayan sa deloading. Kaya sinasabi ko po, alam natin na hindi accurate itong sinasabi dahil kapag deloaded ka, whether partially or fully deloaded, magiging kabawasan sa sweldo yon at ang compensation ng faculty ay nakadepende sa teaching loads or workloads nila. Tama ba, tama ba Problem po ba ito dun sa COA disallowance? Mr. Speaker, this matter is under appeal before the Commission on Audit. Um, while the CHED really would like to solve this matter, their hands are tied because the interpretation by the Commission on Audit is different. However, they are exhausting all means in aligning. Kasi sa sabi nyo nga, um, nahikita naman na hindi sapat yung rason. No? Unfortunately, it's a case-to-case -case basis. It's not a uniform situation for all the more than 100 beneficiaries. That's why it's taking time. Okay. So, nasulatan na po yung 100 beneficiaries kung ano po yung dapat at gawin at kompletong dokumento na ibibigay nila. Yes, Mr. Speaker, they have been informed um, and uh, the reason and the required documents have also been conveyed to them. Okay. Uh, marami salamat. Yung last na lang po, uh, Mr. Speaker, about the public sector unionism, baka... Pwede ring imbestigahan. May, may mga ilang SUC kasi, as since sinasabi sa amin, may mga commissioner uh, na ilan na nakingi alam, Mr. Speaker, dito sa uh, freedom of organization ng ilang mga uh, SUCs natin. Baka pwede naman ano, na dapat na pabayaan yung ating mga eskwelahan ng mga SUCs, ang ating mga faculty, na makapag-organize dahil iyan naman po ay sinasaad doon sa ating batas, yung public sector unionism. At huwag nating hayaan na may mga ilang commissioner natin na member ng BOR na nangingialam. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, hindi na ako mag-name names dito. Bubulong ko na lang yan kay chairman, uh, kaugnay doon sa kanilang mga commissioner. Kaya sana po ay ano no, tigilan na ng mga ilang komisyoner ng CHED ang pangingialam po sa pag-oorganisa ng mga guru natin sa SUC. Bilang Mr. Mga Speaker, unyo. distinguished colleagues, the CHED family condone such acts and will never tolerate that. May we request our distinguished colleague to privately convey to the commissioner, to the chairman of the commission the official involved so that appropriate action will be taken. Yes, and with that, Mr. Speaker, I will going to write officially uh, to the Commission on Higher Education Chief uh, Popoy uh, about that interference of that ano no, commissioner on the organization of faculty, faculty as a union. Uh, with that, Mr. Speaker, I end my interpellation. Thank you, and thank you, distinguished sponsor. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Raul Daniel Manuel for his interpellation. The Honorable Raul Manuel is recognized for his interpellation. Magadang hapon, Mr. Speaker. Ang una ko pong uh, babahagi at uh, gusto ko rin mahinga ng tugon mula sa ating sponsor ay uh, kung papaano na yung ating mga estudyante, lalo na at uh, maraming line items sa uh, proposed budget ng Commission on Higher Education, yung uh, either merong kaltas o kulang yung uh, pondong ilalaan, Mr. Speaker. Halimbawa, yung Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education, under nito yung Free Higher Education Program sa ating mga LUCs. 
Uh, batay na rin sa ibinahagi ng uh, chairperson ng CHED noong uh, committee level budget hearings natin, merong limang newly accredited LUCs na baka hindi uh, mabigyan ng pondo for free higher education. Uh, pangalawa din, uh, Mr. Speaker, ay yung tertiary education subsidy kung saan uh, karamihan nga doon sa ating beneficiaries ay mga private school students. At pangatlo din ay yung tulong do ng program na isa sa mga student financial assistance programs ng uh, CHED. Ano? So paano pa kaya natin ito uh, matutugunan, Mr. Speaker? Well, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, no? masakit man sa kalooban ng CHED family, they cannot accept new scholars simply because budgetary constraints is a big problem. However, for all existing scholars, they will be continued until they finish their tertiary studies. Be that as it may, the leadership has also assured that if there will be measures to look into the possibility of uh, augmenting funds for scholarships, lalo na kapag gubinhawa na yung ekonomiya ng Pilipinas, ito po ay mabibigyang tugon. Uh, panghawakan natin yan, Mr. Speaker, and uh, we must uh, collectively strive to augment funding for these. Kasi nga, kung uh, gusto natin makapagtapos yung ating mga kabataan ng walang uh, mabigat na financial burden, eh, malaking tulong po sana itong mga programang ito. Yung free higher education, tertiary education subsidy, tsaka tulong do ng program. At... Uh, ito rin yung pagpapakita ng administrasyon na sinsero siya no, doon sa investment sa edukasyon ng ating mga kabataan. This leads me to uh, my second point, Mr. Speaker. I'd like to ask our sponsor kung uh, magkano yung seed fund for uh, medical schools para sa fiscal year 2023. Mr. Speaker, unfortunately, it's zero. And uh, with Mr. that, Mr. Speaker, the reason of the Department of Budget and Management was that when they were crafting the uh, 20... The CHED actually proposed an amount of uh, 150 million. However, the 2022 NEP contained a zero... Yeah, no, no, Mr. Speaker, the CHED actually proposed an amount of 150 million for fiscal year 2023. Unfortunately, as of June 30, 2022, budget utilization and budget disbursement remain at zero because these are new medical schools. It takes time for documentary requirements to be processed. As of this point of time, the utilization is how many percent? Ilana. 2021 is 100% utilization. 2022 is? 2022 has not been released by DBM yet. And uh, this is probably, the re this is surely the reason why DBM places zero allocation. With that, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, the Commission on Higher Education assures Congress that in the coming years, there will be a more efficient and effective utilization of the seed fund for medical schools so that next budgets would contain um, a, an amount commensurate to what our medical students deserve. Uh, Mr. Speaker, maari lang bang malaman mula sa ating sponsor kung bakit hindi na-release ng uh, DBM yung uh, pondo para rito? Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, the funds for 2022 was not released because they are still in the process of utilizing the 2021 allocation. And as of now, we have been told by the leadership of the Commission on Higher Education family that 2021 is almost fully utilized and disbursed. And they are now in the process of appealing to DBM that the 2022 allocation be released to them. Uh, also, Mr. Speaker, tungkol naman sa research and scholarship programs under the Commission on Higher Education. Uh, gusto din nating malaman kung magkano ang uh, proposed budget para rito for 2023. The research and um, scholarship program for 2023 again is zero. 
per CHED submitted document, funding is until 2022 only because this is related uh, to a program. I believe this is the PICARI program, which actually has a lifespan of five years and, end, uh, and will end by 2022. And that's the reason why DBM did not fund it for next year. But uh, magkano po ulit yung uh, proposal ng uh, Commission on Higher Education? Nag request po ba ang Chad requested for 435 million, both for capital outlay and MOOE, and under Tier 2. However, it was not recommended for inclusion. Okay. Uh, with what uh, we have heard, uh, Mr. Speaker, again, isa ito sa mga line items sa uh, budget no, ng uh, Commission on Higher Education na dapat mahanapan natin ng uh, source of funding. Lalong lalo na uh, bahagi din ito ng uh, comprehensive no? at uh, kompletong edukasyon ng ating mga kabataang Pilipino. Doon sa ating mga medical schools, if we envision na magtatayo tayo ng mga uh, ospital sa ating bansa, matuloy yan. Mga nga ilangan yan ng uh, supply ng mga doktor na ang kanilang expertise ay uh, may aalay nila para fully maging operational ang ganung mga ospital sa ating bansa, Mr. Speaker. Now, uh, for my uh, third topic, Mr. Speaker, ito naman ay uh, tungkol sa inilabas na bagong implementing rules and regulations ng NSTP Act of uh, 2001. Uh, gusto ko munang ilatag yung ilan sa mga punto nun na nakaka-alarma para sa atin, Mr. Speaker. Kasama doon yung pag-establish ng school-based ready reserve units. Uh, ito ay uh, naglalayon na ma magamit yung ating mga campus bilang mobilization centers ng mga ROTC graduates na magiging paraan para mamilitarize yung ating mga campus, uh, Mr. Speaker. Uh, dagdag din dyan, kung dati ang nakasaad lamang sa IRR, ay yung school admin tsaka yung Department of National Defense yung siya magsusupervise ng ROTC program ngayon explicit na na yung school admin and DND through the AFP ang siya magsusupervise ng program uh, Mr. Speaker uh, also aside sa pag-require sa private higher education institutions at sa ating mga technical vocational institutions na mag-establish ng mga Department of Military Science and Tactics, ngayon pati ang ating mga LUC ay uh, nire-require na rin na magtayo ng mga DMST. Ang uh, essential nito, Mr. Speaker, tila ba ay uh, nagsistray away from the essence of the NSTP Act of 2001, itong bagong IRR. Instead of promoting... Uh, the various tracks na pwedeng makuha ng ating mga estudyante, ito ay mas kumikiling na doon sa ROTC program. Well, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, the NSTP Act of 2001, or what we call the National Service Training Program Act of 2001, actually contains a provision that all government, universities, and colleges are mandated to offer an ROTC component plus at least one other component. The recently crafted guidelines is in accordance with what was stated in the law. It's just aligning the IRR with the law. However, for private institutions, they are not mandated to do such. And that is the reason why CHED is complying with the law. The provision of an ROTC component or the National Semi um, Service Training Program together with one other component, either the Civic Welfare Training Service or the Literacy Training Service. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, bagamat uh, nakalagay nga sa ating batas na ang mga uh, state-funded higher education institutions ay dapat na mag-offer ng ROTC at at least isa pang attract, no? either CWTS and or LTS. Pero sa wording ng ating IRR ngayon, eh, mas uh, nakakiling ito dun sa pagpapalawig 
at pagpapalawak ng uh, pagpapatupad ng ROTC sa ating mga campus, Mr. Speaker. Well, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleague, the Commission will review the IRR and make sure that nothing in the IRR is above the law and they will uh, revert back to the Honorable Manuel. Okay. Uh, ngayon, Mr. Speaker, dahil nga may ganitong uh, naging hakbang ang uh, Commission on Higher Education, pati ang iba pang mga ahensya ng pamala pamahalaan na naging bahagi ng crafting ng uh, bagong IRR, uh, gusto ko rin uh, matanong no? doon sa Commission on Higher Education, bago nito ginawan no? ng bagong IRR, yung NSTP Act of 2001, paano niya tiniyak yung kanyang papel sa pagpapatupad ng ganitong batas. To be more uh, specific, uh, Mr. Speaker, nakalagay sa Republic Act 9163 o yung NSTP Law, Section 11, Creation of the National Service Reserve Corps. And uh, to quote, Mr. Speaker, there is hereby created a National Service Reserve Corps to be composed of the graduates of the non-ROTC components. Ang uh, layunin nito, Mr. Speaker, ay uh, magkaroon ng venue na mobilize yung ating mga estudyante para sa sakuna, para sa mga pangangailangan ng ating bansa. Ang uh, tanong, Mr. Speaker, paano ito uh, na-implement ng Commission on Higher Education? Well, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleague, a partnership between the Office of Civil Defense and full cooperation with the government executive agencies involved in disaster response has actually paved way for the compliance of this law. Karagdagang tanong po, Mr. Speaker, yung mga graduates ba ng uh, CWTS tsaka LTS ay uh, namomobilize ng Commission on Higher Education dahil uh, I believe sa karanasan ng maraming mga estudyante pagkatapos nilang uh, Uh, gumraduate doon sa CWTS o LTS ay hindi nila naranasang uh, mapatawag ng uh, ganitong uh, ahensya ng ating gobyerno for the objective, no? often stated objective, na sila ay makatulong kapag kailangan sila ng ating bansa. Well, CHED has not mobilized them because it is not within the gambit of their authority, Mr. Speaker. However, the Office of the Civil Defense, through the pushing or coordination of the Commission on Higher Education has started to utilize the uh, products of this training. So, OCD po, Mr. Speaker. Meron na bang uh, directory yung Commission on Higher Education ng mga kasapi nitong National Service Reserve Corps, Mr. Speaker? May directory? Uh, meron na tayo database, pero inaayos tayo. They have a database, but the directory is Um, in the process of being crafted. Yun yung nakikita nating gap, Mr. Speaker. Kasi kung uh, nakagear yung ating uh, komisyon, as stated by our law, na meron itong uh, kapangyarihan na ipatawag yung mga kabataan kapag uh, merong mga national calamities or disasters, eh di dapat nakahanda na yung ganitong directory. Nandyan yung... Uh, kung sino yung mga nakapagtapos ng uh, iba't ibang tracks ng NSTP, tapos readily silang uh, mamobilize ng ating pamahalaan. With that, Mr. Speaker, we highly urge the Commission na i-maximize yung uh, kanyang uh, kapangyarihan na nakasaad sa NSTP Act of 2001 bago niya uh, isulong yung mga pag-amienda doon sa current na batas. Lalo na uh, Of course, we anticipate na magiging controversial no, yung uh, moves para uh, i-expand no, at i-revive pa nga no, yung mandatory ROTC. Uh, yun na lang muna sa ngayon, Mr. Speaker. Salamat sa ating sponsor sa pagsagot sa mga tanong. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Speaker. We will, uh, the, per the chat, they will not be providing a database because of the issues on privacy. However, each graduate has a serial number. Uh, kapag ikaw po ay may serial number, the OCD actually identifies that as a capability to respond to disasters. Maraming salamat po. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Paul Daza. The Honorable Paul Daza is recognized for his interpolation.
Uh, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good afternoon. Uh, will the sponsor uh, yield? Definitely, Mr. Speaker. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, first of all, I'd like to express my gratitude to the Committee on Appropriations and the Commission on Higher Education. There were many documents that I asked during the budget hearing. Uh, in fact, it's over there. It's pretty thick. And I thank you for um, sending the documents I had requested. I, I wish it had a little bit more detail, but uh, nevertheless, I, I thank them for that. Uh, one of the things that they sent to me, which is not included in the usual budget briefing, uh, which I will request to the good sponsor that maybe should be included, is what we call the attrition or dropout rates in, Philipp in the Philippines. Uh, every year, the CHED will provide the committee reports and enrollment, which is good. Enrollment has gone up, and partly because of the good law we passed, the uh, free uh, college education uh, tuition. But we never talk about attrition or dropout rates, and that's what I wanted to ask uh, the good sponsor. In the documents provided to us, the national average for dropout, meaning for every 100 uh, college students, nationwide, private, or public, is at 26%, meaning one out of four students who enroll in college or university end up not graduating. In fact, in, in these documents provided by the CHED, which I'm really grateful for, I appreciate uh, the transparency and the honesty because it takes a lot of courage to admit to the house and to the country that in private institutions, 32% don't graduate, meaning one out of three who enroll in private colleges end up dropping out. We have a much better performance in the state universities because of the free tuition, I think. It's only at 17%. So the national average is 26%. So I would like to ask the sponsor if she believes this is you know, good statistics, uh, what's included in the budget for 2023? What are the programs? What are the PAPs? What's the intervention of CHED to find solutions and reducing the dropout rate of Filipino college students? Well, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleague, the highest attrition or dropout rate was attributed to the private higher education institutions. Understandably, this is an effect of the pandemic. The pandemic forced many of our students to shift to public universities. The Commission on Higher Education has actually appealed for an increase in budget so that they will be able to cater to all these students. On the issue of dropouts and uh, based on other reasons, that means the students who totally um, dropped out from school and did not transfer to public institution, the commission assures this August body that they will make a study and look into the reasons behind the disinterest of students from going to school and come out with appropriate measures that will be answerable to the needs of our students. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I, I think that's more or less, I think, correct that part of the problem was the pandemic. But if you really look at the statistics, uh, it cannot just be solely attributed to the pandemic. But uh, I, I appreciate the response. I just have one request, if the good sponsor will agree with me that in the standard reports of the Commission on Higher Education to the Committee on Higher Education and to the Committee on Appropriations, when they prepare the reports, may I request that starting this year or next year, 
that they will include in the standard reports that's submitted to the Committee on Appropriations a similar report tracking the attrition and dropout rates in Philippine higher education, which was submitted to me yesterday. Would the sponsor support that and, re and request the CHED to report to this at least every year? Definitely, Mr. Speaker. And the Commission assures us that they will change their manner of reporting to incorporate enrolled students, continuing students, plus the dropout rate um, qualified either from the private sector or from the government sector and identified on a regional and provincial level. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Speaker, to the sponsor and to the chairman. Thank you, and I think that's uh, a good step moving forward. Thank you very much. I I'm, I'm very elated that that will be addressed and included in the standard reports. Um, higher education is an instrument for many, many things. Global competitiveness, uh, human capital development, and I believe poverty alleviation. Would that be a fair statement to make, uh, Mr. Speaker? Definitely, Mr. Speaker. It pierces the core of our community. Um, I think the sponsor and all my colleagues heard this afternoon, many of the interpreters' frustration is we don't have enough budget to give scholarship to poor and needy students. I think we heard that in the last hour or so. Uh, I think that's something we should address. Uh, earlier, I'm, I'm happy to share to my colleagues, in fact, uh, I hope she doesn't mind I, I mention it, no less than the senior deputy speaker, Madam uh, Gloria Macapagal Arroyo, our former president, uh, mediated, assisted in some uh, discussion with the chairman of the committee regarding, use, uh, regarding 2021 continuing appropriations. There's, there's roughly about 1.8 billion remaining for this year. And through the efforts of our senior deputy speaker, uh, assurances were made that some of these funds will be utilized this year and allocated for poor deserving students, specifically for Listahanan 2.0 or 3.0. And my estimate is there will be at least 12 to 13,000 students who may be able to avail of scholarship this year. I share that with you, uh, Madam Sponsor. Could you assure us that this plan subject to DBM approval will be a possibility for the next few months. Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleague, the commission assures us that there is an available 400 million to free up from CONAP 2021 to be augmented in another PAP um, after due approval from the DBM. Um, uh, I, I do agree, Mr. Speaker, distinguished colleagues, that the figures that was being seen by our documents was to the tune of 1.8 billion. And this matter can probably be threshed out after uh, the DBM looks into the utilization of funds for 2021 CONA. For, for my recollection, and before our senior deputy speaker goes to the lounge, she was my witness. I think it was 500 million, not 400 million. I, I think the number mentioned was 500. Mr. Speaker, may I request for a one-minute suspension? Session suspended.
Session resumes. Uh, Mr. The, Speaker, uh, just to refresh the discussion, uh, we were requesting from the CHED uh, to alleviate uh, many of the complaints and to help the many poor needy students this year uh, through the efforts of our senior deputy speaker earlier. Uh, there were some available funds identified from previous year appropriations, 2021, um, which we will work on uh, to be utilized by end of this year, which will be at least 10 to 12,000 students. And my understanding is it will be at least 400 million pesos for this year. We confirm that, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you so much. Palakpakan po natin yung sponsor at si Chairman De Vera. We will have at least 10,000 students who will get new scholarships this year. Thank you so much, uh, Congresswoman Garin, Chairman De Vera. We're looking forward to that. And I think many of the members who interpolated earlier will be very happy that we will have new student scholars this year. Uh, that will wrap up my interpolation, Mr. Speaker. I Thank you so much, uh, the Madam, uh, Madam Sponsor and the Ched family for that. Thank you so much. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Serio Dago'ok. The Honorable Dago'ok is recognized for his interpolation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. Uh, thank you, Madam Sponsor. There being no other members of the minority who wish to interpolate with the budget of the uh, Commission on Higher Education, in behalf of the minority, I move to terminate the period of sponsorship, interpolation, and debate on the budget of CHED for the fiscal year 2023. So moved, Mr. Chair. Thank you both. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation on the Commission on Higher Education. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Commission on Higher Education. Is there any objection? The Chair hears none. The motion is approved. And the interpolations on the proposed budget of the Commission on Higher Education is hereby terminated. Congratulations to the family of Chet. Majority Leader. Mr. Speaker, I move that we suspend session for a few minutes. Session suspended. The majority leader naman will tell me when they're ready. Or ready na. Oh. Okay. 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 Uh, 
on Friday, Friday, tomorrow is somebody else. Uh -oh. And then the, before, the deputy speaker said that you should give us a different Oh, because we cannot assume that we know everybody. Who is the vice chairman of Suk? Sir, Sir Ban Paren? Does I hear here? What is her first name? Okay, we have to put her name. A and Ko, we cannot say A and Ko. We have to put her name. Charney, you're defending uh, one of the sooks. Ah, hindi po. Supposed to po yung brother ko, pero si Kong Calderon at saka matutupo. Ah, okay, okay. Ma'am, pwede po.
There is a motion to uh, consider the budget the SUX. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the following sponsors. Representative Bingo Matugas II, Representative Peter John Calderon, Representative Mary Mitch Cahayon, Representative Raul Jill Bongalon, and Representative Maria Lucille Nava. So move, Madam Speaker. Representative Calderon, Cahayon Uy, Bongalon, Nava, Matugas are recognized. Madam Speaker, I have the honor to present the budget of the state universities and colleges for the fiscal year 2023 with a total amount of 93.3 billion pesos. And uh, Please proceed. this representation is now ready to receive interpolation from majority leader. Alex. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the representative Gabriel Bordado for his interpolation. So move, Madam Speaker. Gabriel Bordado, Congressman, is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. I understand that the uh, distinguished uh, sponsor will be more than willing to answer some of my questions. Gladly, Your Honor. Madam Speaker, based on the National Expenditure Program submitted by the Department of Budget and Management to the House of Representatives, okay. the SUCs are eyeing a total of 93 billion, 325 million, 348,000 to sustain their operations next year across the 17 regions of the country. The bulk of the proposed funding was allocated, Madam Chairman, uh, Madam Speaker, to educational institutions based in the national capital region, including the entire University of the Philippine system, amounting to 28.3 billion pesos. Now, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, Based on the records here, the SUCs are considered as the fourth biggest losers in the budgetary allocation. Madam Speaker, let me give you some examples. Marikina Polytechnic College. The budget of this Marikina Polytechnic College dropped by 80.92%. The Marinduque State College had a slash of 79.97%. The Romblon State University, the budget of this university was cut by more than 63%, Madam Speaker. And the Central Bicol State University of Agriculture, which is located in my district, its budget was cut by more than 51%, Madam Speaker. Mr. Sponsor, 
had the Department of Budget and Management or any concerned agency ever inform you of the reasons for this unkindest cut, to borrow a phrase from William Shakespeare. Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, the main culprit of the cuts, no, the malaking cut po is uh, the capital outlay. Uh, based on record, in GAA 2022, the capital, uh, capital outlay of SUCs was about 13 billion, 13.6 billion. But for NEP 2023, it's only within 2.9 billion. So 100% of all SUCs have been uh, given cuts, sharp cuts, deep cuts, sa capital outlay. Uh, Your Honor, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, the 1987 Constitution mandates that the education sector should be given the highest budget priority. And while we can say that the Department of Education has an increased budget, but the budget for tertiary education has been suffering reductions. Do you agree with this kind of setup, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor? Madam Speaker, uh, Your Honor, no, personally, I don't agree. And uh, it's a sad thing that uh, the DBM no, uh, reduced drastically the budget of the SUCs. In fact, all the SUCs are requesting that their budget be augmented for fiscal year 2023. And uh, this representation is one with them. No? And all, all of us five sponsors of the different SUCs uh, are one with the SUCs in uh, asking our, the help of this August body to augment their budget for fiscal year 2023 so that they can perform their mandate to provide quality education to our, all our students. Thank you. Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Sponsor. Uh, Madam Speaker, I said a while ago that the UP system held most of the proposed by budget by SUCs for fiscal year 2023. But, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Your Honor, yes. Uh, the UP budget uh, is the biggest. In the case of the UP system. Yes. Mr. Sponsor, there was this drastic cut in the budget of the Philippine General Hospital. Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, uh, Madam Speaker can, can the sponsor react to that? Madam Speaker, may I yield to the Vice Chair Sponsor of uh, UP System? Congressman Calderon is recognized. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, with respect to the with respect to the budget of PGH, the personal services increased slightly, and also the MOOE increased slightly. But the request 
for capital outlay of 200 million was not given under the national expenditure program and uh, in fact pgh has zero capital outlay under the national expenditure program of 2023 madam speaker so madam speaker mr sponsor no additional budget will be given to the pgh the so-called hospital of the people uh, hopefully madam speaker there should be an addition to the pgh budget because for example the personal services the, there's a slight increase but that covers only for the salary adjustment under the salary standardization law there's a slight increase in the mooe and uh, we need additional MOOE, especially uh, there is now uh, an increase in the capacity of the uh, Philippine General Hospital. Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, you are telling us hopefully, so we are not sure. Hopefully, because that will depend on the depend on us madam chairman uh, madam speaker so madam speaker mr sponsor if it will depend on us i am categorically and strongly calling for the restoration of the budget cuts of sucs and the university of the philippines particularly the Philippine General Hospital, Madam Speaker. We will join you on that, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor. So we will do everything to restore the budget cuts of the SUCs, particularly the UP PGH. Thank you. Madam Speaker, according to the Philippine Statistics Authority, 7.44 7 million of 20.14 million of Filipinos aged 15 to 24 are already part of the labor force as of May 2022. Youth labor force participation rate is at 36.9%. The recent 10.85 billion budget cut for SUCs makes it seem like there is less emphasis placed on tertiary education in the country, which is detrimental to our overall goal of providing the best education for our citizens. Now, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, how can the SUCs encourage the youth, particularly the increasing number of out-of-school youth, to pursue tertiary education? Madam Speaker, uh, may I be recognized to answer the question of the interpolator? Please proceed, Congress of Matugas. Madam, Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, the main motivator for uh, tertiary education is the cost of uh, education. So if we, we as uh, the body, Kogos body here in Congress, will use the power of the poor as given by the Constitution the, to augment, as you have mentioned earlier, to augment the budget of our state universities, especially CHED, 
uh, especially for the universal access to quality tertiary education. If we can restore budget for that, uh, I think students out of school will be motivated to go to tertiary education. In fact, there are statistics already before when we passed the universal access to quality education during the 17th Congress. The statistics of enroll enrollees in different state universities, colleges, and LUCs have been increasing. No, it's, it can be shown uh, during the past budget hearings of the CHED that enrollment and student participation in tertiary education has been increasing because of the free education program of the government. Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, thank you, Mr. Sponsor. Madam Speaker, can the SUCs provide the percentage of graduates that get employed after graduation? Mad Madam Speaker, Your Honor, I think that information is lodged with the CHED po. Your Honor, Ms. Madam Speaker. Nasa CHED po yung statistics of a uh, student who graduates and been hired uh, sa, sa trabaho po. Um, so in other words, the Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, the individual SUCs are not doing that? Madam Speaker, Your Honor, the SUCs no, and the LUCs will submit to, to you, uh, to this August body, the report on the statistics of students hired, uh, graduates hired. Okay, thank you. Mr. Sponsor, but I'm speaker, Mr. Sponsor, how do the SUCs monitor the employability, in quotation marks, of graduates? Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, all of the SUCs and LUCs have a graduate research study and an alumni tracer study to monitor uh, the employability of their students, of their okay, graduates. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, in the so-called in-person learning and online classes, can we expect that 100% in-person learning will return to the SUCs soon? Or will SUCs continue with blended learning until further notice? Madam Speaker, Your Honor, as of this time, all the issues are still in the preparation process uh, for the in total or 100% in-person uh, learning. So they, they are already starting and they are now transitioning so that by next year, 100% uh, na po ang ating face-to-face uh, -face class sa lahat ng SUCs and LUCs. Well, thank you, Mr. Sponsor. Madam Speaker, in the past two years, college students have struggled with balancing online learning, mental health, and financial uh, capacity leading to thousands of students dropping out. How did the SUCs extend assistance to their students? Madam Speaker, Your Honor, um, as if, if you may recall, uh, during the pandemic, the our uh, this August body passed Bayanihan 1 and 2. And within Bayanihan 1 and 2, there was a budget allocated to all SUCs to enhance their uh, internet or online learning capabilities. So with that, uh, with that uh, budget, they were able to enhance their online capabilities. In fact, it was 
the term was smart campus. So there was a smart campus project uh, that was allocated within Bayanihan 1 and Bayanihan 2. And with that project, they were able to extend webinar, uh, especially on mental health program, to their students. Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Sponsor. Madam Speaker, COA found deficiencies in the implementation of various projects amounting to 1.67 billion pesos. Of the SUCs, particularly those tagged by COA, explained what these deficiencies were. Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, that finding of COA was based on the 2020 budget and that, the, that those three SUCs that, were f uh, that have an uh, audit exemption, audit memorandum exemption, uh, obser audit uh, observation, uh, they're already, uh, they already allocated that, uh, those findings of the COA. Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Well, thank you, Mr. Sponsor, Madam Speaker. What were the programs and projects affected by such deficiencies? Um, your, uh, Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, may I uh, clarify your question? May I clarify your question? As I, as I was saying uh, a while ago, COA found deficiencies in the implementation of various projects. Now, I am asking what specific programs and projects had been affected by these deficiencies? Madam Speaker, may I be recognized? Oh. Congresswoman Kahayan is recognized. Madam Speaker, my dear colleague, uh, I can only answer for the NCR, which uh, I guess you are pertaining to uh, PUP. Uh, Ms. Madam Speaker, Ms., uh, my dear colleague, uh, for PUP, they are already uh, earmarked and allocated for a specific project being implemented this year. But uh, however, the COA report has been done on the 2020. For PUP itself, uh, they have this uh, lab equipment amounting to uh, 46 million ongoing implementation. Madam Speaker, uh, my dear colleague. And number two, the GSIS Condotel purchase. It's ongoing negotiation, which amounted to 118 million and number three infrastructure rehab construction which is amounting to 700 million it is ongoing implementation of the project and number four the ICT projects 22 million which is also ongoing uh, madam speaker and my dear colleagues so all the said amount was based on the 2020 COA report and all are implemented and earmarked ongoing implementations. There are other universities that was mentioned by the COA, and I will yield to my colleagues here who are responsible for the COA reports. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Sponsor. Madam Speaker, COA also found that scholarships had been granted to unqualified students. How do SUCs determined eligible students for scholarship grants. Is this process the same for all SUCs? Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Please proceed, Congressman Matugas. Thank you, uh, thank you Madam Speaker. 
uh, Madam Speaker, Your Honor, with regards to scholarships, uh, may, I, may I qualify my answer? First, there's a, or there's a, we have the law, universal access to quality education. So that is processed based on the qualification given by CHED. Now, after that, the other scholarship program are different, different na po sa different issues. Yun po yung, uh, every issue C will have their own qualification or uh, screening process for the remaining, for the other scholarship programs that is outside of the universal access to quality, to tertiary education. Okay. Usually, mga assistance na lang sa mga students po. Your Honor, uh, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Mr. Sponsor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Franz Castro for her interpellation. So move, Madam Speaker. Congresswoman Castro is recognized. Madam Salamat, uh, Madam Speaker. Muli magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Um, yung unang tanong ko po, uh, Madam Speaker, about doon sa ROS. Yung ROS. Ito po yung Revised Organizational Structure and Staffing Standards for SUC. Ito po, Madam Speaker, ay may kinalaman doon sa hiring and regularization of administ administrative staff ng mga ano natin, ano, uh, sa, sa SUC. Uh, Madam Speaker, ito ay output ng Interagency Workshop, Philippine Association of State Universities, and colleges, PASUK, ang CHED at DBM noong May 2 to 3, 2018 para sa administrative and other staff sa SUCs like non-teaching personnel. Ang mga non-teaching personnel ng SUC ay medyo similar ang situation sa basic ed. Kung saan ang teachers ay overwork, overloaded, at natatabunan lagi ng paperwork most of the time dahil sa task nandi naman related sa teaching. Understaffing ang sentro ng problemang ito, uh, Madam Speaker. Sa SUCs, universities, and colleges, sometimes designate administ administrative assignments to faculty members para lang magkaroon ng taong gagawa ng mga administrative task, task na iyon. Dahil kulang po ng mga, ano, no? kulang po ng mga administrative personnel. For more than 30 years, hindi binibigyan ng budget ang SUC para makapag-promote sila ng mga non-teaching personnel. Ang nangyayari tuloy, ginagamit ang savings para makapag-hire ng mga contractuals. Kaya mapapansin natin sa mga SUCs, ang ilan sa mga ahensya na pinakatalamak ang ENDO. Uh, 22,937 ang JO. And uh, COs naman ay, ano no, uh, base ito doon sa 2022 inventory ng CSC. Napipilita ng SUC administrations to hire JOs and COs workers kasi otherwise, lalong lalala ang understaffing, pati na rin ang overwork ng mga existing personnel. Mapapansin din natin na lahat ng mga SUC, except for one uh, school, ay tinapyasa ng MOOE at isa sa mga mabibigat na epekto nun ay mabawasan lalo ang kapasidad ng SUC na mag-hire ng mga non-teaching staff. Tatlo, Madam Speaker, ang nangyayari dito. Una, lalala ang overwork ng faculty members. Pangalawa, lalala ang overwork din ng iilang administrative personnel na existing sa SUCs. At pangatlo, Madam Speaker, hindi sapat na natutugunan ang mga administrative na gawain sa mga SUCs. May ilang tagumpay na nakuha tayo dito sa Kongreso na tinulak natin uh, sa organisasyon ng mga union, ng mga faculty and non-teaching staff na gusto nating maulit ngayon. Noong 2016, na ipasok sa GAA uh, through the amendments of ACT Teachers ang funding for additional 6,000 non-teaching plantilla positions sa SUCs. 
Gusto nating maulit ngayon kasi walang funding for new SUC personnel positions, whether CHED, SUCs, MBBF, or, or sa ano no, sa uh, UA. So, yung saan... Unappropriated fund. Unlike sa DepEd, there's a regular item called new school personnel position. So, yung unang question, uh, Madam Speaker, distinguished sponsors, can the sponsor confirm this? Walang pondo para sa bagong SUC personnel positions para sa proposed 23, uh, 2023 budget. At ilang non-teaching positions ang makikreate next year. Congresswoman Kahayon. Maraming salamat po, Madam Speaker. At uh, uh, aking pong uh, kinukumpirma ang mga tinura ng ating pong mahal na representative or kinatawan sa, mula sa Act Teachers Party List na mayroon po mga porsyento ng uh, budget ng, uh, ng uh, uh, SUCs na talaga pong hindi na ibigay. Sapagkat ito pong uh, kanyang tinura na ROS o tinatawag nating uh, Revised Organizational Structure and Staffing standard, Standards for SOOCs, ito po ay natapos lamang ang kanilang ginawang uh, guidelines noong Mayo 25 nitong taong ito. Kung kaya po talagang uh, hindi pa rin po kumpleto at uh, akin naman pong uh, uh, in, uh, uh, I uh, do not agree in a way that uh, uh, it is, there's really zero uh, budget for this because there is a phase one that was uh, sent to uh, SOOCs for, on this, uh, uh, fund, for this fund. Uh, kasi po, uh, tatlong pong phase po kasi ito. So ngayon po ay nasa unang phase pa lamang kung kaya uh, makikita po ninyo na maliit pa lamang po ang uh, inilagak ng uh, DBM para po rito. Subalit, uh, huwag pong mag-alala ang atin pong uh, uh, kinatawan ng Acts Teachers kasi po ay uh, patuloy pa rin po sila sa kanilang pong pinoproseso para po sa completion ng uh, uh, proseso po ng uh, nung pong tinatawag natin na ROS. Uh, bilang po uh, pagkukumpirma doon po sa mga tinura ng atin pong kinatawan, totoo po na ito po ay uh, uh, limang taon at uh, nito lamang po uh, talaga natapos ang guidelines. Subalit po, nagaantay pa rin po ang uh, uh, DBM para po, ay ang uh, CHED para po doon sa uh, uh, kategorya. Kasi po, kinakailangan pong i-classify po nila ang, uh, ang submission, di ba po? Uh, ang size, yung po pala yun, uh, ang size. So, iniintay pa po nila ang classification na ito mula po sa DBM. Madam Speaker, my dear colleague. Okay, uh, thank you, distinguished sponsor. So, medyo matagal na rin, um, um, Madam Speaker, yung ka kaugnay nitong mga guidelines na ito. Uh, etong, uh, hindi lang po apektado dito yung mga regular employees ano, ng CHED at saka ng mga SUCs. Uh, uh, pati na rin po yung mga ano no yung mga uh, in, 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 hina hire na JOs and uh, um, contract of service okay so can the sponsor support kasi ang tinatanong ko kanina gusto ko sanang magpropose ng ano no katulad sa DepEd meron tayong regular na new school personnel positions kung ganyan po na wala pa yung guidelines So, paano po natin yan uh, magagawa dito sa NEP? Dahil it's been six years na itong ROS na ito ay nakabitin at marami na po tayong mga kakulangan sa mga non-teaching personnel. Gaya nga na nabanggit ko kanina, uh, ilan ba yung kakulangan yung sinasabi natin kanina uh, na kulang ay meron pong 22,937 uh, uh, JOs and COs according to sa CSC. So, kung can the sponsor support a proposal that we have a regular item similar to the one in DepEd, preferably in the SUC mismo, or kung hindi man sa CHED. It is long past overdue that this Congress enable our SUC to hire regular non-teaching positions. So, napakahalaga rin. Kung mahalaga po yung mga teachers sa 
sa mga SUCs. Uh, more importantly, mahalaga din po yung non-teaching personnel na dapat natin din equally uh, i-treat sila as katulad ng mga teaching personnel. So, um, tingin po, ano uh, po ang palagay dito ng ating distinguished sponsor, Madam Speaker? Madam Speaker, uh, we fully support the uh, yung pong uh, uh, nap napuna ng ating pong kinatawan na kinakailangan naman din po natin bigyan ng equally importance ang ating mga non-teaching personnel. However, Madam Chair, I just want to give the assurance to the uh, representative of the uh, teachers that it is still, yun nga po, pinoproseso po ang mga bagay na ito at wag po kayong mag may budget naman po. And of course, we support na sana po ay uh, talaga mapagtuunan po ito ng pansin at, uh, pansin at uh, pondo para po dito, Madam Chair. Ay, Madam uh, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker, Distinguished Sponsor. Kahit siguro kalahati o one-third lang ng number of positions na nire-request ng mga SUCs, malayo na po ang maabot. But of course, we demand on behalf of our SUC and their personnel full funding for this. Bagamat may sinasabi tayong fund na, na dito, pero napakaliit, di po ba? At ayaw nating ituring yung ating mga non-teaching personnel na kahilera yan ng mga supplies o equipments dahil kinukuha lang sa MOOE yung budget na ito. So gusto natin, Madam Speaker, uh, uh, distinguished sponsor, full funding for this. And I appeal to this body, maglaan na tayo ng pondo para sa hiring ng mga non-teaching personnel sa SUC gaya ng ginagawa natin for teaching personnel noong 2016. And let us cure this decade-old injustice being endured by our SUCs and our tertiary education personnel. Okay, next. On the status of the review of the guidelines. So, nabanggit kanina, Madam Speaker, ng ating uh, kagalang-galang na sponsor about the, these guidelines. Noong January 3, 2019, inendorso ng CHED ang ROSS to sa DBM. And soon after, nagbuo ang DBM, in particular, yung Organization, Position, Classification, and Compensation Bureau or OPCCB ng Technical Working Group para ma-review at evaluate at ma-evaluate itong proposal na ito. According to the response in the FOI portal, foi.gov.ph, to various requests for copies of the review draws, the DBM is currently working with the concerned agencies for the updating of the said standards. As of January 26, 2021, and a draft national budget circular regarding the first phase of the implementation of the ROS has already been drafted by the DBM as of February 2022. Can the sponsor confirm this? Nakita niyo na po ba yung kopya na ito na dinraft ng DBM as of February 2022? Madam Speaker, uh, may we just furnish a copy of that, uh, 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 the one that has been mentioned? Pero yun nga po yung sabi ko po kanina, approved na po yun, Madam Speaker. As she mentioned the date, it's February 26. However, what we have uh, I, I, uh, said earlier, that it has been already approved on the uh, uh, dated May 25, 2022, Madam Speaker. Okay, uh, medyo ano pala, no? outdated yung aking information. <laughs> Kung meron pong May 2022, kasi yung aking nakita ko lang sa FOI, ay yung February 2022. Can the sponsor... Uh, Madam Speaker, provide me the copy yes, of yes, the Madam latest Speaker. guidelines on ROS. Yes, Madam Speaker, my dear colleague. We so, balikan po natin ano, mula January 3, 2019 hanggang February 2022, ang inabot lang ng CHED kasama ang DBM ay ang draft, National Budget Circular, and only for this phase. So, ano no, um, bakit kaya ano no, tumagal ng ganito? yung pag-draft pag ng mga guidelines. Ano ba yung mga hadlang kung bakit di pa nailabas yung mga guidelines para sa ROS at hindi nito na-implement sa CHED? Tatlong taon na po ang lumipas at ang sabi sa budget deliberation ng 2020, the evaluation requires rigorous and requires technical knowledge and assistance. 
kaya need time. Okay, so, so with this, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, doon po sa mga guide, sa guidelines na sinasabi po ng ating butihing sponsor ay sana ay ano no, nandito na lahat yung mga kinakailangang requirement para mapunuan natin yung mga non-teaching personnel sa ating mga SUC at syempre ma'am, makuha na rin nila yung promotion na hinahangad nila for the last six years, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Um, kaya tama po na nagtagal po ito, five years in the making, Madam Speaker. Kasi nga po, ito po ay uh, kinailangan ng talagang uh, matinding pag-aaral at pagkonsultasyon. Uh, remember, Madam Speaker, my dear colleague, uh, tripartite po ang agreement na ito. Ito po ay uh, kinailangan pang ikonsulta ang civil service, ang CSC, ang PASOK, uh, Madam Speaker, at ang SHED. Kung kaya't kinailangan pa po ng oras para po talagang... Uh, pagtuunan ng pansin ang ating mga pagre-regulation uh, or ito pong uh, pagiging plan, pagkakaroon ng plantilla position ng ating non, uh, per, uh, teaching personnel, Madam Speaker. So, Madam Speaker, kahit na po may guidelines na in the making ay six, uh, five to six years, so sa tingin po ng representasyong ito ay napakatagal po no na injustice dun sa ating mga non-teaching personnel. Bagamat pina-perfect nyo ito na sinasabing maraming mga consultation, pero sa tingin natin, dapat din uh, na-prioritize ito no? sa bahagi ng ating mga SUC. Dahil after, ma uh, after Madam Speaker, mabuo ang guidelines, meron pa po tayong gagawin dito. Kasi gagawa pa po tayo ng budget requirement para dito. At kailan pa po ito? Siguro matatapos na tayo in three years bago ito may implement Kaya, Madam Speaker, ano, ang ating demand, sana ito ay ano, no, ma-finalize at siguro sa susunod na budget, uh, uh, na budget sa 2024 ay ma-ano na natin, ma-request na natin. Ma-assure po ba tayo ng distinguished sponsor na matatapos na ito? Madam Speaker, Uh, kinatutuwa po ng representasyong ito na nabanggit po yan ng uh, kinatawan mula sa Act Teachers Party List sapagkat uh, tama po meron pong budget ngayon, yun nga po yung naturan ko kanina na ito po ay maliit dahil unang phase pa lamang po. And thank you for mentioning that because uh, the, in behalf of SOOCs, we are, we are requesting this August body to uh, provide an appropriation for uh, amounting to 7 billion Uh, uh, for, the, uh, for the year 2023 for our GAA para nga po matugunan ito. So, naka, naka, uh, ito naman po yung ating hinihiling sa August body na ito na sana po ay ma, mabigyan po natin ng pansin kasi nga po uh, tama po kayo sa unang maliit po yung naibigay natin sa unang phase lamang po at kinakailangan para ma, ma, madagdagan po ito sa mga susunod na operasyon. Okay, um, with that assurance na ano, meron palang 7 billion sa 2023 GAB. At ito po ay sinusuportahan natin at sana ma mataasan ano, kung pwede pa rin uh, through this August Chamber para naman po doon sa ating mga non-teaching personnel. And with that assurance, uh, Madam Speaker, Distinguished Sponsor, I end my interpellation. Thank, Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize uh, Representative Raul Manuel for his interpellation. So move, Madam Speaker. Congressman Manuel is recognized. Magandang hapon, Madam Speaker. Ang uh, una kong uh, punto hinggil sa 2023 uh, proposed budget para sa ating mga state universities and colleges ay yung uh, malabong batayan para mag-allocate ng 25 million pesos na capital outlay sa bawat SUC. Sa mga nakaraang taon, uh, Madam Speaker, ang capital outlay para sa bawat SUC ay uh, tinitingnan batay sa kung ano yung proposed projects ng bawat SUC. Kaya naturally, mag -iba, iba yung figure for capital outlay across the 100 plus SUCs in our country, Madam Speaker. Pero ngayon, hindi natin maintindihan bakit blanket 25 million ang amount ng capital outlay for each SUC. Kahit na iba-iba naman yung kanilang uh, circumstances, 
Iba-iba yung kanilang kondisyon bilang ng campuses at bilang ng mga estudyante. Dagdag pa, Madam Speaker, uh, may impacts din yung inflation dun sa pagtutuloy ng uh, mga proyekto o bagong infrastructure sa ating mga state universities and colleges. Uh, halimbawa, dahil dun sa mas mataas na presyo ng mga construction materials, uh, either wala nang nagbibid ng mga contractor kasi para sa kanila eh, uh, kulang pa yung uh, posibleng uh, makuha nilang uh, Pondo, no? mula doon sa ibibigay ng isang SUC para sa pagtutuloy ng isang proyekto. O kung meron mang uh, kumpanya na nakakuha na ng award para sa isang proyekto, eh, hindi ito natutuloy kasi dahil nga rin sa ating uh, inflation rates ay uh, nangihingi sila ng price escalation, Madam Speaker. At uh, ang epekto nito ay kailangan pang umapela sa NEDA at dadaan pa sa DBM para uh, ma-adjust ano, yung uh, magiging cost ng uh, project. Kaya I'd like to ask our uh, sponsors, Madam Speaker, kung uh, tingin ba nila eh, responsive yung uh, ganitong uh, proposal for capital outlay. Lalo na uh, we have to prepare for full face-to-face -face classes at meron pa tayong mga SUC na hindi pa rin fully nakaka-recover mula sa mga bagyo at sa mga lindol. Madam Speaker, may be recognized. Congress Matugas. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, tama po kayo. Hindi po siya responsive. No? Uh, yung ganun na pag-alok, pagbigay ng uh, budget for capital outlay. Uh, hindi po sinunod yung, ano, yung priority projects ng every SUC. So, kami po, mga vice chair sponsors ng mga SUC, ay nagkaisa na susuportahin namin yung augmentation ng uh, SUC on capital outlay based on their priorities. Siguro, one, two, three. Kasi we also agree na uh, meron tayong budgetary constraint no? so as a whole. So, uh, we ask every SUC to submit their top three priority project para mabigyan natin siya ng uh, focus para mat, para para may chance po na ma-augment sa budget for 2023. Uh, sunod na punto, Madam Speaker, tungkol naman sa mga kaltas din sa uh, maintenance and other operating expenses ng ating uh, state universities and colleges. Uh, kung paghahandaan na yung 100% face-to-face uh, -face classes, kailangan yung proper ventilation ng ating uh, learning spaces. Pati na rin ang on-campus health facilities and supplies. Pati din yung uh, COVID-19 testing uh, program. At kung sakaling merong mga magkakasakit, mainam sana na merong uh, medical fund na pwedeng itap ng ating mga estudyante, uh, teaching and non-teaching personnel. Now, Madam Speaker, with these uh, kinds of uh, cuts no, sa proposal, no, para sa budget na ating SUCs, eh, marahil ay hindi natin uh, fully masusunod yung mga uh, dapat na matiyak na mga standards or protocols when it comes to conducting face-to-face uh, -face classes, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Your Honor, yes po, uh, tama po kayo. Your Honor, na kailangan talaga natin i may konting tayong ibalik, no? i-augment doon sa budget ng uh, SUC para po sila makapagbigay ng mas magandang environment para doon sa face-to-face -face classes for the next school year. Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Okay. Uh, in relation to that, Madam Speaker, uh, dahil nga rin sa uh, mga naging epekto ng uh, distance learning at yung uh, overall uh, crisis sa ating bansa, of course, this has impacts on uh, the mental health of our uh, learners and uh, we are actually uh, glad to note the different uh, mental health programs in our state universities and colleges uh, for example uh, the UP system has a UP student wellness subsidy program na naglalaan ng 7500 pesos per semester sa eligible students to support their mental health expenses uh, I'd like to address this question to our uh, sponsors uh, with the assistance of uh, officials uh, from our SUCs na kung uh, 
matuloy itong uh, proposed budget for our SUCs, ano yung magiging epekto nito dun sa ganitong mga programa na meron na tayo ngayon at gusto nating uh, mag-expand pa nga yung coverage, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, as currently, no, uh, the all SUCs ay meron pong program sa mental health ongoing for the students, not only for the students, but also for the faculty and staff. Now, if madagdagan po ang budget, mas mapapalawak po ang implementasyon ng mental health program. No? Especially that mag increase na po ang enrollment as uh, na wawala na po sa COVID and then a lot of our students are going back to, to the schools physically. So, ito po ay malaking tulong po and Sana po, uh, yun nga, yung wish natin na magkaisa ang buong kongreso na uh, isuportahan ang augmentation ng budget cuts ng uh, ICUCs. Uh, Madam Speaker, since our uh, sponsor has mentioned uh, the increasing enrollment rates in our state universities and colleges, uh, gusto din nating uh, i-point out na meron ding uh, kakulangan no, dun sa pondo na ilalaan sa ating mga SUC as part of their uh, share dun sa Free Higher Education Fund. Kung ikukumpara natin yung uh, allocation for this year under the 2022 uh, GAA tsaka yung nasa 2023 NEP ay merong difference na 1.5 billion pesos. Uh, dun pa lamang Madam Speaker ay... Uh, nakukulangan na tayo ng uh, paliwanag mula sa Department of Budget and Management, lalo na, assuming pa nga lang na constant yung enrollment uh, rates, hindi magdadagdag ng enrollees yung ating mga SUC, edi eh dapat walang difference, Madam Speaker. Okay. Tapos, kung i-consider pa natin yung uh, increase sa enrollment, ang projection ng ating mga SUCs uh, when uh, taken in totality, eh, Yung nasa 2023 uh, NEP ay uh, kulang ng 5.8 billion pesos compared sa kanilang projection. And uh, this contradicts the essence of uh, Republic Act 10931 Section 4 o yung uh, nasa Universal Access to Quality Tertiary Education Act, uh, Madam Speaker. Now, para maput ito on record, I like to quote Section 4 of this law, Madam Speaker. Sabi dito, the amount required to implement the free tuition and other school fees in SUCs and LUCs shall be determined by the respective governing boards of SUCs and LUCs based on the projected number of enrollees for each academic year. Uh, tapos, uh, to continue, uh, Madam Speaker, nasa same section din. This shall, in turn, serve as the baseline during the preparation of the annual national expenditure program by the DBM, Madam Speaker. Now, I'd like to ask our sponsors, kung uh, masasabi ba natin na yung DBM ay liable kung hindi nila susundin itong Section 4 ng Republic Act 10931? Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, yun po ang isang tanong din ng mga issues. Uh, because based on law, dapat po 100%. Uh, and uh, in fact, this year's budget nila, uh, allocation nila from the free higher education is 15% less than supposed to be na matanggap nila. And then for 2023, ganun po din yung nangyari, na nakopya lang yung ano yung na-allocate. So it is up to us, uh, our uh, duty, to increase that uh, budget allocation on free higher education so that po mas maka, maka papa enroll ng mas maraming students. Especially na marami na pong bumabalik sa, sa mga schools natin physically. Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Uh, with that, Madam Speaker, we can uh, conclude that the slashes uh, incurred by uh, the DBM sa budget ng ating mga SUCs ay uh, walang sapat na batayan. Hindi naman pwedeng yung ating mga state universities and colleges ay bigla na lamang na magbawas 
ng kanilang uh, enrollees or mag-drop ng kanilang mga estudyante para lang na uh, makapag-adjust dun sa paggalta sa kanilang mga budget, Madam Speaker. Kaya naman, uh, kaisa natin yung ating mga sponsor dun sa panawagan na dapat idagdagan ang pondo ng ating mga SUCs at gagawin natin ang uh, angkop na mga aksyon uh, dito sa Kongreso para mangyari yan. Yun lamang, Madam Speaker. Salamat sa sponsors ng budget ng ating SUCs. Maraming salamat, Your Honor. Session suspended for a few minutes. Session resume. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Bernadette Herrera for her interpolation. Thank you. I'm sorry. The Honorable Bernadette Herrera is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Excited. <laughs> Madam Speaker, thank you, uh, Mr. Sponsor. Well, I will only concentrate on the PUP. Um, my question is first, um, nagkaroon po tayo, we are PUP is constructing a building in the north wing because yung previously na tenement housing um, hindi na siya as per the national building code poses a danger na to ten thousand ten tens of thousands of students but as i understand ang inalot lang na pondo is 400 million and it needs i think it needs additional budget ano po ang mangyayari pag hindi natin na ilagay yung budget na yun considering mag face to face classes na po uh, Mr. Sponsor, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, may I be recognized? The Honorable Kahayans recognized. Opo. Uh, totoo po na uh, binawasan ang uh, pondo ng uh, PUP dahil nga po sa mula po kasi sa pagiging campus ay ginawa po uh, na maging branches ang iba sa kanila pong mga campus kung kaya nga po uh, sa kasalukuyan talagang kinukulang kulang ang uh, pondo pong ito na tama po ang uh, sinabi ng uh, kinatawan mula sa bagong henerasyon party list na kung saan uh, halos uh, pumapatak na lamang po na anim na milyong piso ang Madam budget Speaker. ng kada isang campus Madam Speaker Madam Speaker, balikan ko yung question ko. My question is about the building. Kasi ah, the may new building na kinoconstruct on PUP that's been funded 400 million. But I believe the whole bud the whole budget that it needs is around 800 million yata. So kulang. Matatapos po ba ang building na to in the absence of the budget? Considering magfa-face to face classes na, ano ang repercussion nito sa PUP students? Madam Speaker, uh, hindi po ito, inaamin po ng uh, SUCs na hindi po at ng uh, kinatawan ng PUP na hindi po ito kayang matapos. Kaya po nga, uh, nanghihingi po sila ng, bayad, ng budget. Hindi po ito kayang matapos ngayong taong ito. Magkano pa po ang kulang, Madam, uh, Madam Sponsor? Additional 500 million, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Your Speaker, Honor. Madam Sponsor, I'd like to put that on record. Otherwise, 10, 000, tens of thousands of students wala pong mapupuntahan pag nag-face-to-face -face classes ang PUP. So I hope that the Committee on Appropriation, led by the sponsors of this, would take note of it at sana po i-introduce po natin to. Then my next question is tungkol nga po dun sa because of several legislations na pinasa natin dito sa Kongreso, yung branches naging campuses. Pero yung campuses, walang personnel, walang, walang salaries at walang MOOE. So parang basically two years na na hindi gumagana as a campus. So it defeats our legislative, you know, ang pinasa nating legislation dito sa Congress, hindi nasusunod. And I think this is something that DBM should take a look at. Kasi mga pinasang batas to dito sa Kongreso, pero hindi nasusunod yung funding. 
Um, Madam Sponsor, tama po ba to? Uh, Madam Sponsor, Madam Speaker. Tama po, Madam Speaker. My dear colleague, tama po yon. Na talagang uh, uh, sa kabuuan po kasi ang pinopose po ng PUP ay 552 million para po sa kanilang uh, kabuuan ng kanilang uh, campuses and yun nga po na i-convert to branches. Kaya nga lang po, ang ibinigay lamang po ng DBM ay 252 million pesos. So, halos kalahati po ang natanggal po sa kanila, Madam Speaker, my dear colleague. Yeah, through you, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, pero may internal budget yung PUP, is that correct? Hindi talaga nila kaya? Um, hindi ko nakita yung internal cash flow ng PUP eh, because meron sariling funding ang bawat SUCs eh. So, hindi po ba enough yon? in order for the campuses to fully operate as we, as um, expected dun sa legislation na ginawa natin sa Congress. Madam Speaker, ayon po sa uh, uh, presidente ng uh, PUP, hindi po talaga kaya. Dahil nga po, uh, as I've said earlier, halos lumalabas na lamang po na 6 million po sila. Even if they use their internal funding, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor? Even they use their internal funding, Madam Speaker, my dear colleague. Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, this has been running for two years now, yung, def mm -hmm. yung deficiencies nila. So I'd, lend, I'd like to put it on record and I hope um, our colleagues will support this para naman po sa mga nag-aaral doon at maging matino at para maging makabuluhan yung mga batas na pinapasa natin dito sa Kongreso, dapat lang po siyang pondohan para naman po to sa kinabukasan ng mga bagong henerasyon. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, and I hope the Committee on Appropriations with its sponsor would also um, support this initiative. Thank you, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor. Madam Speaker, in behalf of the SUCs, we greatly appreciate the support of our colleagues, colleague uh, in uh, advocating additional budget for our SUCs and particularly to PUP. And this is a confirmation and affirmation that the BM budget allocation under the NEF for SUCs are indeed lacking and it is necessary that if we wish to upgrade the quality of higher education, we must allocate sufficient and as uh, our law compelled na dapat po sana kung ano yung sinasaad ng batas na, bini, na sinabi po ng kinatawa ng ating uh, ng bagong henerasyon party list ay kung ano po ang sinasabi ng batas, yun po sana ang nat, na susunod pagdating sa pag-aallocate ng budget ng DBM, Madam Speaker, my dear colleague. Thank you so much. Maraming salamat po, Madam Sponsor, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader, Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the next interpolator, the Honorable Mujib Hataman. Our interpolator is recognized. Congressman Hataman. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, maraming salamat. Magandang hapon po sa ating lahat. Uh, may the distinguished sponsor yield to some clarificatory questions. Gladly po, uh, Your Honor, Madam Speaker. Ang proposed NEP natin ho ay 93 billion, tama? 93.325. Tama po, uh, Your Honor, Honor, Madam Speaker. Noong 2022, ang general appropriation ay nasa 104.117 billion. Tama po, Your Honor. Madam Sa makatuwid, merong nabawas na 10.8 or more or less nasa 11 billion sa budget ng SUCs. Tama? Tama po, Your Honor. Punta ako ng Mindanao, uh, dahil puro Luzon ang tinatanong, pupunta muna ako ng Mindanao. Dahil taga Mindanao ako, uh, Distinguished Sponsor, Madam Speaker. Magkano ho ang budget ng MSU for 2023? Mindanao State University, main campus. Uh, Your Honor, ang budget po ng uh, MSU system for 2023 na nasa NEP is 5.64 billion pesos. Ang Madam main Speaker, MSU ay nasa 4.7, tama? Uh, NEP level po ng MSU... Uh, Kasi merong MSU Tawi-Tawi 676 million. Sulu State, uh, I mean Tawi, yeah. Pero ang Mindanao State University, which is under BARM, na nakabase sa Marawi City, is nasa 4.790 billion. Uh, I mean, uh, yes, uh, 3.675 billion. 
Tama. Tama po, Your Honor, Madam Speaker. Noong 2022, ang budget ng MSU ay nasa 4.790 billion, 599. Tama? Tama po, Your Honor, Madam Speaker. So, ibig sabihin ho nito, natapyasan ng 1.1 billion ang Mindanao State University. Tama po, Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Pwedeng malaman, uh, distinguished sponsor, Madam Speaker, kung anong class expense ang tinamaan ng pagtapyas ng budget ng Mindanao State University. Madam Speaker, Your Honor, ang pinakamalaking tapyas po ay nasa capital outlay. Uh, magkano ho yung sa capital outlay? Madam Speaker, may I ask for a one-minute suspension? Session suspended. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Session resumed. Congressman Matugas. Thank you po, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, out of the 1.1 billion na natapyas, ang sa capital outlay po ay 1.079 billion. 1.079 billion po, Your Honor. Madam 79 Speaker. billion, tama. 1.079. Anong klaseng proyekto itong nasa capital outlay na pinagkakagastusan noong 2022? Ang, ang andito po sa GAA 2022, Madam Speaker, Your Honor, is yung ICT modernization ng MSU High School, Main Campus, Marawi. 950 million po ito. So, 950 million. Yung iba ho? Madam Speaker, may I again request for suspension to Session suspended. secure the data. Madam Speaker. Session resumed. Congressman Matugas. Thank you, Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Uh, Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, the MSU, MSU uh, you, uh, group will submit to you po, Your Honor, yung list of expenses kung ano po yung napagastos sa nung 1.079 billion po. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, salamat, distinguished sponsor. Punta ako sa Region 9. Um, meron ho tayong anim na state universities and colleges sa Region 9. Una ho, ang Basilan State College, ang pangalawa yung Serile State College, at ang pangatlo yung Jose Rizal Memorial State University, 
Western Mindanao State University, Sambuanga Peninsula Poly Polytechnic University, at Sambuanga State College of Marine Science and Technology. Sa 2023 nepo, ang budget ng Basilan State College is 194.051 million. Tama? Tama po, Your Honor. Madam. Nung 2022, ang kanilang budget ay 233.886 million. Ang ibig sabihin ho nito, merong tapyas ng 39.835 million. Uh, 100 16 million po ang natapyas. Ay, 116 million. Lumaki nga. Tama, 116. Itong natapyas ay capital outlay rin or anong class expense? Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, nasa capital outlay din po yung natapyas. P pwedeng malaman kung anong klaseng projects ng capital outlay yung natapyas noong 2016. Uh, I mean, noong 2022. Yes, for Your Honor, uh, Madam Speaker, may I request for suspension to... Uh, secure the information that uh, the, the Honorable Interpolator requires. Session suspended. Hindi maubos. Ano nila hindi ako papaya. Sabihin ko, stop, stop. Madam Speaker. Session resume. Congress Madugas, please proceed. Thank you, Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Uh, Doon po sa 116 million, ito pong mga projects ang nawala. Uh, hindi na pondohan. Yung nursing, simulation, demonstration building, and with complete facilities and equipment, building, effective teaching and learning, methods through state-of-the-art ICT facilities, so ICT facilities, and yung proposed college library ng school. Ang miniminyo, uh, Madam Speaker, Distinguished Sponsor, itong mga proyekto na to ay natapos na ng 2022, or ito ay proyekto na ongoing? Ito po yung hindi na pondohan. So, ipopropose okay, po Pero ang nila. sinasabi ko, ho, yung 116 million na nawala sa NEP ng 2023 na meron nung 2022 at saan napunta ang pera na to at anong proyekto ang masasakripisyo dito?
Madam Speaker, um, distinguished sponsor, kaya ko nire-raise ang point na to. Nung nakaraang kongreso ho, kinonvert natin ang Basilan State College into university. In fact, yun yung susunod na tatanungin ko, kumustahin yung compliance para sa issuance ng certification. Pero habang kinoconvert natin at meron tayong ganitong panukala, lalo namang nating binabawasan ang kanilang mga pondo. Madam Speaker, Your Honor, uh, yung kinatawan po ng Basilan, uh, parang hindi pa po na nakaka-access sa Zoom kaya supposedly they will be in the Zoom. If it's okay na this representation, uh, i-masubmit natin yung ano, to you, yung list of specific projects na naapektuhan itong 116 million na natapias. Um, maraming salamat, distinguished sponsor. Alam nyo, distinguished sponsor, kahit medyo inis ako doon sa state college na yon, pero dahil kayo ang sponsor dito sa so pagbibigyan ko na ho kayo dito. And <laughs> maraming salamat po, Your Honor. Pero Madam, uh, Madam Speaker, Distinguished Sponsor, napakahalaga. Inuulit ko lang ho. Uh, gusto kong malaman ng um, DBCC. Tingin ko hindi ho to ng... But anyway, Madam Speaker, Distinguished Sponsor, magkano ho yung proposed budget ng Basilan State College for 2023? Yung proposed po ng... Uh, for, for a while po, Your Honor. Madam Speaker, Your Honor, yung proposed budget po ng Basilan State College is nasa 530 million po. So, sorry, uh, distinguished sponsor? Uh, yung nasa 500, 530 million po. Magkano ang proposed outlay nila for 2023? Madam Speaker, Your Honor, yung proposed na Capital outlay budget for 2023 is nasa 243 million po. Uh, Madam Speaker, Distinguished Sponsor, can you please submit the list of proposed outlay of the Basilan State College to this representation? Yes po, Madam Speaker, Your Honor. We will uh, comply with your request. Uh, with that, uh, Madam Speaker, Distinguished Sponsor, hindi ko na pahabain kahit marami akong tanong. Uh, pero ang gusto ko lang ho sabihin, halos lahat ng um, colleges and universities ng Mindanao ay talagang tinapyasan ang buong budget. I hope, um, distinguished sponsor, those lists of uh, tapyas ay mabibigyan ho tayo ng listahan kung ito ba ay outlay, MOE, or uh, PS um, in the immediate time. Maraming maraming salamat, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, uh, distinguished sponsor. Yes po, uh, Your Honor, Madam Speaker. Uh, kaisa niyo po ako kasi Mindanao din ako. So, bibigay po ang Committee on Appropriations ng listahan ng mga hiningi niyo. Madam Speaker, Your Honor. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Marisa Magsino. Madam Speaker, uh, Mr. Uh, Congresswoman Magsino is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Mr. Sponsor, there are no being uh, any other member of the minority who would like to interpolate the sponsor. I move to uh, terminate the interpolation of the proposed budget of the state universities and colleges. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank majority you, Paul. Leader. Madam Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the state universities and colleges. So move, Madam Speaker. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolation on the budget of the state universities and colleges. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the same is terminated. Congratulations. 
Session suspended. Thank you, thank you, Paul. Thank you. Yeah, because I'm not, I'm not gonna be here next week, and then Camille is not just here, so.
Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of Movie and Television Review and Classification Board. Is there any objection? The budget of the MTRCB will now be undergoing interpolation. The sponsor is recognized. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Roy Loyola and Representative Mercedes Alvarez. Congressman Ro Loyola and uh, Congresswoman Alvarez. So who will speak first? Congressman Loyola is in the podium. Congressman Loyola is recognized. Madam Speaker, it is my distinct honor to sponsor and defend the budget of the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board amounting to 111 million 931 pesos and I'm ready to respond to any interpolation, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize Senior Deputy Speaker, Senior Deputy Minority Leader, Representative Paul Daza. Congressman Daza is recognized for his interpolation. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, will the sponsor yield? Yes, Madam Speaker. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, some departments have large budgets, and we should review and examine them. Some offices have small budgets, but nevertheless, we should also examine and uh, and uh, ask the appropriate questions. Uh, I know that the budget of the MTRCB is, is small compared to the large departments. But uh, may I, to complete the financial story, may I ask, I, I'm aware that MTRCB charges fees for reviewing movies and similar things. Uh, what more or less is the annual revenue of the MTRCB and is that retained by MTRCB or is that remitted to the National Treasury? Madam Speaker, the annual uh, average income of the uh, MTRCB is 90 million pesos plus, and this uh, money is being turned over to the, uh, to the National Treasury. And are these funds, uh, in, in some agencies, the revenues collected is remitted, just like MTRCB. And then the agency can request with the DBM to be able to utilize the funds. Uh, would that be the same with the MTRCB? Yes, Madam Speaker. Okay. Well, that's good to hear because uh, I think the MTRCB has a lot of work to do uh, with the digitalization, online streaming. Uh, there's so many... Uh, different technology now uh, and I think there are some concerns that the MTRCB is doing a good job with movies, television and I think even radio in terms of uh, reviewing them and classifying them. Is the MTRCB able to do that with the new uh, technology like online streaming? There are some websites where you can watch movies, even on YouTube. Is that within the scope of MTRCB and is that something that's a concern for the MTRCB? Madam Speaker, MTRCB was created in 1985 pursuant to presidential decree 1986. At the time, there's no internet yet. There was no social media outfit. Therefore, this uh, social media outfit and other uh, technology is not within the power of the agency, Madam Speaker. Uh, would the sponsor agree with me that this new technology that weren't in existence when that presidential decree was uh, signed, would the sponsor agree with me that the MTRCB today should probably take, should probably have the power or authority to be able to review and classify 
those different uh, uh, new technologies now like online, social media, and all that. Uh, Madam Speaker, that's not within the power of the MTRCB, but uh, with the opinion or the uh, suggestion of the uh, distinguished uh, congressman from the first district of Northern Samar, uh, I think there is a need to amend the charter of the, of the MTRCB so that we could uh, include this uh, new technology within the power of the agency. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker, for that. So it seems that there's now gaps because of the new technology, and it seems the MTRCB would support some sort of legislation, I guess, to be able to address this particular concern. Uh, Madam Speaker, the agency MTRCB welcome the amendment of the of their charter so that they could address the uh, new technology and they become responsive to the uh, present time. Oh, Madam Speaker, uh, if the good sponsor would uh, work on this maybe possible legislation, this representation would support him. And I think that's something the House should take a look into. Uh, just my last question is, um, I had heard that the MTRCB had opened two new uh, regional offices. Is that correct? Uh, Madam Speaker, it's not uh, regional uh, offices that, was open, that were opened by MTRCB. What they opened is the uh, uh, Matalinong Panonood Center in order to expand the services and campaign of the agency in Visayas and Mindanao regions. And what would be the function of those offices? It's not only to monitor and apprehend those who violated the policy, uh, uh, belongs, uh, policy of the entire CB, but also to conduct seminars, symposium, and several learning seminars for uh, information dissemination program about the policy of the agency, Madam Speaker. Um, in the past, I think MT MTRCB has done a good job uh, with such a meager budget. You've opened two well, centers or offices are there plans to open up more nationwide? Uh, Madam Speaker, this two uh, Matalinong Panonood Center were, uh, were opened before the new chairman, Ms. Lala Soto, was appointed as chairman. And there was no plan to open more uh, Matalinong Panonood Centers in other regions or in other part of the country. Uh, Madam Speaker, I'm just concerned uh, that uh, the reason I'm asking is I think it might not be a good uh, usage of funds, um, especially with the new technology today where you can watch anything from anywhere provided you have connectivity. Uh, I think there's many things that you can do now without need of the Matalino Center. And I, I know that uh, there's been a proliferation of illegal uh, showing of you know, films and all of that. Um, and there may not even be a need to open up regional offices because I, I think you would be better served to use those funds for other things because uh, as I mentioned earlier, I think the MTRCB can actually deputize uh, the PNP, maybe even the NBI, and, and I think maybe even the LGUs in terms of enforcement for the activities that MTRCB would like to do. Um, I don't want to second guess the new MTRCB chair, 
Uh, I, I, I think those decisions were made beforehand. So I think I just wanted to highlight that maybe the new chair should reconsider uh, should there be any more moves to open up the centers which may not be necessary. Madam Speaker, I do agree with the uh, uh, opinion of the uh, distinguished uh, gentleman from the first uh, district of Northern Samar. But uh, with your respect, the said uh, Matalino Panonod Center that was opened in uh, Misaya, Mindanao, not only monitoring, but also they uh, conduct seminars and uh, symposium in order to disseminate the different programs of the agency. Not to mention the uh, enlightening the, the parents and the uh, adults about the importance of the ratings and classification being conducted by the agency. Uh, Madam Speaker, we will consider, we will uh, submit to the board the opinion of uh, this, uh, of the gentleman from the Northern Samar the moment the board meets this coming month. Uh, thank you uh, to my esteemed colleague for that. Um, because the budget of the, MT the MTRCV is not that big, uh, if I may just kindly suggest, if there were trainings or seminars or films that you'd like to share to the communities, families, uh, we might be better served just doing it online. Uh, I think if you proceed in putting up more offices all over the Philippines, as I mentioned earlier, it might not be a good utilization of funds. And second, marami po magtatampo sa inyo. Because when we heard you open in Cebu, why not in Tacloban or in Katarma, Northern Samar? Why Cebu? Uh, if there's tyranny of Manila, there's tyranny of the big cities. There's 81 provinces. Uh, and I don't think you'll be able to satisfy the request of all the members of the House to put up Matalino centers. But if you put up a website and you have a good IT, you could share that nationwide and do what you want to do with, that, with those uh, offices. Um, I would just make that a manifestation, uh, Madam Speaker. I thank my distinguished colleague in, in yielding to me. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Speaker. The opinion or suggestion of the, the uh, gentleman from 1st District of Northern Samar will be taken into consideration uh, uh, when, the, when the board will meet this coming months. Majority. And, uh, I would like also to make... Uh, a short uh, reply to the uh, opinion of the of the uh, our good uh, gentleman from Northern Samar that uh, in some places in Mindanao and Bisaya there is no available internet. That's the reason why the uh, agents assigned to the uh, Matalinong Panonood Center have to go to those remote, remote areas to explain the policy and programs of the agency, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize Honorable Franz Castro. Congresswoman Castro is recognized. Um, thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Um, distinguished sponsor. So my question is about, at this to confirm the comparison of the GAA 2022 and NEP 2023. Tama po ba ito? On, in, in GAA 2022, you have a budget of 40,093,000. Ngayon pong NEP 2023, you have 111,931,000. Uh,
Madam Speaker, for 2022, the personal services amounted, amounting to 42 million 607,000. But for the year 2023, we were given 47,000, 47 For maintenance and other operating expenses for the year 2022, it's only 64,393,000. And for the year 2023, it's about 64,393,000. The budget of the NTRCB MTR was decreased by almost 7 million for the year 2022. Okay, so uh, Madam Speaker, distinguished sponsor, what would be affected po dito sa decrease ng budget? Wala po naman maapektuhan, Madam Speaker. Wala lang capital outlay, ah, okay. uh, Madam Speaker. So, walang capital outlay. So, uh, hindi na kayo magre-request to augment your budget? Madam Speaker, ang MTRCB po ay pwede ko mag-request sa DBM, but they have to submit documents and it has to be approved by by DBM, Madam Speaker. Okay, so uh, with that, ma Madam Speaker, no, I will support no the, um, the augmentation of the budget of the MTRCB. Another question, uh, Madam Speaker, um, the proliferation of violent and sexy films uh, in Netflix and other <laughs> and other ano no um, foreign um, provider ng itong mga films. So. As a background, uh, the proliferation of violent and sexy films with the themes that are borderline softcore, pornography is streaming on various online platforms like the Netflix and Viva Max has become an alarming issue. A, ma a major concern is the fact that these films cast young actresses being portrayed as a sexual objects. The films also feature scenes that romanticize and criticize violence against women, particularly physical abuse and rape. This kind of media content portraying women as sexual objects reinforce a culture of misogyny and sexism in the country and might lead to yet another spike in the, in the cases of violence against women and children. According to Section 3C of the Presidential Decree Number 1986, Series of 1985, it is the mandate of MTRCB to ensure that all movie television content to approve and disapprove, delete objectionable portions from and or prohibit the, imp the importation, exportation, production, copying, distribution, sale, lease, exhibition, or television broadcast of motion pictures, television programs, and publicly materials Subject of the preceding paragraph, which is in the judgment of the board applying the contemporary Filipino culture values as a standard, are objectionable for being immoral, indecent, contrary to the law, and good customs, injury to the prestige of the Republic of the Philippines or its people, or with a dangerous tendency to encourage the commission, on viol uh, the commission of violence or of wrong or crime. So, Mr. Sponsor, uh, Madam Speaker, the proliferation of violent sexy films with the themes that are borderline softcore, pornography streaming in various online platforms has become an alarming. So, may we know the comment or, um, or the reaction of the MTRCB as regards to this? Diba? Hindi lang naman po uh, local films or television ang monitor natin. So, are you monitoring monitoring din po yung mga Netflix at saka yung mga Viva Max? Madam Speaker, the agency is monitoring all those uh, uh, kind of uh, violence against women and all kinds of uh, movie programs that uh, uh, violent against women and children uh, being uh, shown in the 
social media, uh, and other technology being used right now. But the problem, the MTRCB has no power over this uh, kind of social media output. That is the reason why, uh, Madam Speaker, the MTRCB is uh, seeking the help of this August Chamber to amend the law so that uh, this uh, kind of uh, exhibition in the using the modern technology can be covered by the agency. Um, so, hindi, ibig sabihin, um, Madam Speaker, so hindi po na namomonitor itong sa mga Netflix and Viva Max? Namomonitor po, Madam Speaker. Ang problema po, wala po silang kapangyarihan. Hindi po sakop ng kanilang uh, mandate. Kasi nung ginawa po, nung itinayo ang MTRCB in 1985, wala pa po tayong Netflix, wala pa po tayong internet, wala pa po tayong digital live streaming po po. Ayun, uh, Kaya kailangan na kailangan po, Madam Speaker, na ating maamendahan ng batas na ito para makatugon sa panahon. So, ayan po, nakakalungkot po, uh, Madam Speaker, doon sa uh, sinasabi nating Presidential Decree na, na, 1986, uh, matagal na to, no? Almost, ano na to? Uh, ilan taon na to? 30, more than 30 years na itong batas na ito. Um, pero wala naman pong sinasabi sa batas na ito as regards to the social media. So, ito pong mga Netflix na ito, tsaka yung Viva Max, ay uh, ma ma maano lang naman natin to, makikita lang po ng ating mga viewers through the social media. And later on nga, magkakaroon na tayo ng, ano no, uh, pinasa na natin yung VAT uh, sa pag-ano nito, sa panunood nitong mga Netflix at other um, uh, foreign provider. So, um, so, we need to ano no we need to amend this uh this uh this law or this presidential decree to include all the social media including the Netflix and Viva uh, Viva Max uh, Ma Madam Speaker. So sa tingin natin so makakatulong ba ang ating sponsor just in case that this representation would ano no would amend this an uh, presidential decree to include Itong, ano, no, itong mga uh, media platform na nasa mga social media po. Definitely, Madam Speaker, as a matter of fact, the MTRCB is already drafting the uh, bill that will cover the uh, social media output platform being used now so that uh, they can uh, monitor and uh, and apprehend those who will violate the okay. policy of the agency. So uh, I'm willing to be, ano, no, to be author, one of the authors of that ano, draft um, bill um, so that we can, ano, we can um, update this, uh, this ano, presidential decree. Uh, for my last manifestation, Madam Chair, this issue of proliferation of softcore sexy films is at most importance considering that this kind of media content Portraying women as sexual objects reinforces a culture of misogyny and sexism in the country. And it might lead to yet another spike of cases of violence against women. Iron ironically, this is also reminiscence of the bomba films were used in the distant, distract the Filipinos from the crisis during the martial law era. So uh, with that, uh, Madam Speaker, uh, good sponsor, I end my interpolation. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Congresswoman Castro. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Vien Bienido Avante. Congressman Avante is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. May I be allowed to please just make a short manifestation? Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor. Um, since 2004, I have been the nemesis of the MTRCB <laughs> because of moral corruption. What uh, Congresswoman Franz Castro 
just said is very true. During the committee hearing of the ABS-CBN, I raised that issue. I raised the issue of pornography. I raised the issue of, uh, uh, of sexual shows on television. And I said that we would like to have television networks that are more family-oriented than commercial oriented. But today, we have a new chairman of the MTRCB who is a conservative, committed Christian. Like her mother, I do not know about her father. <laughs> and because of this, <laughs> Madam Speaker, I will be supporting the MTRCV because I know that there shall be drastic changes that will be happening. I am also refiling my bill, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, to include, among others, censorship provisions, not only classifying movies and television shows, but censorship so that maaari na po natin pigilin o pigilan ang dami ng mga pornographic and sexual scenes not only in the movies but also in television. May I have the uh, agreement uh, on my proposal, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor. Madam Speaker, we are very glad, we are very happy to accept the proposal of Congressman Benny Abante. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize Minority Leader, Representative Nonoy Libanan. Minority Leader. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, there being no other interpolators on the part of the minority, I hereby move to terminate the uh, budget uh, interpolation on the MTRCB. So move, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget of deliberation of the Movie and Television Review and Classification Board. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the MTRCB. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The interpolations on the proposed budget of the MTRCB are hereby terminated. Congratulations. Session suspended.
Ahaya no voy. Congratulations. Sí, sí, sí. Session resumed. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Government's Co Governance Commission for GOCCs. The budget of the Governance Commission for GOCCs is now to be considered. Welcome to Justice Quiroz. And the Chair recognizes the sponsor, Congresswoman Kimbo. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I am pleased to sponsor the budget of the Governance Commission for Government-Owned or Controlled Corporations, amounting to 245.702 million pesos for fiscal year 2023. I am now ready to answer questions from our colleagues. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Bernadette Herrera for her interpolation. Congresswoman Herrera is recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, magandang hapon, Madam Sponsor. I just have a very few, um, actually one question lang naman. Pakita ko lang yung slides lang just so um, mas malinaw. We have top 15 GOCC contributors na nagko-contribute ng 122.7 billion in dividends. Then other GOCCs that contribute less than 1 billion, na 37.9. So may total contribution sila na 160.6 billion. But there are, we out of more than 200 GOCCs on record, 66 individual entities have received subsidy from the national government over the last two decades. Nung 2021 GAA, ang total appropriation natin sa, sa 44 GOCCs is 148, next please, 148.189. So parang kung may nakocontribute yung top contributors ng 160, parang sila din yung nagbibigay dun sa, na, sa binibigyan natin ng subsidy na 148.1 billion. Next slide, please. Ayun. Next. So ito yung 44 GOCCs na sinasubsidize natin amounting to 148 billion. Ngayon, ang tanong ko lang po is, ano po ba ang plano ng GOCC, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, since nasa governance sila? Um, next slide, last slide please. When it comes to, hindi po ba dapat nagre-recommend sila? Ano yung dapat i-privatize? Alin ang dapat isarado na na GOCC? Alin ang dapat emerger na GOCCs with similar mandates? And ano yung dapat i-decouple? Yung mga conflicting mandates of GOCCs like yung PPA, kailangan ihiwalay natin yung regulation at saka yung um, operations, the same as CAAP and PAGCOR. So ito po yung gusto kong malaman since we have a new administration, does GCG have a six-year development plan para naman yung GOCCs mas lalo pang makakontribute kasi out of the 200 GOCCs, 15 lang talaga yung nagko-contribute ng malaki in terms of dividends. So maybe how can GCG make it more efficient para naman mas makatulong siya sa national coffers ng ating bansa? Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor. Madam Speaker, um, marami pong tanong. Pero una sa lahat, um, paliwanag natin na ang tinatanggap po na subsidiya ng ating GOCCs is usually to fund the national program na naka-embed dito sa operations ng ating GOCC. So halimbawa po, sa PhilHealth, malaki po ang natatanggap na subsidiya mula sa government dahil po ang main operations ng GOCC is the National Health Insurance Program. Yan ang dahilan kung bakit 100.2 billion pesos ang pinopropose na subsidy na tatanggapin ng PhilHealth from the national government. Now, there are certain GOCCs na maliit lang ang tatanggapin ng subsidiya dahil maliit lang ang component ng national program sa kanilang overall uh, programs. Ngayon, pagdating sa mandato, I believe that was one of the questions, uh, Madam Speaker. So let me just read Section 5 of the law that created the, G the GCG. So ang uh, main mandate is basically the GCG is a central advisory monitoring and oversight body with authority to formulate, implement, and coordinate policies to be known as a GCG. 
which shall be attached to the office of the president. So yun, tama po kayo na usually ang uh, nagiging desisyon ng uh, GCG sa kanilang pag-monitor at pagsubaybay ng ating GOCCs ay number one, ay uh, kailangan ba siyang i-reorganize? Number two, baka naman wala na talaga siyang pag-asa in terms of generating revenues. Baka wala na siyang relevance pagdating sa kanyang mandato, wala na siyang i-contribute sa ating national agenda, and therefore, baka kailangan na talagang i-abolish, or pwede rin naman, katulad ng nabanggit ninyo, yung salitang decoupling. So, ibig sabihin, tulad ng PAGCOR, may isang recommendation to decouple the regulatory aspect of its mandate versus yung kanilang pag-operate ng uh, casinos. So, ang sinasabi, Hindi naman pwedeng regulator ka, but at the same time, you are a regulated entity. So, yun po ang uh, general na ginagawa. Pagdating po sa six-year plan, eh, bago lang po ang ating uh, mga opisyales ng GCG, uh, napakalamig pa ng kanilang upuan, pero palagay ko, um, in sync na rin, or uh, in sync sa, sa eight point socioeconomic agenda ng ating Pangulo na ang time frame ay six years. In sync din sila kasi sa Philippine Development Plan na ang time frame ay six years. E malamang sa lama, malamang ay magproproduce din ng isang six-year development plan ang ating bagong opisyales ng GCG, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, thank you for that. Actually, kaya ko nga sinasabi that there are GOCCs like PhilHealth na talagang sinasubsidize natin na tama lang. Pero meron ding mga certain GOCCs that's bleeding also our country na dapat si GCG, tinitignan nila isa-isa. And sana mag-recommend sila sa atin dito sa Kongreso, ano ba yung dapat ng isara na GOCC? Ano yung mga GOCC na dapat i-privatize? Ano yung mga GOCC na dapat i-merger kasi pare-parehas ng functions? Or ano yung mga GOCC na yun nga i-decoupling? Katulad ng... Um, sabi mo nga, PAGCOR, ako may build din ako on PPA. So these are things that I am looking forward na magpadala ng plano sa atin. Because so far, it's Congress initiative, yung mga pag-file ng bill, ng PAGCOR, ng PPA. But since it's GCG, who's on top of all the GOCCs, I hope I can, we can look forward to them recommending to us para maging mas efficient ang lahat ng GOCCs at maalis na natin yung mga bleeding GOCCs that's causing deficiency sa ating gobyerno. So, Madam Speaker, uh, Madam Sponsor, yung lamang po, I hope the good sponsor can also um, tell the GCG, to kahit mainit, medyo hindi pa sila mainit sa kanilang upuan, I'm sure they all can already identify which GCGs need to already be closed down or merged or privatized or decoupled. So, yun lamang po. Um, Madam, Madam Sponsor. Yes, um, Madam Speaker, just for your information, ang GCG talagang minaman-manan ang bawat isa. So meron talagang tinatawag na scorecard ang bawat GOCC. Talagang tinitignan nila ano ba ang kakayahan nito na mag-contribute ng dividend sa ating uh, gobyerno. So rest assured, um, ginagawa po nila yan. And number two, pagdating sa recommendations for abolition, privatization, and decoupling, meron po yan taon-taon. Sa ngayon, um, if you wish to know, merong isa na nire-recommenda for abolition for 2022. Total of five actually from 2013 to 2022. For privatization, total of five din po from 2012 up to today. And for decoupling, meron isa um, since 2017. So, yun po. And number two, dun po sa sinasabi po ninyo na sana mag-report sa atin. Uh, well, unfortunately, baka kailangan natin siguro amyandahan ng kanilang charter. Kasi pag binabasa po natin, um, it's very clear here, at tayo pong gumawa nitong batas na to, babasahin ko po. Upon determination by the GCG that it is to the best interest of the state that a GOCC should be reorganized, merged, streamlined, abolished, or privatized. It shall, and I'll mention the relevant provision, recommend to the President the abolition or privatization of the GOCC and upon the approval of the President, implement such abol abolition or privatization unless the President designates another agency to implement such abolition or privatization. So, Unfortunately, dito, sa sinulat natin na batas, the recommendation is to the President. However, gayon paman, 
very important yes. na magpadala din sila sa atin ng report. At loud and clear naman ang mensahe ninyo, Representative Beach Herrera. Loud and clear and uh, yes, sila po ay magsasubmit sa yes. atin. Thank you, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor. Actually, pwede naman nilang i-copy furnish din tayo because legislation din naman, through legislation din naman yung gagawin na yun. At kung aayawin naman to ng Pangulo, pwede naman niyang i-veto ito in the event that she, he doesn't recommend such abolishment, decoupling, or um, clue or merger. Um, sorry, sabi ko sandali lang ko, but um, additional lang, narinig ko yung scorecard. Totoo ba, Madam Speaker, may mga nagre-report lang? Yes, may scorecard, pero parang yung, yung scorecard, ang nagsasubmit din yung GOCC. Kung ano yung scorecard na passing nila. For example, sabihin, ito yung target namin, eh dito yung scorecard. So, syempre, ang isasubmit sa atin ng GOCC ay yung scorecard na kaya lang nila. So, hindi rin madedetermine nung, nung GCG kung talagang pumasa sila. And this is, um, sana po maisubmit sa atin at ma-explain sa atin who determines kung ano yung scorecard. Because sa nareport sa amin, ang nagdedetermine ng scorecard is the GOCC itself. I believe that the scorecard dapat ang nagbibigay is GCG. I just want to know if, if this is true, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor. Madam Speaker, of course, um, Rep. Herrera is absolutely correct. Hindi dapat manggagaling doon sa kinuskoran ang score. And alam din ang GCG na ganon, which is why hindi nila pinapascore ang GOCC sa kanilang sarili. What they do, of course, is they require submissions from the GOCCs. Pagka-submit sa kanila, pina-validate. At kapag na-validate ang submissions na yon, saka po nila kinocompute ang score. So nanggagaling mismo sa GCG ang, uh, ang mga scores. At dapat naman po. Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, nakalimutan ko lang kung ano ang GOCC na yon, But I know for sure na sila ang nag-set ng target nila. At yun ang sinunod ng, GOC, ng, ng GCG. I will submit that for the record, Madam Speaker, hindi ko lang maalala at the top of my head. But it happens. And siguro gusto ko na lang i-remind si GCG, huwag po sana natin gawin ito dahil it defeats the purpose of the scorecard. Um, but I will submit para po may evidence naman po ako dito sa sinasabi ko. So yun lamang po, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, thank you very much. And um, I just really ask for GCG to copy furnish um, the, this Congress so that we can do the necessary actions. Kasi kung since 2017, may recommendation for closure, may recommendation for merger, may recommendation for decoupling. Di sana po matagal na po nating nasarayan kung nagbigay ng kopya sa Kongreso. Yun lamang po. Maraming salamat, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor. Julie noted, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Raul Manuel for his interpolation. Congressman Manuel is recognized for his interpolation. Good evening, Madam Speaker. Para sa ating uh, budget deliberation para sa Governance Commission on GOCC, sa una ko pong tanong, Madam Speaker, ay uh, tungkol sa compensation and uh, position classification system. Noong uh, January 14 ng taong ito, ang uh, GCG ay nag-issue ng implementing guidelines para sa compensation and position classification system. Uh, this allowed the different agencies concerned to start the process of complying with this system na in-issue noong uh, October 2021. Uh, Maari po bang uh, mabigyan tayo ng listahan ng lahat ng mga GOCC na meron ng ganitong uh, plano, yung uh, Compensation and uh, Position Classification Plan. At uh, kaakibat din nun, Madam Speaker, yung mga GOCC na nakapag-comply na at yung mga GOCC na nasa proseso pa lang ng pag-comply. Sa ngayon po, Madam Speaker, 60 out of 66 GOCCs have submitted complete CPCS requirements and uh, they had been issued their respective CPCS authorizations. And of course, willing na willing po ang GCG na ibigay ang listahan na yan, Madam Speaker. Yes, uh, we request, Madam Speaker, that uh, our office will be furnished uh, a copy of such list. Uh, sunod po, Madam Speaker, may mga ulat na Merong ilang mga GOCC na may mga empleyado na merong complaints tokol sa wide disparity in wages among employees and loss of benefits based on their uh, CBAs 
kung mag-take effect na itong compensation and the position classification system. Maaari itong mag-demoralize ng mga empleyado. Uh, ano po ang uh, mga hakbang ng GCG para ma-address ang ganitong complaints ng mga GOCC employees? Madam Speaker, um, a uh, basic principle that they follow is yung tinatawag na non-diminution of benefits. So, um, hindi, hindi po mangyayari na bababa ang uh, benefits moving forward. Uh, we will hold on to that uh, assurance uh, from our uh, sponsor, Madam Speaker. So, uh, that would be all for this uh, interpolation. Uh, thank you, Madam Sponsor. Salamat, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Gabriel Bordado, Jr. Congressman Bordado is recognized for his interpolation. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Madam uh, Sponsor, I will just deliver a very short uh, manifestation uh, Madam Speaker, a few months ago, the President of the National Irrigation Administration Employees Association, Mr. Ed Yu, uh, approached me and requested me to reach out to the top officials of the governance for GOCCs. But the officials, despite my uh, uh, request, did not respond. Only the executive assistant, Madam Speaker, uh, talked to me. So I am hoping, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, that the new set of officials of the governance for GOCC will be more lenient and uh, be helpful to common citizens like us. Thank you very much. Madam Speaker, Ikinalulungkot ng representasyon na ito ang uh, nangyari kay Representative uh, Bordado. At uh, may commitment naman po tayo sa ating uh, bagong pamunuan ng GCG na hindi na ito mangyayari. And of course, due respect will be accorded to your office and to any ordinary citizen for that matter, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Ed Salagman for his interpolation. Congressman Lagman is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Many, will the distinguished sponsor yield? Yes, uh, yes, Madam Speaker. Many GOCCs are enfranchised. In other words, they are created by law. Is that correct? Yes, Madam Speaker. And it is basic that what is created by law can only be abolished by Congress. Is that correct? Madam Speaker, but there is this concept of delegation of power. So, there are two tests for delegation of power. There's the completeness test, sufficiency of standards test. As long as those tests are met, then we can talk about a proper delegation. And in the case of the GCG, it would appear that there is such a proper delegation of power from the legislature to the GCG. And that's a reason for why the G GCG has the power to abolish. GOCCs, Madam Speaker. Under the 
law creating the GCG, there are no standards. As a matter of fact, Congress cannot delegate to the President its power to legislate. Under no situation should that be done. That is why I filed a case before the Supreme Court challenging the constitutionality of the creation of the GCG on very important grounds. One, it usurped the power of the Constitutional Commission, which is a Civil Service Commission. And also, there was undue delegation of legislative powers. I have not received any decision on this case, which has been pending for most probably 10 years or more. But I was informed that there was already a decision. Is that correct? Yes, Madam Speaker. And uh, when was the, the, the decision rendered? The decision, Madam Chair, was, Madam Speaker, was issued November 3, 2020. And can you have a copy of that decision? Yes, Madam Speaker, and for the information of our uh, distinguished colleague, the Supreme Court upheld all provisions of the GCG Act, Madam Speaker. Uh, and yes, we will gladly provide a copy. Uh, most probably, if the uh, GCG has a copy, yes. then most probably I could get a copy now. Yes, Madam Speaker. And I don't recall that I received a copy of that decision of the Supreme Court. But in any event, in any event, uh, I would like to protect the power of Congress, the power of this House, that what we create, it is only the Congress, this House, can dismantle. And uh, to my mind, uh, the president, despite the recommendation of the GCG, cannot abolish corporations, GOCCs, which have been created by law. It is only Congress which can abolish what it has created. With that manifestation, Madam Chair, uh, Madam Speaker, I uh, terminate my short intervention. But I would like to get a copy of that decision. Because if I have not received that, then uh, as far as I'm concerned, I am not uh, prohibited from filing the necessary motion for reconsideration. Thank you, Madam Speaker. And if I may, Read Section 5A of the GOCC Governments, Governance Act of 2011. These are six items which I believe would make the Act pass the sufficiency of standards tests. It gives very specific situations under which abolition can be justified. For instance, the function is no longer relevant to the state. The functions are duplicate or unnecessarily overlaps with another government agency. The GOCC is not producing desired outcomes. The GOCC is dormant or non-operational. The GOCC is involved in an activity best carried out by the private sector. And lastly, the nature of operations of any group of GOCCs require consolidation under a holding company. So with that, Madam Speaker, I thank the distinguished colleague. Uh, let me just reiterate that under no circumstance can the Congress delegate to the President or to any other agency the power to legislate. And uh, we should be zealous in protecting that power. Thank you. Madam Salamat, Speaker. Madam Speaker. Distinguished colleague.
Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Gabriel Bordado Jr. Congressman Bordado is recognized. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, there being no other member in the minority who wishes to interpolate, I move to terminate the period of interpolation and debate for the budget of the Governance Commission for GOCC. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, on the part of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Governance Commission for GOCCs. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the government, Governance Commission on GOCCs. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The interpolations on the proposed budget of such agency are hereby terminated. Congratulations, Justice Quiroz. Session suspended.
Session resumed. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of Metropolitan Manila Development Authority. There is a motion to consider the budget of the MMDA. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is hereby approved. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Stella Luz Kimbo and Representative Mary Mitz Kahayon Uy. Congresswoman Kimbo and Kahayon are recognized, but Congresswoman Kimbo is on the podium, so please proceed, Congresswoman Kimbo. Madam Speaker, I am pleased to sponsor the budget of the Metro Manila Development Authority, amounting to 4.388 billion pesos for fiscal year 2023. I'm now ready to answer questions, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Bonifacio Basito. Congressman Bosita is recognized. Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, sa ating pong mga kapatid na public servants, magandang gabi po sa ating lahat. Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, pwede po bang malaman kung kailan nag-assume ang MMDA Acting Chairman as Head of the MMDA? Madam Speaker, August 4, 2022. Ibig sabihin po, bago lamang siya as Acting Chairman of the MMDA. Tama. Madam Chair, Madam Speaker, and Madam Sponsor, may ilang mga informations po ako dito, technical details, and uh, dahil nararamdaman ko po na ngayon ay gabi na, Hindi na po ako magtatanong, parang validation na lamang po ito. At sa bandang huli po, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, doon na lamang po ako magtatanong. <coughs> Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, base po sa aking nakalap na details, ang MMDA po ay may kabuoang bilang na 8,895 personnel. Totoo po ba ito, Madam Sponsor, Madam Speaker? Yes, Madam Speaker. Totoo po ba na out of 8,895 personnel of MMDA, there are 2,596 personnel under job orders or 29%? Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor. Yes, Madam Speaker. Out of 2,596 under job orders, is it true? Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, na there are 1,308 traffic auxiliaries or traffic enforcers or 50% of 2,000, more than 50% of 2,596 job orders. Yes, Madam Speaker, that is correct. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Sponsor, Madam Speaker. Base rin po sa nakalap kong detalye, ang mga traffic enforcers po, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, ay tumatanggap ng 531 pesos per day. Is it true, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor? Madam Speaker, it is 545 pesos per day. Thank you, Madam Sponsor. Is it true, ah, by the way, Madam, sponsor, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, base po sa minimum wage para sa mga nagtatrabaho sa National Capital Region, ito po ay may halaga na 570 pesos per day. Sa so madaling salita po, Madam, speak, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, kulang po ang ibinibigay ng MMDA Authority sa kanilang mga traffic enforcers Madam Sponsor, Madam Speaker, as per Commission on Audit and Department of Budget and Management, Joint Circular Number 2, 
series of 2020. 2020, paragraph 11.5. Ang job order po ng mga trabador ng MMDA ay dapat po ay tumatanggap ng sweldo na kapareho ng lowest salary grade na tinatanggap po ng mga kawani ng ating pamahalan which is around 600 pesos per day. Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, base po sa aking nabanggit, malaki po ang nawawalang sweldo na dapat ay binibigay sa ating mga kawani ng MMDA, particular po sa mga traffic enforcers. Maliban po sa nabanggit na tinatanggap na sweldo, na maliit at napakababang sweldo ng MMDA enforcers under job orders, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, pwede po bang malaman kung mayroon pa silang ibang benepisyo na natatanggap sa pamunuan ng MMDA? Marami pa pong dagdag benefits ang ating traffic enforcers. Kasama po dito ay ang free brew life insurance. Pangalawa po ang uh, heat stroke break of 15 minutes during summer months. Pangatlo, no night shift duty after 10 p.m. Pangapat po meron silang provisions of relectorized vests. Panglima po, financial assistance in case of accident or death not exceeding 50,000 pesos. Pang ani po gratuity benefit of 10,000 pesos every December. Yan po ang kanilang dagdag benefits po. Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, hindi nabanggit po ng Madam Sponsor natin nakabilang dito ang maternity leave, paternity leave, parental leave for solo parents and others. At alam po natin, na under job order, talaga namang hindi nila matatanggap yan. Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, maaari po bang malaman kung more or less ilang taon na silang naninilbihan bilang traffic enforcers under job orders, more or less? Bago ko po sagutin yung tanong, Madam Speaker, pwede ko lang pong idagdag na ang dahilan din kung bakit ang kanilang sinasahod ay mas mababa kumpara sa 570 pesos minimum wage ay dahil itong bagong rate na to ay naging effective noong June 4, 2022 lamang. Prior to that, ang minimum wage was exactly 545. So it might seem like um, talagang sila po ay uh, lantarang <coughs> naglalabag ng uh, batas but actually po they are transitioning naman po. So ngayon po, ang pecha ngayon ay September 21, so, asahan ng ating traffic enforcers under JO na nag-transition po tayo, nag a adjust na po tayo um, soon. Yun po. Um, Doon sa tanong nyo po, <coughs> ah yes, ang dun sa tanong nyo po kung gaano katagal, ang maximum po is 10 years na po silang JO. Yes po. Thank you, Madam Sponsor, Madam Speaker. Madam, Spons Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, ayaw po ninyo, nabasahin ko po <coughs> ang paragraph 5.4 dito po sa joint circular ng Commission and Audit and Department of Budget Management. Sabi po dito, job order refer refers to piecework, pakyaw or intermittent or emergency jobs such as clearing of debris on the roads, canals, waterways, etc. after natural man-made disasters, occurrences, and other manual trades and craft services such as car carpentry, plumbing, electrical, and the like. These jobs are of short duration and for a specific piece of work. Basi po dito, Mr. S Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, may paglabag po tayo dito. Malinaw-malinaw po 
na hindi dapat sila nagtra- tar- nagtatrabaho under job orders. Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, entresado po tayo para sa moral and welfare ng ating mga traffic enforcers ng MMDA dahil kapareho po natin sila na sila ay mga public servants. Sila po ang frontliners ng MMDA. Nagtatrabaho sa ilalim ng sikat ng araw at madalas ay nauulanan. Nasa peligro din po ang kanilang kalusugan dahil nalalanghap nila ang usok ng mga sasakyan. At nasa peligro din po ang kanilang buhay dahil sa maaring may nagagalit sa kanila ng mga motorista. Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, Maliban po sa annual budget being provided for MMDA, magkano po kaya more or less ang collections ng MMDA from traffic violators, more or less, annually? Madam Speaker, Madam Speaker, for 2023, ang inaasahan pong collection from fines and penalties is 150 million 723,000. Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, basi po sa aking nakalap. Anyway, may pandemya tayo at iba ang sist. Situation natin ngayon, but for the information of everybody, ang nakalap ko pong information is more or less 200 million pesos per year. Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, magkano po kaya ang natatanggap ng MMDA na suporta mula sa local government units within Metro Manila? Ang inaasahan po para sa taong 2023, Madam Speaker, 5% LGU contribution ay ay 4.4 sorry 4 billion 474 million 959,000, Madam Speaker. Salamat po, Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor. Short ang nakuha kong information. It's around 3.4 billion pesos only. Salamat. Madam po. Speaker, that figure refers to 2022. I confirm that figure for 2022, but for 2023, it is 4.4 billion. Madam Thank Speaker. you po, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor. Pwede po bang malaman magkano po ang internal revenue allotment sa MMDA more or less, Madam Sponsor and Madam Speaker? Para po magkatugma tayo, titignan na lang natin ang 2022. Yes. Yes. Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, close to the figure na nakuha ko po, it's around 700 million pesos annually. Pasi po dito, sa napag-usapan at nabanggit na halaga, at pasi po dito, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, sa paragraph 11.1 ng kaparehong circular ng COA and DBM, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, aware po ba ang MMDA <coughs> na ang job orders ng kanilang traffic enforcers and other personnel will expire on December 31, 2022? Yes, Madam Speaker. Thank you po, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor. Dahil po dyan, una, naipakita po natin 
na hindi tama at with all due respect, may tuturing na illegal ang kalasalukuyan sistema na umiiral na kung saan under job orders ang ating mga personnel, particular ang traffic enforcer sa MMDA. At ito po ay mag expire ang kanilang kontrata this coming December 31, 2022. Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, ang tanong ko po ay ito. Ipagpapatuloy po ba ng uh, MMDA Authority yung nakasanayan nilang practice na more or less 10 years na na nagsasuffer ang ating mga traffic enforcers sa MMDA? Pero bago ko po madinig ang kasagutan ng Madam Sponsor, Madam Speaker, Gusto ko lamang pong ipaalala sa lahat na ang butihing acting chairman ng MMDA ay bagong luklok pa lamang. Bagaman at kailangan ko po na itanong ito sa kanya para sa interes ng mga kapatid nating public servants na traffic enforcers ng MMDA. Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, ulitin ko po, ipagpapatuloy po ba ng MMDA Authority ang nakasanayang sistema na kung saan ay hindi na ibibigay ang tamang sweldo at mga benepisyo para sa mga kapatid nating traffic enforcers ng MMDA? Madam Speaker, kahit po bagong appoint lang ang ating chairman ay uh, napakasipag po. Yes, sir. Napakahusay at very dedicated sa kanyang trabaho. Sa ngayon po, very aware naman po ang MMDA dito sa Joint Circular Number 2. At ang katunayan, as recommended by the CSC, ay kailangan ma-face in na unti-unti ang mga JOs into regular plantilla positions. At sa ngayon po, um, doon po sa 1,411 na JO Traffic Enforcers noong 2021, 144 of those had been casualized and 46 were promoted to permanent positions. Sa ngayon po, meron po tayong ongoing na promotions para sa ating mga JOs at 58 po ay naghihintay na lamang po ng CSC validation. Ang ibig sabihin na lang po is final step na po bago po sila ma-regularize. So, ang ibig sabihin po, very aware ang ating MMDA sa Joint Circular Number 2 at ginagawa ang lahat para makapag-comply sila doon. Ang problema, of course, is the end of the day, budget pa rin talaga. So, and at the same time, meron ding limitation yung tinatawag na authorized plantilla positions. Dahil sa totoo lang, yung authorized plantilla positions na unfilled sa ngayon ay hindi po sapat para ma-absorb ng buong-buo ang ating traffic enforcers na higit isang libo na naka-JO po sa ngayon, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Madam Sponsor, maraming salamat po. Nais ko lamang pong banggitin na with all due respect, Madam Sponsor, yung pong nabanggit po ninyo ay maaring may katagalan pa at walang katiyakan. With all due respect, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor, ang nakikita ko po dito, at ito po ay ikinonsulta ko sa Department of Labor and Employment, ang isa sa madali na maari nating magawa para maproteksyonan ang moral and welfare ng ating mga traffic enforcers sa MMDA kung maari po sila ay under contractor or service provider. Ito po ay nabanggit ko lamang, hindi para kung ano paman para lamang po ipaalala sa mga kinaukulan na dapat po nating bigyan ng mabilis na aksyon ang kalagayan ng mga kapatid nating <coughs> traffic enforcers under job orders. May last question na lamang po ako, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor. Matagal ko na pong napapansin na masipag at laging nandyan sa public places, si Colonel Nebrija. Siya po ay retired Colonel. Hindi ko po alam kung yung po bang kanyang position ngayon ay commensurate 
sa kanyang qualifications being retired military officer with masteral degrees Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor Yung po bang position niya ngayon ay commensurate sa kanyang qualification Yes Yes Madam Speaker Madam Speaker Madam Sponsor May balak po ba kayo na siya ay bigyan ng mas maganda at mas mataas na position? Commensurate doon sa kanyang qualification? Madam Speaker, kaka-promote pa lang po ni Colonel Nabria. Palagay ko ay hindi pa. Yun lamang po, Madam Speaker and Madam Sponsor. Maraming maraming salamat po sa ating lahat. Mabuhay. Salamat po, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize Honorable Representative Bernadette Herrera. Congresswoman Herrera is recognized. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, um, on the part of the minority, there being no more other member who wish to interpolate um, the budget of MMDA, I move that we terminate the interpolation and debate on the proposed budget of the MMDA. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, on behalf of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget of the liberation of the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority. There is a joint motion to terminate the interpolations on the proposed budget of the MMDA. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The interpolations on the proposed budget of the MMDA are hereby Terminated. Congratulations. Session suspended.
Ayun, nandiyan ka pa pala. Nabango dito. Madam Speaker, I move that we suspend session for a few minutes. Session suspended.
Session resume. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we consider the budget of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, including its attached agency and corporations. There is a motion to consider the budget of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, including its attached agencies and corporations. Is there any objection? Hearing none, the motion is approved. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Tobias Reynald Tianco and the Honorable Mary Mitzi Kahayon Uy. The Honorable Toby Chanko and the Honorable Mitzi Kahayon Uy is recognized. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Raul Manuel for his interpolation. The Honorable Raul Manuel is recognized to interpolate the sponsor. Good evening, Madam Speaker. Ang uh, una ko pong uh, set ng mga tanong for uh, the budget of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development ay uh, kaugnay ng uh, housing sa Pandi, Bulacan. Ang uh, total cost po ng house and lot package na inokupahan ng mga miyembro ng uh, Kadamay na kamakailan lamang ay kinilala na ng National Housing Authority bilang mga beneficiaryo ng NHA housing project ay nasa 260,000 pesos, uh, Madam Speaker. Yung cost po ng uh, lot or land development ay nasa 125,000 habang yung housing unit naman ay nagkakahalaga ng 135,000. Kaso lang, uh, Madam Speaker, ito ay merong escalating amortization o tumataas uh, for a period of 30 years. Kaya ito ay uh, dagdag na pasanin ng ating mga maralita. Merong 200 pesos na monthly amortization dun sa monthly payment para sa lote at may variance na 112 pesos para sa occupancy and legalization fees. Kaya kung susumahin po, papatak sa 2,000 pesos ang occupancy fee at 1,000 pesos ang legalization fee. Ngayong tanong po natin sa ating uh, sponsor, eh, napakataas na po, Madam Speaker, ng sinisingil ng NHA sa mga maralita. At uh, bakit ito pataas ng pataas habang pababa naman po ang kalidad ng buhay sa bansa at mataas na rin ang presyo ng mga bilihin, Madam Speaker? Um, yes, uh, Madam Speaker. Tama po yung sinabi po ni Galang Galang uh, Manuel na ang land po is 125,000 kaya ang amortization on for the first four years po ay 200 um, pesos. No? Ang uh, bahay naman is 135,000 so ang um, amortization po nun is may 100 pesos per month na amortization and yung occupation and legalization 3,000 so 12.65 po ang uh, ang amortization no, no ang may pagtaas po um, na escalation is um, yung pong uh, lot and housing unit ito pong occupation and legalization fees wala po it will remain at 12.65 no so ang escalation po nito is every 4 years so for the first year for the first to the fourth year ang babayaran po ay 312.65 pesos. Ang um, pagdating po sa sa 5th to 8th year is 426.65 pesos. Um 9th to 10th year magiging 637.65. Um ito pong escalation ay standard po sa lahat ng uh, proyekto po ng uh, NHA, no? At uh, siyempre, titignan rin po natin yung value of money pagdating ng uh, ilang taon, di ba? Siyempre po, doon sa unang taon, yung 312 pesos, 312.65. Pagdating naman doon sa fifth year, hindi na rin po tataas na rin po ang kita ng tao, tataas na rin po ang 
ang minimum wage sa panahon na yun. No? So, hindi naman taon-taon po ang escalation. Uh, meron pong schedule of escalation po na sinusunod ang NHA sa lahat ng proyekto. Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, we uh, recognize uh, the answer of our uh, sponsor. Uh, kaso nga lang po, Madam Speaker, kung tayo ay nasa framework na i-provide ang housing bilang isang uh, social service, uh, dapat ay hindi siya nasa subject no? doon din sa pagsabay ng uh, ilang mga market indicators natin. Lalo na uh, yung ating pinag-uusapan ding uh, housing units na in sa pandi ay uh, pinaglumaan na, Madam Speaker. Uh, pagbabayarin po ang ating mga maralita ng ganun kalaki at uh, patuloy na kumikita ang NHA sa pabahay, gayong pabulok ng pabulok na rin ang mga pabahay doon, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, ang, ang escalation po nito is um, 3% per annum po. Hindi naman po siguro kalakihan because um, kailangan din po naman ng revolving fund ng NHA because uh, madami rin silang mga proyekto na um, pag hindi po na, na ibalik yung pera, hindi rin lalo makakapagtayo ng mga bahay at lalo lang po maapektuhan po yung ating mga kababayan. Kasi po, isipin po natin, ang housing backlog natin is 6 million houses. No? Doon pa lang po sa 6 million houses na yon hindi na po natin malaman kung papaano natin itatayo yon and even po doon sa budget ng, ng NHA ngayon para sa ongoing projects, isipin po natin ang cash requirement po nila is, uh, is 36 billion. Ang binigay na subsidy lang ng, uh, ng national government, Madam Speaker, is 2 billion pesos. So, um, yun po. Yun po ang dahilan para mas madami pong makinabang. Kasi po, pag naging deficit naman po palagi ang, uh, ang, sa libro ng NHA, lalo pong wala silang matutulungan, mahihinto po yung proyekto. So I think um, it's a social problem that uh, should be solved na sa ibang paraan din. Dapat magkaroon ng magandang trabaho yung tao, dapat tumaas yung kita ng tao, para naman itong reasonable escalation na ginagawa ng NHA ay um, mabayaran. No? Naintindihan po namin yung katayuan ng ating mga kababayan, ngunit alam natin na mas marami pa ang walang pabahay. So, paano po natin sila mabibigyan ng pabahay kung magkakaroon palagi ng deficit ang NHA? So, yun po, Madam Speaker. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, in the first place, uh, gusto din nating uh, malaman no, kung paano na-conceptualize na no, yung uh, pagkakaroon ng occupancy fee tsaka yung legalization fee. Uh, kasi uh, in the first place, uh, Madam Speaker, kung yung uh, pabahay ay i-award natin no? para dun sa mga beneficiaryo ng, ng socialized housing program na ating pamahalaan, edi eh mas mainam na hindi na natin tratuhin yung ating mga beneficiaries bilang uh, additional source of income para sa National Housing Authority. Um, Madam Speaker, uh, mayroon po kasing uh, memorandum circular po ito na approved by the NHA board, no? Um, NHA Memorandum Circular 2018-008 Updated Guidelines on the Disposition of Unawarded Occupied Residential Lots Units in NHA Projects provides that an occupancy fee of 2000 and legalization fee of 1000 shall be incorporated in the selling price. So, Madam Speaker, dear colleague, ito po yung naging basihan, nung, uh, ito po yung legal basis, no? At uh, meron din NHA Memorandum Circular 2021-009, Guidelines Prescribing the Legalization of Occupancy of Kadamay Members Occupying Unawarded Units for Four Resettlement Projects in Pandi, Bulacan. Occupancy fee of 2,000, legalization fee of 1,000 pesos. So, ibig sabihin, bago pa na-occupy po ng uh, Kadamay, itong uh, pandibulakan ay meron na po talagang polisiya ng occupancy fee at legalization fee. No? At yun lang din pong occupation, occupancy fee at legalization fee na based on memorandum circular noong 2018, yun din lang po ang pinatupad noong 2021. Makikita po natin dito na kahit lumampas ang tatlong taon, hindi naman po itinaas 
yung occupancy fee o yung legalization fee po. Okay. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, we formally uh, request no, yung uh, NHA na mabigyan tayo ng uh, kopya nung nabanggit na Memorandum Circular, pati na rin yung Memorandum Circular number 2021-009 para din ito ay mapag-aralan ng uh, appropriate committee sa loob ng ating Kongreso. Yes, um, uh, Madam Speaker, NHA will comply to submit to the Honorable Raul Manuel, um, our colleague, the two memorandum circulars. Please take note of that. Yes, thank you. Okay. Uh, sunod na uh, paksa, Madam Speaker, ay tungkol naman sa housing sa Tondo. Uh, for context, Madam Speaker, kasalukuyang humaharap sa banta ng demolisyon ang Tondo. Uh, hindi lahat ay ma-accommodate sa Tondominium. Kaya marami ang irerelocate sa malalayang lugar. Nasa lagpas 600 ang nagpasa ng form for relocation pero limang daan lang ang slot sa Naikavite. Ang natitirang pamilya sa building 12 and 13 ay pinamamadaling paalisin. Pero ayaw din po ng mga natitira doon na lumipat kasi napakalayo nito sa sources of livelihood. Sa building 12 and building 13 sa Tondo, nagsisimula ng mag-self-demolish ang mga tao sa takot na baka bigla na lang silang i-demolish. Ano po ba talaga ang plano ng National Housing Authority sa buildings na ito? At uh, nais din po nating malaman, Madam Speaker, kung uh, may budget ba talaga uh, para dun sa repair. Kasi sa pagkakaalam natin ay uh, may budget naman for repair. Um, Madam Speaker, I just want to clarify. Ito ba po yung mga ililipat sa NAIC? Yun po ba yun? Yes. Ah, so, tinatanong po kung ano yung status ng ililipat sa NAIC. At uh, dagdag din po doon, Madam Chair, ay uh, kasi nag-self-demolish na rin yung mga tao. Kaya ano din uh, ba talaga yung plano ng NHA para sa kanila? Um, Madam Speaker, ready na po yung mga units doon sa NAIC. Ang problema lang po dito is yung memorandum circular ng DILG na yung transferring uh, um, LGU has to pay between 24 to 27,000 pesos doon sa accepting LGU. Kaya po hindi po matuloy yung transfer niya. No? Kaya uh, nakikipag-coordinate po ang, uh, ang NHA um, sa DILG tungkol sa memorandum circular na to. And if I can share... Um, Last year, or this year, may nasunugan po doon sa, sa Navota, sa Sitio Puting Bato, sa R10. Re willing na po sila, nag-tripping na po sila doon sa NAIC. Nung ililipat na po namin, eh, ito po rin ang, ang issue. Yung 24,000 to 27,000 na ibabayad ng transferring LGU to the receiving LGU. Kaya hanggang ngayon, hindi pa rin po kami nakapag-transfer. But... Um, they will make uh, representations para maliwanagan kung paano po ma-resolve itong uh, issue na ito na sinisingil ng um, host um, LGU. No? Sana naman po pwede, baka pwede tawaran yung po ang ginagawa namin pero mas maganda po sana kung maging policy na magkaroon ng policy guidelines para hindi na po mahirapan yung mga ililipat. Uh, Madam Speaker, nais din po nating malaman kung bakit hiniyaan ng National Housing Authority na mag-self-demolish ang beneficiaries. Gayong LGO project naman, yung uh, right-of-way na ito. Um, Madam Speaker, um Yung, yung uh, pag-self-demolish is, is not within the powers of, of NHA in every government, in any government project. Um, hindi po, man, wala pong kapangyarihan ang NHA na mag-demolish. Ang, ang trabaho po ng uh, NHA is mag-provide ng relocation. So, hindi... Um, sabi po ng NHA, hindi po sila ang nagpa-self-demolish 
dito sa um, condominium. Yeah. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, kaya natin uh, naitanong iyon kasi uh, naputa na sa puntong ito yung mga uh, kababayan natin sa Tundo na in fact ay may mga nawala ng bahay para lang sa right of way. No? Papuntang cockpit arena. Uh, may mga mawawala ng kabuhayan para lang sa isang sabungan. Kaya uh, yun na yung naging impacts kumbaga ano. Uh, kahit na of course uh, alam natin hindi naman yung NHA yung uh, magsasabi doon sa mga kababayan natin na sila ay mag self demolish pero uh, the conditions have already pushed our uh, poor families to do this. No? Now uh, we'd like to also ask uh, our sponsor, kung yung temporary housing sa Barangay 105, kung may nakabili na ba ng uh, lupa nito? Hindi daw po, um, Madam Speaker, hindi po for sale yung lupa na yun, no? At liniliwanag po ng NHA na yung condominium, yung proyekto po doon, ay hindi po nila proyekto. At uh, siyempre, um, bilang uh, responsibilidad na ng NHA ang mag-provide ng housing, talagang gustong-gusto na po ng NHA na manipat din yung ating mga, mga kababayan at ma-utilize na yung houses na itinayo sa naik. Yun lang nga po, dapat po natin maayos po yung problema o yung issue doon po sa transfer fee na sinisingil ng mga accepting LGUs. Yes, sir. Uh... Now, I'm down to uh, last few questions, Madam Speaker. Uh, maraming government units sa Tondo ang uh, pumapasok sa condonation. Pag pumapasok po ba sa condonation ay nagbabago din ba ang halaga ng unit? Ito ba ay uh, tumaas? Um, sa ganitong condonation po, bumababa po yung binabayaran dahil tinatanggal po yung arrears at yung, yung penalty po ay 50% na lang po ang binabayaran po, Madam Speaker. Okay. Now, uh, Madam Speaker, to sum up uh, the questions and uh, the discussion that we had earlier, uh, kaliwat kanan na po ang uh, demolisyon sa tondo at ang uh, pagtaas ng singil sa mga pabahay kasama ang uh, just dado makapagal low-rise housing ang permanent housing at ang VITAS katuparan. Kaya, uh, we'll take this opportunity para mag-request ng isang hiwalay na dialogo kasama ang uh, NHA no? with the representatives ng no, mga apektadong komunidad para din uh, mas uh, mapag-usapan ng masinsinan ang uh, ganitong uh, issue at uh, kung kaya din po uh, makapag-commit ng NHA kung kailan ito posibleng mangyari, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, Monday po. Um, pwede po kayo ng Monday. Pwede po kaya si Representative Raul Manuel ng Monday para masabi lang po niya kung ano oras sa lunes po siya pupuntahan at pupuntahan po siya ng mga tiga NHA. Yes, Madam Speaker, we will relay this uh, tentative schedule with the representatives of the affected communities and we appreciate our sponsor for the uh, quick setting of such uh, a dialogue. Now, uh, to end, Madam Speaker, uh, we'd like to uh, note na maraming mga Pilipino ngayon ang dumaranas ng uh, matinding kahirapan, eh, dito mataas ang presyo ng mga bilihin habang uh, nananatiling kulang ang sahod. Kaya naman uh, dapat ay maibsan na yung pasanin ng ating mga kapwa Pilipino tungkol sa kawalan ng uh, disenteng pabahay. Dapat ay matiyak natin yung uh, pro-people na programa para sa housing to provide uh, accessible, public, and uh, mass-oriented housing uh, programs in our country. So, yun lamang, Madam Speaker. Salamat. Salamat din sa ating sponsors. Yes, Madam Speaker. Uh, maraming salamat at maraming salamat po sa ating kulig dito. Um, tayo po ay nakikisa at naintindihan talaga na napaka-importanteng bahagi ng pag-angat ng buhay ng bawat Pilipino ay yung disenteng pabahay. No? So, kaya uh, uh, um, um, tayo po ay nakikipagtulungan sa lahat ng ating mga kasama dito para 
makahanap ng mga pondo pa, kung papaano makakapagtayo ng mas maraming pabahay. At yun po, yung commitment po ng uh, NHA na pupunta po sila sa uh, tanggapan ng ating kasama sa Monday po kung ano oras mo po um, uh, available ang ating kasamahan na si Representative Raul Manuel. Maraming salamat po and thank you very much to our esteemed colleague. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize Representative Marisa P. Magsino of the OFW Party List for her interpolation. The Honorable Marisa Magsino is recognized to interpolate the sponsor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Alam po natin ang OFW Party List, kasama na po ang National Real Estate Association or NRIA, kung saan ang inyo pong lingkod ang siya pong Chairwoman Emerita at Chair Lady Board of Advisors ng NRIA na one of the big four na housing, agent, uh, housing organization stakeholder ng pabahay. Tayo po ay nakatayo ngayon upang magbigay liwanag sa napakahirap na problema ng ating mga kababayan kung saan ang nagkakamali po ang karamihan sa atin, ang akala tayo po ay nagbibigay ng libreng pabahay ang ating OFW part list. Gusto ko pong ipaliwanag na ito po'y hindi pwedeng mangyari. Tayo po'y tutulong. Makikiisa po tayo sa housing industry, sa National Housing Authority, at sa DISO, Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development, upang magkaroon po ng pabahay ang ating mga kababayan. Madam Speaker, our dear sponsor, this representation has observed that 49% increase of the budget of the Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development from 2022 to 2023, excluding those of its attached agencies. This would has a proposed budget of 1.528 billion, which is bigger than that of the 2022 budget of 1.023 billion. I believe that this increase in the budget of the department, Madam Speaker, is well deserved as the department has achieved significant milestones in the use of its budget in 2021. First, let me uh, say this. Based on the analysis of the Congressional Policy and Budget Research Department, the overall utilization rate or the obligation to appropriation ratio of this would has improved from 83.3% in 2020 to 95.1% in 2021. As a result, the department was able to minimize its unused appropriation from 110.1 million in 2020 to 50.9 million in 2021. Second, in the case of this hood, its disbursement rate improved from 83% in 2020 to 93.4% in 2021. Third, although the department has a total of 723 unfilled positions out of 1,613 authorized positions in 2021, or 45%, which is rather higher, it is still an improvement from 77.8% rate of unfilled positions recorded in 2020. A high rate of unfilled authorized positions in the agency may affect the overall performance of the agency. Fortunately, the DBM staffing pattern for 2023 projects that the department will be able to further lower its unfilled positions rate to 37.5%. We hope that the department will turn this projection into reality. However, this would still have some important matters in its plate that need to be addressed. The 2021 annual audit reports of the Commission on Audit for the department shows 130 COA recommendations from prior years, of which 94 or 72.3% were complied with, leaving 36 recommendations or 27.7% that remain unimplemented. My question is, dear sponsor, may we know the status of these unimplemented recommendations? Um, yes, Madam Speaker, uh, one minute suspension, please. They're looking for the records. Session suspended.
Madam Speaker. Yes. Session resume. Yes, Madam Speaker. Um, according to the dishwood. Madam Speaker. The Honorable to, Toby Changi, you're recognized. Yes. Madam Speaker, according to the dishwood, um, they commit that they will uh, um, address all these 27 pending issues um, before the end of the year, no? The main reason is because it's a newly created agency and the, and the uh, um, merging of agencies under the dishwood, that is the cause of the accounting, uh, the um, COA findings. No? But there is no disallowance, Madam Speaker. Um, they just have to reply to this and fix their accounting entries, Madam Speaker. Dear colleague. Madam Speaker, thank you so much for that response. Dear sponsor, my second question is, the National Housing Authority, the target number of housing units to be provided for the victims of Typhoon Yolanda were not met due to the delayed construction, low occupancy rate, and slow pace of transfer of the units. Specifically, 47 out of 73 Yolanda permanent housing program projects were delayed as of December 2021. What is the status of these delayed housing projects and what steps are the department taking to address the delays? Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, the target for the Yolanda was 209,447 units. To this date, only 9,000 units are to be completed. So, Madam Speaker, ibig sabihin po, um, 200,000 units na po ang nakompleto po ng NHA for Typhoon Yolanda victims. Madam Speaker. Thank you, Madam Speaker. More than ever, we know that the fundamental need of an individual housing as an economic engine for the low-income families as it plays a vital role in the growth and development of every family, the community, and the country. For many low-income families, a house is more than just a shelter. It is a vital survival mechanism in times of crisis or displacement. It is also a key to restoring personal security, self-sufficiency, and dignity. Most importantly, affordable housing is critical to breaking the cycle of poverty. We all know that it is estimated that our current housing backlog is 6.5 million units and increasing. At a low-cost estimate of 500,000, per socialized housing unit, exclusive, excluding access roads and external utilities, we will need 3.25 trillion just to cover our current backlog. Unfortunately, the total budget of this for 2023, including those of its attached agencies, is merely roughly 4 billion pesos. Moreover, our present annual housing production including those of the private sector at 200,000 units per year. It will take us 32.5 years from today to totally overcome our housing backlog. Madam Speaker, this is a tall order for the department to hurdle. But we are optimistic, Madam Speaker, that the department in no time will significantly, if not completely, overcome our housing backlog. Which is alarming, but definitely Decisively, they can do it, the sooner the better. And we need to begin today. Even though housing or this is just a newly established agency, it has thus far demonstrated through its dedicated and competent officials and employees several remarkable achievements indicative of its determination and capability to tackle its gargantuan task. By then, this would Secretary Eduardo del Rosario. On our part in Congress, using our power of the purse, we must provide the department the most budgetary support that we can now and in the years to come. 
on behalf of the OFW party list, the Enria, and I'm sure the housing industry is very happy, Enria, Kreba, Osdap, Sheda, to confidently express our support in the approval of the proposed budget of the Department of Human Settlement and Urban Development. Madam Speaker, thank you so much and their sponsor to the Diswood family. God bless us all. Madam Speaker, and to our dear colleague, um, Congresswoman uh, uh, Marisa Del Mar Magsino, thank you very much for the support to the Diswood. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move to recognize Congressman Philemon M. Espares of the Co-op Not Co Party List for his uh, interpolation. The Honorable Felimon Esparis recognized to interpolate the sponsor. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Madam Speaker, um, Mr. Sponsor. Uh, good evening. Uh, my question will just only uh, revolve on the project by the National Housing Authority related on the Typhoon Yolanda Permanent Housing Project. So particularly on regions uh, of uh, Region 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and I think my 13 pa. Uh, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, uh, do you have a data kung ilan ba ang total units ng project under this Yolanda uh, this, uh, yes, this will have uh, permanent housing projects. Yes, Madam Speaker, dear colleague. Um, sa Region 4 po, 5,290 units. No? Sa Region 5, 400 units. Region 6, 119,290 units. Um, region, uh, region 7, Region 7, 20,443. Region 8, 63,582. And Region 13, 442. For a total of 209,447 units. Um, ang, uh, ang kulang na lang po, ang natapos na po dito ay... Uh, 200 plus 200,000 plus units and remaining 9,000 units to be completed madam speaker thank you very much uh, madam speaker mr sponsor on that data uh, so all in all the total is around 300 plus isn't it uh, madam speaker mr. Um, uh, madam speaker it's exactly 209,447 po um, at uh, 200,000 na po ang natapos, so ang balance na lang po is 9,000 units to be completed, Madam Speaker. Um, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, what is the time uh, period there in, in your figure, in your data? As of what date? Um, Madam Speaker, um, the figures are as of July 2022, and yung 9,000 units, um, they will try to finish it within this year, Madam Speaker, dear colleague. Okay, so in a way, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, um, the data from me on hand are just uh, uh, provided, no? Uh, I think just for today. But then, anyway, um, in my figure right now, uh, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, uh, parang nakita ko na 374 ang total, but then the, the completion or the percentage of the completed uh, figure are just 43% or 164,000 units ang na-complete. And then out of the completed, uh, 107 dito ang na turnover. So meaning to say, uh, malaki pa ang hindi natapos at saka yung iba hindi na turnover. So, uh, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, uh, my question would just only uh, uh, focus, no? Uh, what would be uh, the plan, no? Ng ating uh, agency on this? Kasi, 
I have seen here no, na mataas pa ang hindi natapos but then out of nung hindi natapos, yung mga status dito, yung nakalista dito are mga expired na, terminated, tapos suspended, tapos yung iba dito, my charge of liquidated damages. So question there is that because if we're going to uh, review the figure that you have submitted to me, nasa 59,664 ang problematic dito. Right. So question is, matagal na itong project, no? kasi 2014 pa I think na naumpisahan, and then to 2022 na tayo ngayon. So with that figure na may problematic tayo tapos marami pa hindi na turnover, what is the plan of the agency to expedite on this, uh, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor? Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, yung 347 po, that is the total number of projects, di ba? Kasi one project it has a multiple number of houses or units, no? Ngayon po, um, totoo po na may mga na-delay po kasi meron po talagang ibang um, isla na mahirap deliveran ng mga um, gamit kaya't na-delay. So, what they will do is kung talagang na-delay po yung mga projects, um, ibabawas to uh, sa liquidated damages pag pag uh, dating ng final payment, no? But um, the commitment is that yung 9,000 po na natitira, 9,000 units, ay tatapusin po um, within the year. Madam Speaker, dear colleague. Madam Speaker, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Sponsor. Uh, ito na lang, um, kasi nakita namin dito is uh, parang medyo talagang may kahirapan din dahil lalo pa yung iba dito, uh, nawala na yung mga contractors. No? But then, uh, another uh, question, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, of those no, na natapos, and then on this figure din na nakita ko na kunti lang ang na-turnover, uh, out of this, kung na-turnover to, may figure ba ang National Housing Authority kung ilan ba ang occupancy rate na nanang na-turnover? Madam Speaker, 70% um, po ang occupancy rate and they are coordinating, the NHA is coordinating with the local interagency committee in charge of, identi of arranging the occupants for these uh, finished houses, Madam Speaker, dear colleague. But what is, Madam Speaker, what is the figure of the occupancy rate? 70% po, Madam Speaker. 70%? Yes. Okay. Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, Actually, I am from Region 6, no? particularly in Antique. Uh, very familiar ako doon. And uh, that's why it was really caught in my attention na I don't know. No? So that's why mayroong agency ba na nag-audit dito or na-check kung talagang na-implement itong uh, at saka may occupancy ba talaga? Pag sinabi kasi 70%, uh, Dapat uh, facts talaga yan, Madam Speaker, no, Mr. Sponsor. Um, Madam Speaker, um, it's the local government with the assistance of the NHA that validates the occupancy, Madam Speaker. Okay. Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, uh, is the, uh, no, the National Housing Authority may wrong arm really to inventory and audit itong ating mga projects na talagang naga, na, napakinabangan yung projects o, well, o hindi? Anong agency? Kuwalang ba? Or there is really an arm from that uh, agency? Um, Madam Speaker, when it, re when it comes po to the um, occupants, 
ang nag identify po is the local interagency committee. No? So yung uh, LIAC po, siya po ang nag identify ng occupants. Ang NHA po ay inihahanda at sinisigurado na handa po yung mga bahay na paglilipatan. Madam Speaker. Okay, so thank you very much for that, uh, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor. So we will uh, monitor that uh, to that effect. And I know, no, dahil uh, nandun naman talaga tayo sa area, uh, the way I, uh, uh, my observation and a personal experience, <laughs> yung mga project natin ngayon parang naging white elephant sa totoo lang, no? So baka uh, kambing yung naka-occupy doon. So in this regard, kami naman, I am representing the cooperative sector. Sana i-consider din ng ating agency na i-partner ito with institution na, na talagang nandyan sa area para ma-maximize ang utilization. So, in behalf, in the sector the cooperative, so we are also offering our support, no? Na kung talagang uh, para mapagtibangan yung pera, yung project natin, uh, we have cooperatives also in the area na pwede rin natin itap, no? na gagamitin ng members at saka co-op ang mag-handle, mag-manage doon no, para makipinabangan. So, in to, on that, uh, uh, Madam Speaker and uh, Mr. Sponsor, para matapos na ako, so that's only, I would like just only to have a manifestation to that, na tutukan ng ating National Housing Authority yung pag-expedite ng implementation kasi mar malaking tulong sana ito Pero on my personal uh, observation, ito ang nakita ko ngayon na ang daming housing projects na hindi na-occupy and try to consider also yung mga organization na nandyan sa area, huwag lang siguro iasa with the LGU. And then, yung agency na tututok doon to monitor, we hope na they are going also to perform their job no para hindi masayang ang pera. So that's all uh, Madam Speaker, Mr. Sponsor, on that manifestation, sana makonsider yung aming uh, request then no, to make this uh, project also uh, na mapakinibangan. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Speaker, Mr. Speaker. Yes, Madam Speaker, the manifestation is well noted and uh, we are directing the uh, NHA um, to take note of the manifestation of our colleague because it's a very valid manifestation and really, um, delayed projects, delayed housing projects, um, uh, unoccupied houses are not good because there is really a big backlog of housing units in our country and for our people, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much, dear colleague. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that uh, we recognize Congresswoman Franz L. Castro of the ACT Teachers Party List for her interpolation. The Honorable Franz Castro is recognized to interpolate the sponsor. Maraming salamat, um, Madam Speaker. Magandang gabi po muli sa ating lahat at sa pamilya ng Dishwood at sa ating distinguished sponsor. Uh, ilan na lang po yung mga katanukan ko, ma Madam Speaker, distinguished sponsor, dahil yung ilan ay nakuha na, no? about you land, darin yung aking, ano, no? yung aking mga natira pang mga questions. So, sinasabi natin kanina mula dun sa interpolation na ating kasama, mula sa co-op NATCO, na there are 9,000 9, na natira na tatapusin ng NHA within the year. Tama po ba? Yes, Madam Speaker, dear colleague, tama po yun. 9,000 po ang tatapusin pa ng units po ito. Um, two, out of 209,000 units, 9,000 pa po ang tatapusin yes. po ng NHA. Okay, Madam so Madam Speaker, um, string is sponsor, uh, ayun sa COA report no, noong December 2021, only 1, 156,219 housing units or 73% have been completed. Um, and out of the revised targeted na 212,618 housing units, specifically for those undertaken by NHA, 151,103 out of 194 units were completed. Halos nine years na nang nakalipas nung tumama yung Bagyong Yolanda, hindi pa rin na kompleto itong pabahay. Uh, pwede po bang malaman yung rason uh, ng delayed ng construction? Meron po ba tayong halimbawa ay uh, problema uh, about the contractor? Meron po ba tayong napanagot sa mga contractors na hindi nakakompleto halimbawa 
nitong housing project sa Yolanda. Uh, Madam, Madam Speaker, distinguished sponsor. Madam Speaker, ang isa pong reason ng, uh, ng uh, delay, further delay, um, was the um, COVID situation no? because wala rin sila makuha mga trabahador doon. And of course, yung mga contractors na hindi na deliver on time and if their delay is unjustified, um, magbabayad po sila ng liquidated damages, Madam Speaker. Uh, panahon po ba ito ng, ano, no, ng, ng COVID? Kasi po alam ko merong termination ng 46 contract uh, na may, may mga dahilan na, ng, like for example, negative slippage beyond 15% of the con contract duration. Um, negative sli slippage was primarily caused by the con con contractors insufficient or non-deployment of, na na of necessary resources on site such as equipment, materials, and manpower. Some projects were rescinded due to variety of reasons, including an unresolved boundary dispute, tenancy issue, unsuit unsuitable project site due to the presence of mangroves. The project sites are timberland, and the contractor's failure to secure certification from the PNP regarding peace and order situation at the project site. So ito naman po, uh, Madam Speaker, before pa naman ito ng, ano no, ng COVID. Kaya uh, itong failure ng mga, contra, uh, ng mga contractor uh, dito, uh, sabi nga dito, no, termination ng 46 contract. Ang tanong po natin, may napanagot ba, Madam Speaker, dito sa uh, nag-fail sa kanilang kontrata? Kasi unfair naman po sa, mga, ano no, sa ating mga kababayan na more than 9,000 yung hindi nagawa. Uh, wala po bang damage yan na nagawa sa, ating, sa atin at pinanagot pa natin yung mga contractors? Um, out of 46 po, um, 21 po yung na, oh, na, natapos na at 25 po ang i-rebid. No? Ngayon, yung lahat po ng 46 na yon ay pinagbayad po ng liquidated damages at blacklisted po yung mga hindi nakatupad sa kanilang contractual obligation, Madam Speaker. Okay, um, thank you for that ano, information, uh, distinguished sponsor and Madam Speaker. Furthermore, COA noticed that 62% lang ang occupancy rate. Uh, parang taliwas yata dun sa narinig ko na 73%. So, um, sabi po dito sa COA report, 62%. So, can the Dish Hood and the NHA comment on this? Can you reconcile the, ano, the data? earlier, kasi 70% daw. Pero sa COA, 62%. As of December 2021. Um, Madam Speaker, I think yung 62% po ay as of 2021 po yata yun, no? yung COA report ng 2021. As of today, nasa 70% na po ang occupancy, Madam Speaker. Okay. Uh, thank you for the clarification, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, siguro, ano na lang, ano, um, eto, uh, nagpapasalamat po ako, Madam Speaker, doon sa binigay na sulat nung NHA, kaugnay nung ating pong hinihinging data about idle, idle government lands. So oh, siguro ang question ko lang dito, ano po ba yung locations nitong mga idle properties? Parang hindi nyo yata naibigay sa akin. Yung location nitong mga idle property uh, government lands. Um, meron po, po dito, naka-breakdown per region, hindi lang po yata na-submit sa ating dear colleague. And uh, um, NHA will submit. When can you submit? Ah, okay. Uh, thank you po. Um, um, Nandito po yung information sa akin. Um, isasubmit na lang po nila yung breakdown per region, Madam Speaker. Okay. So, salamat po. So, yun lang, yun lang po, uh, Madam Speaker, yung aking mga clarification sa... This should, at sana po, no, madagdagan yung pondo para doon sa uh, pabahay. Dahil ano lang siya, di ba? 2 billion lang sa NHA yung pondo para sa pabahay ng ating mga kababayan. Maraming salamat po. Yes, Madam Speaker, um, we, um, we are very happy for the support of our colleague, um, Congressman Castro. Um, ang actually, malaki nga po ang binaba kasi ang pondo po ng NHA sa 2022 GAA ay 5,175,000,000.
Ngunit po dito po sa 2023 NEP, 2 billion lang po. At alam po natin na talagang um, kulang po ang pabahay at kulang po ang pondo. Maraming salamat po sa ating dear colleague, um, Congresswoman Castro. Maraming salamat po, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Mujib Hataman for his interpolation. The Honorable Mujib Hataman is recognized for his interpolation. Uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, thank you, distinguished sponsor. May the distinguished sponsor yield to some clarificatory questions. Yes, it's my honor to yield to the questions and clarifications of our dear colleague, Congressman Hataman. Mr. Speaker, um, alam ko ho, napakaliit ng budget. Kung ikumpara mo sa ibang malalaking departamento, talagang maliit yung budget ng uh, ahensya. Pero meron lang ho akong ilang clarifications just for the record. According to the performance indicator ng agency ng 2021 ho, ang target number of families provided secure tenure were was 1,500, but the actual accomplishment was only 205. Is that correct, a distinguished sponsor? Um, Madam Speaker, um, can I clarify from from our dear colleague, kung ang target na tintukoy ay buong Pilipinas po ba? Or um, region Pero ano yung, uh, ano yung target nyo noong 2021? Based sa budget ng... Madam, Madam Speaker, may I request one minute suspension? Session suspended.
session resume. You may proceed, the Honorable Chanko. Ma Madam Speaker, <laughs> distinguished sponsor, magkano uh, ilan ang kabuang target natin ng housing ng 2021? Ang, uh, ang kabuang housing units po natin noong... Sorry, wala po dito yung 2021. Ang meron tayo is as of 2022. Okay. Um, is 1.502 million housing units. Ang na-provide po is 1.282,415 housing units. Kaya ang na-accomplish po is 85% of the target. Ito po ay across all the the agencies under the DISUD. From 2021 up to 2022, tama? Um, 2016 to 2022 Wait. po ito, Madam Speaker. Ang binilang po dito is yung previous administration. So, eight, ilang porsyento ho yun ng kabuang target? Um, 85% po, Madam Speaker. As of 2022, tama? As of June 2022 po, Madam Speaker. As of this... At the moment, ilang percent na ho tayo? Madam Speaker, wala pong update kasi ang, ang uh, minesure po, ang sinukat po na dito is yung, yung previous administration. But Madam Speaker, um, NHA, um, the DISUD will provide and submit the information to date to the Honorable Mujib Hataman. Thank you, uh, Madam Speaker. Uh, maraming salamat, distinguished sponsor. Magkano ho ang kabuang budget ng NHA? Um, tama ho ba ang NEP 2023 ng NHA is 2 billion? Tama? Yes, Madam Speaker. Um, NEP 2023 po ng NHA is 2 billion. Noong 2022, ang NEP ng NHA is 5.175. Tama? Um, nung, uh, Madam Speaker, Your Honor, nung 2022 ang GAA, GAA yeah. ng uh, NHA At tama yung GAA. 5.175. Tama po kayo. Tapos ang NEP nyo nung 2022 is nasa 4 billion. Tama? NEP? NEP nung 2022. NEP 2022. 2021 yun eh. NEP, NEP. Madam Speaker, dear colleague, pasensya na po. Wala kaming record ng NEP ng 2022. Anyway, just for the Pero record, I uh, have the NEP of 2022 distinguished sponsor that was 4 billion. So nagkaroon ng increase ng 1.175 billion sa pagdating ng GAA. Ah, thank you very much for the information, um, dear colleague. Um, likewise, distinguished sponsor, noong 2021, ang National Expenditure Program na sinabmit ng NHA ay nasa 4 billion din. Pero paglabas nung GAA, ang labas nung um, um, approved appropriation is nasa 7.168. Tama? Ano? Uh, 17550. Ah. Ang gaa po ng, uh, ng uh, NHA noong 2021 is 3,456,000,000 3, yeah. right, po, right. Madam Speaker. Pero ang total appropriation ng NHA noong 2021 is 7.550. Total available fund. Tama? Kasama yun. Um, yes, Madam Speaker. Tama po. Kasama po yung mga um, transfer of funds from other agencies, Madam Speaker. Tapos nung 2021, na-obligate yung 7.168. Is that correct, distinguished sponsor? Yes, Madam Speaker, dear colleague, tama po. 
ang uh, na-obligate po is 7 billion 168 million 368,000. Then um, just for the record, ang target number of lots, house and lot packages, housing units to be constructed was 83,576 units. Is that correct, uh, distinguished sponsor? Um, Madam, Madam Speaker, can I clarify kung ito po ay sa NHA lang po for 2021? NHA, ang sa record ko. Pero hindi ko lang alam, baka nagkamali rin ako, distinguished sponsor. Hindi, maganda na rin. One, one, one minute suspension, Madam Speaker. Session suspended. Session resume. You may proceed, Honorable Chanko. Yes, I'm ready to... Uh, Madam Speaker, um, pagpapaumanhin nyo, distinguished sponsor, pinakiusapan na lang ho ako ni Kong Bem Noel dahil nilalamig na raw ang ulo niya. So, i-cut short ko na lang ang aking interpellation and I will just send... Uh, to through the distinguished sponsor my clarifi uh, clarificatory questions uh, after my after immediately after this one so yun lamang po distinguished sponsor maraming maraming salamat mr speaker madam speaker um, i really appreciate uh, the gesture of our colleagues um, congressman mujib hataman and congressman ben noel and I'm directing the NHA and the DISUD to immediately reply in writing to the queries 
of the Honorable Mujib Hataman. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the next interpolator, the Honorable Sergio Dagoak of APIC Party List. The Thank Honorable Sergio Dagoak is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you, Majority Leader. I would the distinguished sponsor yield to only one uh, clarificatory question. Only one. Good yes, my honor. Poco. It's my honor, dear colleague. Thank you, Madam Speaker, distinguished sponsor. May I just ask if all of the projects, implement, housing projects implemented by uh, the different agencies under uh, the human settlement includes the cost of distribution line extension. This uh, question is very important because there are a lot of housing projects with no electricity because you failed to include in the project cost the extension of distribution line. As a result, the distribution utility will still apply a CAPEX project to the Energy Regulatory Commission and it will uh, uh, cost the delay for two to three years because the ERC cannot immediately decide on the petition. Um, Madam Speaker, I, I really recognize the predicament pointed out by our dear colleague. Pero ang kasama lang po doon sa NHA is yung service entrance po at saka yung internal electrical lines. Hindi po kasama yung sa labas po noon. Can you not include? If not, what is the reason why you cannot include when you know that electricity is a component of that housing project? One minute suspension, Madam Speaker. Session suspended.
Session resume. The Honorable Toby Chanky, you may proceed. Yes, uh, Madam Speaker, I'm ready to proceed with the questions of our colleague. Uh, Madam Speaker, uh, District Sponsor, I would just like to manifest that the NHA or the DSOD should seriously look into my issue because the cost of the project that will not be used by uh, the beneficiaries is much bigger than the cost of the line. You know what I mean. So with that, no, I would like to manifest that the budget of the agency we are deliberating no, 
should be increased to consider that uh, purpose. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Thank we you. appreciate the manifestation of our dear colleague. Majority Leader. Madam Speaker, I move that we recognize the Honorable Bem Noel of Anwarai Party List. The Honorable Bem Noel is recognized. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Um, Maupay nga gabi haton nga tanan. Um, Mr. Sponsor, may I uh, ask a few questions? Yes, of course. It's my honor. Um, Rep. Pares of Coop Natco asked about the Yolanda housing, which you answered six. Region 8 has 63,582 uh, completed uh, housing units. Um, region 8 has um, 47, Region 8 has a program target of 63,582 units, of which um, 47,107 have been completed. Ah, okay. So the 9,000 balance, which you mentioned a while ago also, uh, with regard to the balance from the Yolanda housing, does not actually add up. But anyway, maybe uh, maybe you can just submit the, the, the real uh, numbers, no? so we can cut this short. Um, during the first State of the Nation of the President, he mentioned and directed the should to improve the implementation of the government's emergency shelter assistance program uh, for calamity victims. Um, the government's ESAP provides assistance in the form of cash or construction materials to augment resources of calamity-affected families who opt not to be transferred to resettlement sites following a disaster. Uh, ito pong pondo na to, ito pong assistance, kailangan-kailangan po ito, lalo na po sa Region 8, where we are uh, um, uh, situated na kada po bagyo, meron, sinasalubong po yan ng Region 8. No? Uh, may I know, uh, Madam Speaker, distinguished sponsor, kung Reflected po ba ito sa Dishud budget? Given also that nung sabi ng NDRMC nung September 28, uh, they designated Dishud at, as the lead for the shelter and housing assistance programs. Is this um, ESAP reflected in the budget of uh, the Dishud? Uh, Madam Speaker, um, first of all, before I reply to that question of our dear colleague, uh, Congressman Ben Noel, I would like to thank him for pointing out the 9,000 units. No? Um, tama po kayo. And to all the previous uh, um, answers I've given regarding this, I would like to correct it. No? Um, program target is 209,447. Ang unit started is 199,598. So dito po nakuha yung discrep yung sinasabi na 9,000 units ang hindi pa started. Pero ang completed lang po is 164,506, no? So ang hindi pa completed is not 9,000 but um kano to um 35 mga 46,000. Pero ang hindi pa started is 9,000. I would like to correct that kasi madaming beses ko po yan sinagot kanina. So I hope that is corrected in our record. Noted, noted. Ngayon po, um, tama po ang ating uh, kaibigan na si Congressman Noel na meron pong NDRRMC Resolution Number 10 Series of 2021. Ngunit yung pondo po ng uh, ESA ay nasa um, DSWD pa rin, at wala pa po sa DISHUD, wala pa po dito sa budget na to, at hindi pa po nalilipat sa DISHUD yung pondo na yon. How can the implementing agency implement uh, a project na wala naman sa kanila yung pondo? Um, Madam Speaker, dear colleague, kaya po nakikipag-usap na po sila sa, sa DSWD para ma-implement na po itong NDRMC Resolution Number 10 at mailipat na po yung pondo sa Dishud. So at least we will know which agency 
uh, kami tatakbo no when uh, um, may mga mangyaring ganon. Uh, in the same uh, way, Madam, Sp uh, Madam Speaker, uh, distinguished sponsor, uh, the NHA also has this program. Um, but it's instead of ESAP, it's EHAP, the National uh, the Emergency Housing Assistance Program. No, uh, I think um, sa mga par partially damaged, they give five to 20,000 and sa totally damaged, 30,000. Um, yes po, correct po, uh, Madam Speaker, dear colleague, 30,000 po, kung hindi po sila mag-op ng relocation. Kung mag-op po sila ng relocation, hindi na po sila qualified. So it's either you get the EHAP of 30,000 or you opt for relocation, Madam Speaker, dear colleague. Again, Madam Speaker, no, hinanap na na natin tong EHAP, wala rin po sa budget ng NHA. So, yung dalawang agencies na to, uh, they should and, and uh, NHA, ito yung dapat natin takbuhan, pero wala silang pondo. Um, sadly, Madam Speaker, that is the truth. Um, wala pong pondo yung sa NEP 2023, wala pong pondo sa EHAP, at madami pa po silang utang na EHAP sa previous years. Napakasad naman, Madam Speaker. No? Uh, anyway, uh, I hope the committee, the, the um, Committee on Appropriations, uh, will find ways para po uh, kung takbuhan man po ng lahat ng mga congressman sakaling may sakuna na mangyari, meron po, meron po ang DISHUD at saka NHA uh, maitutulong at ma, ma, maitutulong sa mga kanya-kanyang distrito. No? Um, with that, uh, Madam Speaker, um, I, I will end my uh, interpolation and uh, there being no member, other member from the minority who wishes to interpolate on the budget of uh, the should and its attached agencies, uh, I move that uh, we terminate the period of interpolation and debate on the budget of the said agency. Madam uh, Speaker. Thank you very much, dear colleague. Thank you, thank you very much, Congressman Bem Noel. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Thank you very much to all our colleagues. Madam Speaker, on behalf of the majority, we join the minority to terminate the budget deliberation of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, including its attached agencies and corporations. So move, Madam Speaker. There's a joint motion to terminate interpolations on the proposed budget of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, including its attached agencies and corporations. Is there any objection? The chair hears none. The motion is approved. The Interpolations in the proposed budget of the Department of Human Settlements and Urban Development, including attached agency and corporation, is hereby terminated. Session suspended. <laughs>